Hello. Welcome to the Fanfic Majesty. If you want more content you can follow me on Patreon. I will be uploading more content on there that will be exclusive. The link is in the description. Please support me. 2TD. Chapter 12. Wrath of a Demon and Bounties. After the fight with Arlong, the villagers were still trying to wrap their head around the fact that Arlong was defeated and they were now free. It didn't feel real because since Arlong came to the island they all thought they were going to be stuck under his control for the rest of their life. Then Luffy and his crew came along and gave them their freedom. As Luffy was walking through the villagers making his way back to the village he heard a weird sounding laugh coming from behind him. Chee 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 Chee. Luffy heard causing him to turn around to see who it was. When he turned and looked he saw it was the marines who he spotted with Genzo earlier. Luffy narrowed his eyes and stopped walking towards the village and started walking towards the marine captain. Okay. Hold it right there, said the marine captain to all the villagers while all of his marines pointed their weapons at them. What a lucky day today is, I saw the entire fight and I must say good work and I can only assume this victory here was some bizarre accident. I never thought the fishmen would lose to some riff-raff like you and your crew, he said with a cocky smile not noticing Luffy slowly making his way to the front of the group. However, now that Arlong isn't here, I will be taking all of the money I was supposed to give to him and all of the treasure in Arlong Park, he said loudly with a smirk on his face causing the villagers to gasp and look at him angrily. Now drop your weapons. Captain Nazumi of Branch 16 gets all the credit. He yelled. Just as he said that Luffy reached the front and immediately slammed his fist on top of the marine captain's head sending crashing into the ground. Upon seeing their captain being hit all of the marines aimed their weapons to Luffy and a few of the villagers. Thinking fast Luffy sent a wave of conquer's hockey to the marines causing them to pass out foaming at the mouth. Sorry, but that money is for the village, Luffy said before he turned to Nami and asked her a question. If there a marine base around here? He asked. Nami thought for a second before she replied. Yes, just northeast of here is Branch 16, he said while pointing in the general direction. Luffy nodded his head before turning towards Sanji. Sanji, he said getting Sanji's attention. I want you, Johnny, and Yosaku to go raid that marine ship over there, he said while pointing to the vessel behind them. Whatever you find on the ship give it to the village and bring the marine ship back here to me. Dot and do as you please with the marines on board, Luffy said causing the three of them to nod their head. Luffy then summoned a thundercloud for them to ride on. As they hopped on the cloud took off to the ship. Luffy then turned towards Usopp and Nami before he gave out more orders. Nami, Usopp, Luffy said getting their attention. You two go raid Arlong Park. Luffy said before turning towards the pile of ash that is now Arlong Park before he spoke again, this time with a nervous chuckle. Er never mind, he said causing everyone to sweat drop. He then turned to Zoro and spoke. Zoro can you fight? Luffy asked. When he asked the question Zoro looked as though he had just been insulted. What kind of stupid question is that? Of course, I can fight, he said causing Luffy to chuckle. Luffy then turned around and saw the marine ship was making its way to the island letting everyone know that Sanji and the guys and succeeded. When the ship had docked Johnny and Yosaku were the first ones out. They were carrying a large black box that has money sticking out of it and from the way they were walking Luffy assumed it was extremely heavy. Right behind the two were five marines each badly beaten with tears running down their face while carrying a large sack over each of their back. Behind the marines was Sanji walking out empty-handed with his hands in his pocket and a cigarette in his mouth. Luffy chuckles and shook his head when he saw Sanji. The group arrived in front of Luffy and villagers and dropped everything down in front of them. By now Nazumi had woken up from his dirt nap and was staring at everything from his ship with wide eyes. He was about to yell at everybody immediately stopped with he spotted Luffy staring at him with cold emotionless eyes. Luffy then turned back to Sanji's group and spoke. I did not expect your raid to be so fruitful, he said in a surprised tone. Neither did we, but these bastards had a lot of treasure and money on board. The black box is filled with a lot of money and jewels while those sacks are only filled with gold, diamonds and other precious stones, Sanji said before he took a pull from his cigarette. Luffy nodded before he turned towards Genzo and spoke. 
That's for your village, he said causing everyone's eyes to widen. B.U. butts that's way more than we need, Genzo said earning nods from a lot of the villagers. At least take some for yourselves, he said to Luffy. Luffy just smirked deviously before turning towards Nazumi. Oh don't worry about us, we will get paid, he said before he bent down and grabbed Nazumi by the collar and started dragging him towards the marine ship. Zoro. Sanji, with me. Luffy yelled out causing the two of them to smirk before following their captain. The three of them along with a screaming Nazumi boarded the marine vessel and began sailing off in the direction of the marine base. Where are we going captain? Zoro asked causing Luffy to smirk before he replied. Oh we are going to raid the marine base, Luffy said causing Nazumi's eyes to widen along with Zoro and Sanji's. Luffy then turned towards Nazumi and spoke. And if you behave yourself I'll let you keep your life, he said while staring at Nazumi with the cold eyes of a killer. Nazumi almost wanted to piss himself when Luffy spoke to him. He quickly nodded his head in agreement as he spoke. Yes, yes, anything you want, he said in a scared voice. Luffy smiled and stood him up and dusted him off before he spoke. Good now you are going to lead us into the base as your guests and take me directly to the vault, Luffy said in a calm tone while he placed his hand on Nazumi's shoulder. He then turned towards Zoro and Sanji and gave them orders. While I'm emptying the vault you two go search for gunpowder and ammo for the ship, said causing the two of them to nod their head. After sailing for five more minutes the group came upon the marine base island. It was a small island that was completely occupied by the marines, there were no civilians there at all. The marine ship docked and Nazumi began to lead them off the ship and began walking ahead of them towards the base. As they were walking towards the base a group of marines came out from the base to greet their captain. Captain Nazumi. A marine officer shouted as he saluted his captain. Welcome back, sir. He shouted once more causing Luffy's eye to twitch. Nazumi sighed and saluted back to his men before he spoke. Okay, okay, stop shouting damn it, Nazumi said in a tired tone. Luffy was impressed by his acting. So far, not one of his men had suspected anything. I have a job for you, he said getting the marines that were there to perk up. These gentlemen are our guests and are in need of gunpowder and ammo. Please take them to storage and give them all that we have, he said surprising the marines. All of it, sir. The marine asked in a surprised tone. Nazumi got angry and yelled at the marine. Did I speak with a stutter, marine? He asked, yelled causing the marines to immediately jump back before he started apologizing. No, sir. Very sorry, sir. We will get right on it. Sir. He yelled out before he turned towards Sanji and Zoro and spoke. If you would follow me we could get going, he said causing Sanji and Zoro to nod their heads before they started following the marine. Luffy turned towards Nazumi and spoke in an amused tone. You have one loud and energetic marine, he said causing Nazumi to sigh before he spoke in a tiresome tone. You have no idea he said while rubbing his temple before he straightens himself up and spoke in a disgusted tone towards Luffy. Let's just hurry up and get this over with, pirate, he spat causing Luffy to nod his head before the two of them began walking into the building. Luffy summoned a small thundercloud to put all of the money on and to also ride back towards the island on. The cloud was following the two of them closely behind Luffy as they entered the building and began descending a staircase towards the basement. When they finally reached the basement they came upon a long hallway and at the end of the hallway Luffy could see a giant safe with a door as big as the hallway itself. The two of them walked towards the end of the hallway and Nazumi then walked up to the door and placed a key into a keyhole before he walked over to a knob on the safe, what Luffy assumed to be a combination lock, and began entering the combination before walking back towards the key and turning it four time. On the final turn, Luffy heard a click from the safe before Nazumi walked over to the right side of the safe and grabbed the handle and pull. The large door of the safe came open and inside Luffy could see a large pile of gold at least 10 feet tall. Luffy was absolutely surprised, he did not expect the marines to have this much money. He turned towards Nazumi and spoke. How much is in there? He asked in a surprised tone. 500 million the last time I checked, he said surprising Luffy. Just where did you get all this money from? Luffy asked in a disbelieving tone. 
I mean we're in the east blue of all places, if it was the grand line I would understand, but this is the east fucking blue, he said. We collected this in a span of five years. Usually, we would need to send half of it to HQ but we just keep telling them we only have enough to keep the base afloat. The fact that we are in the east blue made them believe us even more, he said causing Luffy to chuckle. Very well, he said before moving to the side and allowing the thundercloud to enter the vault. After today you won't have to lie anymore, Luffy said in an amused voice causing Nazumi to growl. The cloud entered the vault and began to increase its size. Soon the cloud had covered the entire vault itself, swallowing everything that is inside the vault. What is it doing? Asked Nazumi as he stared at the cloud. It is storing everything that is in the vault inside itself, he said surprising Nazumi. A minute later the cloud began to shrink until it was about twice the size it was before it had entered the vault. After it finished shrinking it came out of the vault showing the two of them what was left. Nazumi and Luffy looked inside the vault and saw a single gold coin laying on the floor. Nazumi's eyes were as wide as dinner plates, Luffy had cleaned the entire vault leaving him with a single berry. Luffy laughed before he placed his hand on Nazumi's shoulder and spoke in his usual emotionless tone. I think our business has come to an end, he said causing Nazumi to growl. He wasn't going to try and attack the pirate, he had seen the fight against Arlong. This single pirate slaughtered Arlong's entire crew before he toyed around with Arlong and they destroyed Arlong Park with a single attack. He knew if he tried to attack Luffy he would meet a painful death. Playing it safe he decided to just lead the pirate out of the base before he contacted Navy HQ. If you would follow me, we would be on our way. I am sure your friends are finished with their business, he said before began walking through a different hallway from the one they came from. That's not the way we came, Luffy said while narrowing his eyes at Nazumi. Yes, I know that. The door leading into that staircase cannot be opened from the inside and no one is allowed to open from to outside in order to let someone out. Anyone who enters through that door has to leave through the door by the prison section of the base, he said. Luffy shrugged before following him through the hallway. At the end of the hallway, they made a left before they came upon a row of jail cells. Some were empty while some had prisoners inside of them. As they were walking by the prisoners were screaming at Nazumi and Luffy and it was starting to piss Luffy off. Finally having enough of them he sent bolts of lightning shooting out of his body into each cell shocking every prisoner. When they reached the end of the hallway they came upon a staircase leading up towards a door, Luffy was about to start climbing the stairs but was stopped in his tracks by a scream for help coming from his right. Please help me. A woman screamed causing Nazumi and Luffy to turn to their right. What Luffy saw made his blood boil. Laying on the ground in the middle of the cell was a woman with her clothes torn exposing her underwear, her face was swollen showing that she was obviously beaten, her entire body was covered in cuts and bruises, and her eyes were filled with tears. Standing over the woman were three marines staring at her with lecherous grins on their faces and a hungry look in their eyes. Shut up, bitch. One of the marines said before grabbing her by the hair and pulled her up to his level. No one is going to save you. You're our little toy to do as we please, he said before shoving her back down to the ground. One of the marines looked out of the cell and saw Nazumi and Luffy looking at them. He immediately straightened up and saluted Nazumi. Sir, he said while saluting getting the other two attention. When they saw their captain the two of them saluted as well. Nazumi smiled and nodded his head before he continued walking up the stairs ignoring the woman's scream for help. As he took one step on the staircase to start heading up a loud booming thunder sounded outside causing the entire building to shake. Nazumi immediately went pale and snapped his head around to see Luffy staring at the three marines with nothing but rage inside his eyes while electric blue sparks surrounded his body. You marines have the audacity to call us pirate scum and this is what you are doing to a poor defenseless woman, Luffy said in an icy tone that sent chills down the spine of the marines and every prisoner in there. He then pulled out his pistol and fired three shots. Bang bang bang. Three bolts of lightning came out of his gun and hit all three of the marines in the head causing all of them to drop dead on the floor. Luffy then turns towards Nazumi and spoke. You marines are far worse than scum itself 
he said before he extended his left arm and a rope of lightning shot out and wrapped around Nazumi as he was trying to escape causing him to fall face first on the stairs breaking a few teeth. Luffy then walked over to the wall and placed his palm on it before he left lightning through the walls of the entire basement. Three seconds later all of the cell doors came open and the prisoners began running out thanking Luffy as they ran past him. Luffy then walked into the cell where the woman was, she had her back towards him crying as she stared at the dead marines on the ground. As Luffy stood directly behind her he noticed something on her left shoulder that made him even angrier. It was the hoof of the flying dragon, the mark that the world nobles put on their slaves. He immediately took off his captain's coat and placed it around the girl. She turned around and saw Luffy staring at her with a warm smile on his face. You're safe now, he said causing her to cry some more. Luffy then bent down and picked her up bridal style causing her to let out an ep. Luffy carried her out of the cell and placed her on the cloud before he began walking up the stairs with the cloud carrying the girl following behind. As he was walking up he grabbed Nazumi by his hair and started dragging him up the stairs not bothering to take his time with him. When they reached the door Luffy kicked it off of its hinges knocking out two surprised marines in the process. He then walked through dragging Nazumi with him while the cloud followed behind and began heading towards the exit. As they exited the building they saw nothing but utter chaos. All over the ground was burn marks from where lightning had previously struck while marines were running all over the place trying to capture the escaped prisoners. Luffy spotted Zoro and Sanji standing by the docks with a large set of gunpowder and cannonballs in crates. He began walking towards the two not bothered by the lightning striking everywhere around him and the loud thunder booming overhead. Zoro and Sanji saw their captain walking towards them without his coat on. It was the first time either of them had seen him without his coat. Looking behind him they saw riding on the thundercloud was a girl who had obviously been through some stuff. Zor and Sanji looked at each other before they nodded their head in a silent agreement that they will wait until the captain tells them about the girl. As Luffy was walking towards them bolts of lightning would come down from the sky and strike any marine who would try and attack him in order to save Nazumi. What got you all pissed off captain? Zoro asked causing Sanji to smack him across his head. What was that for you shitty cook? He screamed causing Sanji to point at the girl behind Luffy. Zoro then realized what he had done and immediately shut up. Enough you too, Luffy said before he summoned a large thundercloud out of the sky. The cloud came down and swallowed up the cargo that Zoro and Sanji acquired before it went and line up behind the cloud with all the money. Luffy then dragged Nazumi on board the marine's ship they came on soon being followed by Zoro and Sanji. As they got on board Sanji raised the anchor and released the sails causing the ship to start to sail away from the thundercloud infested island. When they were a safe distance away Luffy face an order to Sanji and Zoro. Stop the ship right here, he said causing Zoro to raise the sails while Sanji dropped the anchor. Luffy unbinds Nazumi and kicked him in the stomach causing him to cough up some blood. Please, please don't kill me. Nazumi begged Luffy. Luffy just stared at him with the cold emotionless eyes of a kill for a while before he spoke in an icy tone. Give me one good reason why I should let scum like you live after what you let your men do to that poor girl, he said causing Nazumi to turn pale and shake in fear. However, I won't kill you, Luffy said surprising everyone there. If I kill you who is going to tell Navy HQ about what happened here? Dead men tell no tales after all, he said before he walked to the front of the ship and stared at the marine base island for a while before he spoke. I am, however going to kill your men for they did to this girl, he said before he looked at the skies above the island. Nazumi snakingly crawled to the side of the boat and looked out of the railing. Zoro and Sanji went and stood behind Luffy and girl wrapped Luffy's coat tightly around herself before she hopped off of the cloud and went to stand off to the opposite side of the ship away from Nazumi and looked out to see what was going to happen. In the skies above the marine base island, the thunderclouds began to swirl around. The wind was starting to pick up and now instead of just the island being covered in darkness, a large part of the ocean surrounding the island was covered in darkness as well. Luffy's eyes started to glow with power and air around began to thicken making it hard to breathe for Sanji and Zoro, two of them took a few steps back in order to breathe again. 
Luffy's body was then surrounded by electric blue sparks of lighting and the crackling of lighting filled the ears of those who were close enough to Luffy to hear. Luffy then raised his right hand in the air before he spoke in a loud booming voice as he brought his hand down in one swift motion. Rajin's sacred judgment. Out from the center of the swirling clouds, a giant pillar like the one Luffy had summoned at Arlong Park came down and swallowed the entire island. As it encased the entire island, it produced a bright white flash blinding everyone for a few seconds. About three seconds after the light appeared a loud booming thunder was heard. It was the loudest thunder everyone had ever heard. It forced Zoro, Sanji, Nazumi and the girl to cover their ears. That thunder and that wit flash were heard and seen throughout the entire East Blue. When everyone regained their eyesight what they saw caused their eyes to widen in utter disbelief. The pillar of lightning was gone and clouds in the sky were starting to go away as well, but the thing that has everyone's jaw on the floor was the fact that in the island had completely disappeared. In the space of where the island was if a hole in the middle of the ocean rapidly being filled with water. Zoro and Sanji were staring at something they didn't even think were possible. They had known Luffy was powerful, but they never thought he could wipe an entire island off the face of the earth in under five seconds. He, he, just, wow, was all Sanji to stutter out while Zoro could only nod dumbly in agreement to whatever Sanji just said. Luffy then turned around and began walking towards the girl leaving Zoro and Sanji to continue to stare at the hole that was filling up with water. When Luffy reached in front of the girl he spoke getting her attention. Hey there, he said in a calming tone getting her attention. What's your name? he asked. The girl looked up at Luffy for a while before he answered in a nervous voice. My name is Diane, she said while looking at her feet. Thanks for saving me she said with some tears in her eyes. Nice to meet you, Diane, I'm Luffy and you don't have to thank me for anything, Luffy said as he placed his hand on her shoulder. Where are you from? He asked. I'm from right here in the East Blue, Kokoyasi village on Konami Islands, she said causing Luffy to smile at her warmly. That's good cause we just came from there, he said causing her to look up at him with wide hopeful eyes. And we are heading back there to pick up the rest of my crew. So, we could drop you off, he said. She started crying and immediately wrapped her arms around Luffy and began to sob into his shirt. Luffy smiled and hugged her back before he turned towards Sanji and Zoro and spoke. Hey, you two, he shouted getting their attention. Time to go. Zoro, destroy the rudder and cut the anchor, he said earning a nod for the two of them. Luffy then picked Diane up bridal style and place her back on the cloud before he hopped on with her. Sanji then hopped on behind them soon followed by Zoro after he finished cutting the anchor. When everyone was on the two clouds that contained the money and the cargo began to rise into the sky with its passengers leaving Nazumi on a ship in the middle of the ocean that had no way to steer or stop it. Luffy then pulled out his pistol and fired a shot at the base main mast causing it to explode who the bolt of lightning hit it. The main mast of the marine ship then fell over causing Nazumi to take cover. When the mast had fallen Nazumi came out from where he was taking refuge and screamed at Luffy. You will pay for this straw hat. Mark my word. He screamed at the top of his lungs. Luffy ignored him and focused on carrying everyone and the cargo in the two clouds. Realizing he wouldn't be able to hold the weight of everything for long he turned to everyone and spoke. Hold on he said before bolts of lightning shot out of the cloud and wrapped around everyone holding them in place. The two clouds then shot off to Kokoyasi village at blinding speed. After flying for about two minutes the group arrived in front of Arlong Park. Yusop, Johnny, and Yosaku were there waiting for them while it looked like the rest of the villagers and Nami had gone back towards the village. They all hopped off the cloud and saw Luffy was sweating a bit. You okay there captain? Zoro asked causing everyone to look at Luffy. Ye just took a lot of effort to carry all of you plus all the cannonballs and gunpowder, he said causing them to nod their heads. Luffy then sent the cloud with all the cargo towards the going Mary which was docked right next to Arlong Park and have it drop the cargo on deck. He then turned towards Johnny, Yosaku, and Usopp and gave them orders. Bring the ship to the rear of the island, next to the village, Usopp he said earning a salute from him. 
And you two take all of that cargo below deck and place it in storage, he said to Johnny and Yosaku. He then turned towards Sanji, Zoro, and Dian and spoke, we are going to the village, I need a drink and Zoro needs a doctor, he said. Zoro was about to protest but the look he got from Luffy told him to shut up. Before they left Luffy sent the cloud with all the money up in the sky to wait until he was ready for it. The group then began heading towards the village they hear the sounds of laughter and cheering from the people in the village. It sounds like they are having a party. I wonder what the occasion is, Diane said while walking beside Luffy. Luffy chuckled before he spoke. It's a long story, but before we tell you that story or I'm sure someone in the village will. I have a question I want to ask you, Luffy said making her a bit nervous. Were you one of the slaves who Fisher Tiger freed? He asked causing her to flinch. Don't worry, you are never going back there and no one isn't going to hurt you here. I just wanted to know, he said trying to calm her down. Zoro and Sanji decided to walk closer to the two in order to hear her story. Yes I was, he said causing Sanji and Zoro's eyes to widen while Luffy showed no reaction. I was captured when I was a just a little girl and was sold to one of the world nobles. I remember thinking I was going to die a slave, but one night a fishman saved me and a bunch of other slaves. Since then I was trying to find my way back to the East Blue, it wasn't until a few months ago I was able to return here, but right after I entered the East Blue Nozumi and his men found me on a passenger ship. When they saw my mark they took me away and locked me up at their base, she said shakily. Luffy placed his hand on her shoulder before he spoke. It's okay now, you're back home he said while pointing at the village. She hadn't realized it but while they were taking they had already arrived in the village. It was the same way she remembered it. Upon seeing Luffy the entire village began cheering and running towards him with bright happy smiles on their faces. Just as they were about to surround Luffy he held out his hand stopping them. Before anything else, he said before he grabbed Zoro by the back of his shirt and push him forward. He needs a doctor ASAP he said causing an old man in a white coat to step forward. I'll take care of him, he said causing both Luffy and Sanji to push a grumbling Zoro towards the man. Luffy then placed his hand on Dian's shoulder before he spoke again. This is Dian, he said making everyone attention turn their attention towards her. She is from this village but was kidnapped a long time ago. I found her being held prisoner by the marines and brought her here he said causing everyone to start whispering among themselves. All the whispering was interrupted by a woman steps forward and speaking to Diane. D. Diane, is it really you? An older woman said with tears in her eyes while holding on to an older man. Diane looked at the two of them and began to cry before she ran towards the two of them and hugged them. Genzo was the next person to speak. I can't believe it, he said while staring at Diane. It has been almost 15 years since she was taken, he said causing Luffy's eyes to widen along with a lot of the younger people of the village. Before anyone else could say anything more depressing Luffy spoke. Hey, he shouted causing everyone to look at him as he pulls out a bottle of whiskey. I thought we were having a party, he said with a rare smile on his face. Everyone then began to party. Four days and one big party later. It had been four days since Luffy defeated Arlong. The entire village celebrated their freedom for three days straight with no work and a three-day long party with an all-you-can-eat buffet. During those three days, Zoro had gotten his wounds treated and everyone on the crew got a long-awaited well-deserved rest. Diane had given Luffy back his coat on the second day after she washed it. She and her parents thanked Luffy over and over for bringing her back home. Luffy kept telling them they didn't need to thank him but they just wouldn't listen. Currently, Luffy, Sanji, Zoro, and Usopp were on the going merry packing up the food supplies the villagers gave them along with a couple of tangerine trees Nami placed on the ship last night. Standing on the docks beside the ship were all of the villagers, Dian, and her parents along with Genzo and Nojiko. No one had seen Nami all morning, but Luffy knows she was going to show up eventually. He looked at his crew who was on board and spoke. You guys remember the plan right? He asked confusing Sanji who Luffy left out of the plan. Zoro nodded his head along with Usopp, Johnny, and Yosaku. Huh, what plan? 
Sanji asked with a confused look on his face. Luffy chuckled before he spoke. You'll see, he said before walking to the back of the ship and looked at the villagers more specifically Nojiko. Hey Nojiko, Luffy called out getting her attention along with everyone else's. Your sister can be a pain in the ass sometimes, Luffy said with a smirk causing Nojiko to smirk as well. I might need some help keeping her in check, he said. Everyone was staring at the interaction between the two with a smile or in Genzo's case, he looked like someone just shot his cat. Oh and you want me to help you keep her in check? She asked. That's right, Luffy said before taking his hat off and running his hand through his hair before putting it back on. Well, if you're interested, he said. She then went into a thinking position before she answered. Okay, you got yourself a new crew member she said before she hopped on board the ship. Luffy looked at her strangely before he asked her a question. No clothes or anything, he asked. Nojiko smiled before he answered. Nami is getting it, she said causing Luffy's jaw to drop. It was then Luffy heard Nami shouting. Set the sails, she shouted causing him to turn and look at her. He saw her standing some distance away from the villagers. As the villagers were pleading with her to say goodbye Luffy turned to his crew yelled out orders. You heard the lady. Set the sails. Raise the anchor. Sanji manned the rudder. Luffy yelled out causing all of them to scramble to get everything done. Usopp and Johnny released the sails while Zoro and Yosaku pulled up the anchor while Sanji took command of the rudder and began steering the ship. Nojiko ran over to Usopp and Johnny to help them tie the sails in place while Luffy stood there with a straight face staring at everyone. Luffy turned towards Nami and saw her running towards the ship weaving in and out between people. You don't think she is going to do what I think she is going to do right? Zoro asked from beside Luffy. I think she is, Luffy replied. Nami reached the end of the dock and made a giant leap and jumped from the dock onto the ship surprising Luffy. When Nami landed on the ship the first thing she did was pull her shirt up causing Luffy's eyes to widen while Sanji began to get excited. Out of her shirt fell a bunch of wallets and purses that she had stolen from the villagers while running past them. Luffy shook his head and started laughing. Thanks a bunch, she yelled at the villagers causing their jaws to drop. Luffy then looked to the guys and nodded signaling it was time to start the plan. As they sailed some distance away from the island Luffy was sitting on his throne made of clouds, Zoro was up in the crow's nest, Sanji was in the kitchen making lunch, Usopp was sitting on the floor next to Luffy doing something with his inventions, Johnny and Yosaku were playing cards off to Luffy's left, and Nami and Nojiko has just finished tending to their tangerine trees and were walking up to the rear deck with lawn chairs to sit with Luffy. What do you think you're going to do Nami? Luffy asked while he looked at her with a raised eyebrow. I'm going to relax for a bit, she said while opening the lawn chair. By now Usopp, Johnny, and Yosaku went into position to carry out the plan along with Zoro. Relax, Luffy asked before he started to laugh which puzzled Nami and Nojiko. You committed treason on a pirate ship and you think you are just going to come back on board that very same ship and relax? Luffy asked causing her eyes to widen. In a normal situation that crime would be rectified with your life, he said scaring her a bit. But you see you had never actually joined the crew if I recalled correctly we only teamed up to achieve our goals, he said causing her to relax for a bit. That does not mean you are off the hook. You stole my ship that carries my symbol so you must be punished. Boys, Luffy shouted. As he shouted that Zoro, Usopp, Johnny, and Yosaku all dumped four large buckets of some mud all over the deck except for the rear deck where Luffy was on. Sanji then came out of the kitchen wearing an apron and screamed. What the hell are you idiots doing? He screams while looking at Zoro. Luffy walked over to Nami and handed her a mop and bucket. From this day forward you are on cleanup duty until I say otherwise, Luffy said causing Nami to take the mop and bucking. And no one is to help her. He yelled while looking at Sanji and Nojiko causing them to nod. Nojiko nodded with a smile who Sanji looked like he wanted to protest but thought otherwise. Nami then went down with her mop and bucket and began cleaning the ship. After about three hours Nami finally finished cleaning the ship. She came climbing up the steps looking all tired and covered in sweat, she walked over to Luffy and spoke. Done, she said. 
Luffy smiled and nodded his head telling her she could take a break. Sanji then showed up with three drinks on a silver platter. He handed a glass of whiskey on the rocks to Luffy and took the other two drinks over to Nami and Nojiko. Luffy took a sip of whiskey and smiled before looking up at the sky. It was there he saw a news coup flying overhead. He whistled getting its attention causing the bird to fly down to the ship. Luffy paid it and took the new paper and went back to his throne. As he opened the paper and began reading he spoke out loud. Hem this world sure is a turbulent place, he said while flipping through the pages. There had been another coup in Villa, he said before turning the page again. As he turned the page a piece of paper fell out of the newspaper. Hum what's that? Luffy asked as he stared at the paper flying around the before it finally landed between Luffy and Usopp. When he saw it his eyes widened and Usopp screamed. Ah, Usopp screamed causing everyone else to come over and see what the commotion was. When they saw it they all stared at it with eyes the size of dinner plates. At Navy HQ, gathered inside Navy HQ in the agenda room were all of the vice admirals of the Navy discussing a major threat that has arrived in the world. So, even a conservative estimate of their power they are still too much for our branches to handle to handle. Asked one the vice admirals as he poured himself some sake. Yes, even before forming this pirate group he killed Marine Branch Captain Axe Handle Morgan single-handedly. Since then he showed no signs of slowing down. Buggy, the clown, 15 million, Kuro, of a 1000 plans, who apparently faked his death the first time 16 million, Branu said surprising everyone in the room. Pirate Admiral Don Krieg 17 million, Fishman Pirate, Sawtooth, Arlong 20 million, he said pointing to each wanted poster in the board. Every one of these pirates had a bounty over 10 million and he took them down, but that was to be expected considering who he is, Branu said getting the attention of the marines. From the reports we gathered, he has a Logia class devil fruit and a powerful one at that, he said earning a few gasps from a few vice admirals. Logias are believed to be the rarest and most powerful class of devil fruit there is, said one vice admiral. Do we know kind of Logia it is? He asked. Branu looked at the paper he had in his hand and spoke. It is believed to be a lightning Logia devil fruit. We have a report from Captain Nazumi of Branch 16 saying that this pirate completely wipes Branch 16 of the face of the earth killing everyone who on the island with just one attack. Branu said causing all of the eyes of the marines to widen at that. He then looked at the paper before he spoke again. It was also reported that he is a master of all three forms of hockey, he said causing everyone's eyes to widen. A hockey user. In the East Blue. One vice admiral shouted, asked. Did you just say all three? Asked another. He has conqueror's hockey. This isn't good, commented another marine. It gets worse, Branu said causing everyone to stop talking and look at him with eyes the size of dinner plates. Just how can this get worse? Asked one of the vice admiral in a tone that sounded like he was very scared of whatever Branu was about to say. He is also the apprentice of red-haired Shanks, he said causing the entire room to go silent. Before anyone could say anything about that he spoke again. Ten years ago red hair came to the East Blue if you all recalled, he said earning nods from everyone. It was reported that he took a kid back with him and now we have reasons to believe. No scratch that we are certain that this is the very same kid. Reports go as far to say at one point the kid was a high-ranking officer on Shank's crew and he left to start his own crew with Shank's blessing. And because of that, we are giving him a bounty of asterisk 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 asterisk, Branu said stopping to let that information sink in. I can't believe it, said one vice admiral. Where is this boy now? Asked another immediately going into the marines mode. He is currently heading towards Logue Town. We already sent reinforcements to back up Captain Smoker, Branu said. That's good, we cannot allow a pirate of this caliber to re-enter the Grand Line. One vice admiral said earning nods from the rest. Syrup village. Miss. Miss. Screamed Mary as he ran up to the stairs with a piece of paper in his hand. He pushed open the room to her study and spoke. Miss Kaya did you see this? He asked as he held up Luffy's wanted poster for her to see. She took it and smiled before she spoke. Looks like they are really doing it huh, Mary? 
She asked as she stared at the paper. Yea, they are, he replied. Kaya then turned to him and smiled before she spoke again. That's great news, Usopp is moving towards his dreams so I better start working harder to achieve my dreams, she said with conviction. Shell Town. Sweeping the halls of the marine base in Shell 2 is Kobe. As he was sweeping he noticed a wanted poster on the wall. When he looked at it he smiled widely when he saw it was Luffy. Luffy you're out achieving your dream, but when we meet again we will meet as enemies, he said while smiling all too happy. Some random island in the Grand Line. Hawkeye walked ashore on the island and was immediately greeted by the weapons of a bunch of scared pirates. What do you want, Hawkeye? Ask a very scared pirate with his sword drawn. Mahawk just looked at him with a bored expression on his face before he spoke. Oh relax, take me to your superiors, he said causing the pirate to run off into the woods. Camping out on a deserted island, what a carefree man, he said before he followed the pirate into the woods. After walking for a few minutes he came upon the camp of the red-haired pirates. They were all sitting around under a large umbrella nursing their hangover. Boss. Ha ha Hawkeye. The pirate screamed at Shanks while pointing behind him. Shanks who was sitting on a log didn't even look at Mahawk when he spoke. Hello, Hawkeye, to what do I owe the pleasure? Have you come to fight me? Cause you know I'm not feeling so good at the moment, Shanks said in a low voice. I have no intention of fighting a drunk man, I'll settle the score some other time, Mahawk said while looking down at Shanks. I recently came across a mutual friend of ours in the East Blue, he said getting everyone's attention as he began walking towards Shanks with a rolled up paper in his hand. I just thought you might want to see this, he said as he unrolled the paper showing Shanks Luffy's bounty poster. Shanks' eyes widened when he saw it along with the rest of the crew, he then chuckled to himself before he spoke. Well, in that case, I just can't let you leave, Hawkeye, Shanks said in a dangerous tone causing Mahawk to narrow his eyes. He then brought out a mug and began pouring booze in it while laughing. Hawkeye, come on drink up, Shanks said with a large smile on his face. Weren't you just hungover? Hawkeye asked. Don't be crazy, we have to celebrate. Our student just got his first bounty, everybody let's party. Shanks shouted before he raised his own glass. To Luffy, he yelled. To Luffy, the rest of the crew yelled as they downed their drink. Fusha Village. Meanwhile back in Fusha Village, everyone was celebrating the fact that Luffy was out achieving his dreams. Inside Makino's bar, the main celebration was happening with everyone drinking and celebrating Luffy's first bounty. Who would have thought a big-time pirate came from our village, said one of the villagers. I know right it's amazing, said another. Shut up. What is so great about a no-good criminal coming from our village? The mayor said. Ah just look at him mayor, he is so cute, said Makino from behind the bar. He's really out there going after his dream, she said. His dream or his fate, the mayor said to himself. Back on the going Mary. Back on the going Mary, everyone was staring at the wanted poster laying on the ground with shocked faces while Luffy was just smirking. Would you look at that I'm a wanted man, he said smugly as he stared at the poster. The picture they used was just after he destroyed Arlong Park. It was him standing in the middle of a pile of ash that was Arlong Park with dark thunderclouds and lightning in the sky behind him as stared what looked to be directly into the camera with the cold eyes of a killer with the torn up flag of the Arlong pirates laying off to the side of his feet. And just below the picture, they had his name and moniker along with his bounty. It read. Wanted. Dead or alive. Monkey D. Luffy. Moniker. The Thunder Demon. Straw Hat Luffy. Bounty. One hundred million dollars. Wow. Johnny and Yosaku said. One hundred million. Usopp yelled in surprise. That's amazing. He said. As he said that Nami smacked him at the back of his head. Shut up you idiot. This is bad. She said. This means really strong marines will come after us. She said with a worried look on her face. One hundred million. With a bounty like that Navy HQ will sure to take action, Zoro said in a low voice. Not to mention it is going to attract a lot of bounty hunters, and these bounty hunters are going to be good, he said scaring everyone except Luffy. Luffy saw everyone was starting to panic and decided to ease their worrying. 
All of you. He yelled from his throne getting their attention. Relax and calm down. Unless they send Navy Admiral Kazaru we're fine, he said calming them down a bit. What's so wrong with this Kazaru guy? Asked Nojiko. Let's just say he is the only person who will give me a hard time in a fight, he said surprising them. Now with a bounty like that it means that the Navy is aware of my relationship with Shanks and my power. So, they are going to try their best to prevent us from entering the Grand Line, he said earning a nod from each of them. He then turned to Nami and spoke. Nami, plot a course to Logue Town. We will stop there and resupply and from there we head straight into the Grand Line, he said in an authoritarian voice. Right, she said before heading to grab her map. Why do we need to stop at Logue Town? Sanji asked with a curious look on his face. Can't we just go straight into the Grand Line? We have enough supplies, he asked causing Luffy to chuckle. We could, but stopping at Logue Town before entering the Grand Line is more of a ritual for pirates, he said earning a curious look from everyone there. You see Logue Town is the place where Gal D. Roger was born and where he died, Luffy said causing everyone's eyes to widen. It also the place where the great pirate era started. It is known as the town of the beginning and the end. Chapter 13. Training and a declaration in Logue Town. The crew had been traveling for about a few hours now since they found out about Luffy's bounty. Luffy was sitting on his throne watching the crew as they all are doing their own thing. Usopp is standing off to Luffy's right cleaning one of the cannons on deck, Nami and Nojiko were behind Luffy relaxing on lawn chairs, Zoro, Johnny, and Yosaku were at a front of the ship exercising while Sanji was in the kitchen. Luffy then stood up from his throne and began walking down towards the main deck. All of you, come here. He shouted causing all of them to stop what they were doing and make their way towards Luffy to see what he wanted. Soon Luffy stood on the main deck with everyone surrounding him. What is it, Captain? Sanji asked while holding a spoon in his hand. Luffy looked around at each of them before he looked up at the sky causing all of them to do the same. They all saw a thundercloud coming down from the sky. Sanji and Zoro immediately recognized it as the cloud that had all of the money they stole from the marine base. Before we beginning, Luffy said getting all of their attention as he walked towards Nami and place his right hand on her shoulder puzzling everyone. Need to add on to Nami's punishment he said before ropes of lightning sprang out of his wrist and bound her in place. Ah, she screamed as they wrapped around her. What the hell Luffy? She yelled, asked. Luffy chuckled evilly he pushed her back causing her to fall on his thrones which seemed to have followed him. Nami tried to break free of her bonds but found it impossible. She then tried to stand up but also found it impossible. Apparently, the lightning that was binding her and the lightning in the thundercloud throne connected to each other effectively holding her in place. Luffy is there a reason you tied up Nami? Usopp asked with a curious look on his face. Luffy turned away from Nami and faced him before he replied. Yes, this, he said before snapping his fingers causing the cloud to let go of all that it had stored in itself. Everyone's eyes were as wide as dinner plates when they saw it was literally raining money and all sorts of treasure. Nami looked like she was at the gates of heaven but as much as she tried to open the gates to heaven they would not open for her. All she can do was watch from the outside. So this is why you tied up my sister, Nojiko said as she walked over to the large pile of treasure. You're very evil you know that captain. She asked while looking at Luffy with a smirk. Luffy smirked at her before he started laughing. He turned to check on Nami and saw her trying everything she could to break free of her bonds. It's no use, he said getting her attention. It won't come undone until I undo it, he said getting her to stop struggling and just look on dejectedly at everyone else. All right listen up, Luffy said before walking into his captain's quarters and coming back out with a few large bags. Place all of the money in this bag, he said before tossing one of the bags over to Sanji. After that take all of the gold and other precious stones in these and store them below deck, he said tossing the rest of the bag to Johnny, Yosaku, and Nojiko. We will store the cash in one of the clouds and keep it in the sky where it is safe. The rest of the treasure will be held here on the ship, he said earning a nod from all of them. Luffy then turned towards Sanji and spoke. Sanji we are a few days away from Luge Town. 
I want you to check out inventory for the kitchen and make a list of everything you are going to need for the kitchen, Luffy said earning a nod from him. Okay all of you hurry up and put this stuff away so I can begin your training. He yelled out puzzling all of them. Um Luffy, Nami said from behind Luffy. What kind of training? She asked. Your hockey training, Luffy said before he walked over to Nami and leaned against the throne. And what is hockey, big bro Luffy? Johnny asked with a confused look on his face along with Yosaku. Luffy just sighed before he spoke. I'll explain all of that when you are all done, he said before summoned a new cloud for him to sit on as he watches the rest of the crew hurry to put everything away. It took about 45 minutes for them to clear everything, but once they did all that was there was a large bag of money. All done Captain. Usopp, Johnny, and Yosaku said as they stood in a straight line while saluting Luffy. Luffy shook his head in amusement before getting up from the cloud. As he stood up the cloud he was sitting on moved closer to the throne holding Nami in place before it fused with it creating a bigger cloud. He then snapped his finger as he walked towards the bag causing the lightning holding Nami in place to disappear. Nami immediately sprang to her feet and began running towards the large bag that Luffy had just grabbed hold of. Just as she was inches away from reaching the bag it disappears along with Luffy causing everyone's eyes to widen. As they disappeared Nami tumbled herself forward landing on top of Sanji with his face buried in her chest causing Sanji to rocket back with a large nosebleed. When everyone turned around to see where Luffy had gone they all saw him standing in front of the throne with the bag in his hand. While Nami was picking herself up from the ground Luffy held up the bag and dropped it into the throne made of clouds causing it to disappear into the cloud. Good now that we are all done let's get started, he said as he sat on the throne. Before I teach you hockey I will first explain to you all what it is. I had already told Zoro about it so he has a general idea of what it is and what it does, but he doesn't know how to use it, he said earning a nod from Zoro. Sanji who finally got his nosebleed under control walked over next to Nojiko and spoke while sticking tissues in his nose. The old geezer had told me once about hockey, he said surprising Luffy. Well, more like he mentioned the name not really explaining what it is, he said causing Luffy to nod his head in an understanding way. Luffy had heard rumors that Zef did enter the new world but only for a short period of time before he found it too difficult and turned back to paradise. So, he could understand how Zef came to learn about hockey. He said it is a power that every pirate in the Grand Line has, and the power itself is that which could rival devil fruit users, Sanji said scaring Usopp, Nami, Johnny, and Yosaku. Luffy chuckled at their reaction. Not everyone in the Grand Line knows hockey, Luffy said getting their attention away from Sanji. Only those in the New World know about hockey. The pirates in Paradise don't really know about it he said earning a few confused looks his crew. Um, Luffy, Nojiko said causing Luffy to look over at her, what is this new world and paradise you are talking about? She asked causing the rest of them to nod their heads letting Luffy know they didn't know either. The grand line is split into two parts, the first part which we will be entering in about three days time is called paradise while the second half is called the new world, he said supervising all of them. It is a common mistake people make in thinking the Grand Line is just one continuous sea but in fact, it is two halves separated by the Red Line, he said as he reached into his coat and pulled out a bottle of whiskey and a glass and began pouring himself a drink. Paradise. Nami asked in a scared voice causing Luffy to smirk. I think we all have had stories about the Grand Line and none of them would suggest that it is paradise, she said earning nods from Usopp and the bounty hunting duo. Luffy smirked deviously scaring them even more before he replied. The first half of the Grand Line is called Paradise because when compared to the New World it is Paradise, he said causing their eyes to widen. But don't worry about that now. I will get all of you stronger by then, he said calming all of them down. Now back to hockey, he said causing all of them to pay close attention. Hockey is a power that lies dormant in all the world's creatures. It is not that different from the typical senses. However, most people do not notice it or fail to awaken it, he said before he took a sip of his whiskey. So everyone can learn this hockey thing? Johnny asked with a look of pure awe on his face. Luffy nodded his head before taking another sip of his drink. That's so cool, 
Johnny said while staring at Luffy. Everyone else nodded their head in agreement of what he just said. There are mainly two types of hockey that anyone, given the right training, could achieve. The first is observation hockey, he said before pausing and looking around making sure everyone is paying attention. After seeing everyone is listening closely he continued. It grants users a sixth sense of the world around them and limited precognitive abilities. I have heard rumors of people honing their observation hockey to such a degree that they could see a tiny bit into the future, Luffy said causing all of their eyes to widen. Seeing into the future, Sanji asked in a disbelieving voice. Luffy nodded his head before he replied. Yeah, just about a few seconds into the future, he said before taking a sip of his drink. I haven't reached that level as yet. I can only predict my enemy moves and sense the life force of everything in my range, he said before turning towards Usopp and spoke. You as a sniper Usopp could use observation hockey shoot targets that are at an extremely great distance away and hit them with precision accuracy, Luffy said causing Usopp's eyes to widen. Wow, he said before he started jumping up and down in excitement. Luffy shook his head before he spoke again. The next type is armament hockey he said before he held out his right hand for everyone to see. As they stared at Luffy's hand they were all surprised when they saw it suddenly turned from its usual color to pitch back. It allows the user to use their spirit as armor to defend against attacks or to make their own attacks more potent, he said before the blackness on his arm seems to recede back into his skin. If you are fighting against someone else who uses armament hockey it comes down to who has a stronger will or wants to win more and in that case, the weaker one always takes more damage, he said before he finished his drink and looked over to Zoro. You can use them on your sword to make your attacks more powerful, he said causing Zoro to grin. There are two important things about armament hockey you need to know, he said causing them to pay closer attention to what he is about to say. Firstly, it is something that you can run out of during a fight if you oversur it, he said surprising them once more. And secondly this type of hockey also has the ability to bypass the powers of a devil fruit user whose body has been altered by their fruit in any way, he said causing everyone's eyes to widen. What do you mean bypass their powers? Nojiko asked. For example, I am a lightning lodia type user meaning I can turn my body into lightning and make my body intangible against certain attacks, he said causing her nod her head showing she understood so far. If you were to punch me right now your arm would pass right through me not hurting me and you would get electrocuted, but if you punched me with your fist covered in armament hockey your fist wouldn't pass through me, it would hit me and it would hurt, he said. Wow, so it is extremely useful against devil fruit users. Nami asked in an astonished voice. Luffy nodded his head before he spoke again. Those are the main two that everyone could awaken, he said causing all of them to nod their heads except for Nami who looked at Luffy with a puzzled look on her face before she spoke. Main 2. She asked causing Luffy to nod his head. So there is more. She asked. Luffy smirked at her question before he replied. There is one more that only a certain group of people could unlock, he said surprising them. It is an extremely rare type of hockey that only one in several million people could unlock it. It's called Conqueror's Hockey or the King's Spirit, he said. One in several million. Usopp asked causing Luffy to nod his head. What does it do? Sanji asked. It allows the user to overpower the wills of others. Zoro. Nami and Usopp saw me use it before, he said causing those three to take on a puzzled look on their face trying to think about when they saw him use it. Usually when someone uses it they can make a group of people just pass out from their presence, he said causing the three of them to finally figure out what he was talking about. Although those who have strong wills can resist the effects of your conqueror's hockey, he said before getting up from his throne and walking into his captain's quarters and coming back out with a few strips of black cloth. First I will teach all of you observation hockey before anything I teach you armament, he said as he walked forward towards them. Any reason why that one is first? Zoro asked. I think it would be best for all of you to learn to predict your enemy's movements in a fight before we strengthen your attacks, he said as he began handing out the blindfolds to Johnny, Nami, Usopp, and Sanji. And it is way more fun to learn. Well more fun for me anyway, he said with an evil smirk causing everyone to become nervous. Now pair up. Sanji you're with Zoro he said causing Sanji to whine about not being with the beautiful ladies. 
Usopp you are with me, he said getting a nod from Usopp. So, what are we supposed to do, Captain? Nami asked causing Luffy to chuckle. One of you is going to be blindfolded while your partner won't be. The person who isn't blindfolded has to hit you in the head with one of these sticks, he said as he reached into the cloud and pull out five sticks. Why the hell do you have sticks in there? Nami yelled. Luffy shrugged his shoulders before he replied. I picked them up while we were at your hometown, he said as he tossed a stick to each pair while keeping one for himself before tossing the extra one overboard. The main goal of the person who is blindfolded is to dodge the incoming hit. Do not simply guess and move your head, clear your mind and try to expand your senses, try to feel the life forces of those around you, he said earning nods from all of them. Soon every pair went to a different part of the ship to begin their training. One thing was clear to everyone except Luffy, the next two days were going to be extremely painful. Two days later, the entire crew was currently standing at the front of the ship staring at the island they were fastly approaching. The past two days had been very painful for every member of Luffy's crew, the training was a success for the most part. Everyone could predict where most of the hits were coming from and dodge it, but they were still getting hit sometimes. Luffy did not expect them to completely master observation hockey in two days, so the progress they all have made please him. He knows the best way to learn hockey is when your life in danger, it is then your will is at its strongest dues to one's desire to live. So, all they needed was some real life experience in combat to take their hockey to the next level. While everyone could simply dodge the attacks, Usopp surprised Luffy when he told him that he can sense a faint outline of Luffy. Luffy had explained that was the life force he was sensing and explained how he could use it to pick out his targets. So that's it huh? Nojiko asked was behind Luffy knocking him out his thought. He looked behind him and saw she was staring at the island in front of them. He turned back around and stared at the island with a serious look on his face before he replied. Yeah, that's it, he said in his usual monotone voice. The town of the beginning and the end, he said before pouring himself a drink. He then turned around and walked back to his thrones. All of you follow me, he said as he walked by. When Luffy reached his throne he sat down and stared at everyone as they gather around him. He then reached into the cloud and pulled out a small bag of money and tossed it to Sanji confusing him. What's this for, Captain? Sanji asked. That's one million berries, he said causing everyone's eyes to widen. Use that money to buy whatever supplies and food you need for the kitchen and whatever is left over is yours to spend, he said earning a nod from Sanji. He then reached back into the cloud and pulled out another BG this time a bit bigger and tossed it to Zoro before he spoke. That's five million berries, buy yourself two new swords and buy does two whatever weapons they want, he said while pointing to Johnny and Yosaku. Zoro nodded his head while the bounty hunter duo saluted at Luffy before they yelled out. Thank you big bro Luffy. They yelled in unison causing Luffy to chuckle. Luffy then reached back into the cloud and pulled out another bag smaller than Zoro's but bigger than Sanji's and tossed it to Nojiko before he spoke. That's two million berries, he said surprising her. She was about to tell him she didn't need that much but he held up his hand stopping her before she could speak. Before you say you don't need that much the money in there is for you and Nami, he said causing her to smirk while Nami's eyes changed into berry signs. Nojiko is in charge of the money, Luffy said causing Nami's eyes to change back to normal and her face took on a shocked look. I feel she may be a bit more responsible with it, he said causing Nami to pout. You two could buy whatever you want, but I have some requests that you need to buy. First Nami I want you to buy more charting supplies cause I don't know when we will get to buy them again, he said causing her to nod her head. And secondly, find yourselves some weapons, he said causing them to nod their head in agreement. I, Captain, they said in unison. Luffy then reached into the cloud and pulled out a bag the same size as Sanji's and tossed it to Usopp before he spoke. That's one million berries, buy whatever you need for your inventions or whatever you else you want he said causing Usopp to nod his head excitedly. But be warned a lot of people in this town are going to try and sell you knockoff equipment and claim it to be from the Grand Line, or it belong to Gaul Roger. Do not be fooled, Luffy warned causing Usopp to nod. Luffy then looked around at everyone before he spoke. 
Good. You all have your orders out let's dock the ship someplace where the marines won't find it, he said getting nods from everyone before they ran off to get ready to dock. Just as they were about to walk down the stairs Luffy spoke again getting their attention. One more thing, there is a marine captain here called Smoker. A lot of pirates have stopped her on their way to the Gand Line but none of them ever got a chance to leave the island, he said scaring all of them except for Zoro and Sanji. He has caught every pirate that has stepped foot on that island and will likely come after me. So, none of you worry about that. I am his target, he doesn't know about any of you but if you hear of a commotion involving me hurry up and finish what you are doing and head back towards the ship, he said causing all of them to nod their head before running off to get ready to dock. Luffy poured himself a drink and took a sip before looking you to the sky with a smile on his face, he was going to achieve his dreams and no one was going to stop him. After the ship docked near the end of the island everyone got off and began making their way towards town. While they were walking Luffy kept his eyes out in search of any marines who may have spotted them entering the island. He was quite surprised when he saw no one there. He had figured that with a bounty like his the marines would do everything in their power to try and stop him from re-entering the Grand Line, but it would seem that even though they sent more marines to the island they are doing a poor job patrolling said island. Luffy wasn't complaining. After all, he didn't want to start trouble just yet. As the crew reached the entrance of the main shopping area Luffy turned to his crew and spoke. All right, I'll see you guys later. I'm going to find out where they kill me around here, he said before walking away leaving his entire crew confused. Luffy's main goal for to this island was to see the place where Gaul Roger died, but before he goes to the execution platform, there was something he needed to do. He was currently walking down the main street looking at all of the stores trying to find the store he was looking. After walking for a few more seconds he finally spotted it, Rita's tailored clothing, the sign read causing Luffy to smile before making his way over to it. As he entered he saw mannequins with suits and coat of all designs, shelves with different color fabrics and in the corner near the very back of the store he saw a counter with a small register on top of with and an elderly woman standing behind of the counter staring at him. What can I do for you today, young man? She asked in a kind tone. Luffy smiled right back and began walking towards her. I was wondering if you could add something onto my coat, he said as he took his coat off and placed it on the counter. The woman looked at him with questionable eyes before she asked him a question. Are you a pirate? She asked. Luffy looked at her and smiled widely before he replied. That I am, he said causing the elderly woman to match his smile. It has been a while since I had a pirate in my shop, she said as she held up the coat and began to examine it. I was beginning to think I would die before I get to see another one enter in here. Let me guess, you want me to add your Jolly Roger to the back of your coat seeing as how you already have a coat, she said as she turned away from the coat and looked at Luffy. He smiled at her and reached into his pocket and pulled out a picture of his Jolly Roger and handed it to her. I do, he said as he handed it to her. She looked at it and had her eyes widen. That's one scary Jolly Roger you there, young man, she said causing Luffy to chuckle. I'm glad it is doing its job, he said as he looked around the store. How long is it going to take for you to add it on? He asked. Not long just give me a few minutes, she said before she turned away from the counter and sat down in front of sewing machine she had right there. Luffy began walking around the store browsing at the clothing that was there. As he was browsing he was talking to the old lady. So, you used to have a lot of pirates as customers. He asked while looking at the number of shirts that were there. From her position in front of the sewing machine the woman answered. Yes, I did, she said as she worked on Luffy's coat. Pirates used to come to this island non-stop on their way to the Grand Line, but all that changed when Marine Smoker came to this island. Since then any pirate who stepped foot on here would be captured and executed, she said distastefully. Luffy chuckled before he replied. That's good, he said surprising her. The moment he said that the sewing machine stopped and her head whipped around and looked at him with wide eyes. I mean today everyone with a boat claims to be a pirate. If they can't make it past one marine captain they got no right to even try and enter the Grand Line, he said before looking over at her with a smirk on his face. She smiled at him and went back to her sewing. You're a strange one, 
young pirate, she said with a chuckle. Luffy walked back over to the counter and leaned against it before he spoke. The name is Monkey D. Luffy, he said while staring at the woman as she worked on the sewing machine. Without looking at him she spoke. Ah, I see. So, that is why you look so familiar. You are that rookie pirate with that big bounty on your head, she said before she stopped the machine and held up the coat to get a good look at it. You've been making the marines around here extremely nervous you know, she said with a chuckle before going back to working on the coat. Luffy laughed a bit before he replied. Not my fault they're all wimps, he said causing the old lady to laugh. After waiting for about another minute before the old lady finally finished his coat. Here you go all done, she said as she handed the coat over to him. He held it up and took one look at the back and immediately smiled. Sewed onto the back of his coat was an exact image of his Jolly Roger, a Japanese demon skull wearing a straw hat with two lightning bolts replacing the usual crossbones. It's perfect, he said before he put it on. How much? He asked. The old lady walked over to the register pushed a few buttons before she replied. Two thousand berries, she said. Luffy nodded before he reached into his pockets and pulled out a stack of cash and counted a few bills before handing it to the lady. Here you go and thanks, he said as he handed her the money and turned to leave. As he was walking out of the store the old lady spoke to him one last time. Good luck young man, she said as he walked out of the door causing Luffy to sigh. Why won't she use my name? He asked himself before ducking into one of the allies. He did not want to walk around the street with his Jolly Roger on his back for everyone to see. It was still too soon to cause trouble and he had yet to go to the execution platform. So, he began making his way to the said platform by using all of the connected allies that Logue Town had. As he was walking through ally after alley and twisting and turning Luffy came to a realization. I am lost, he said with a sigh as he began looking around trying to figure out the right way to go. It was then as he turned around he saw something that made him raise an eyebrow. It was a bar's sign that said, Bar Gold Roger, causing Luffy to raise his eyebrow in curiosity. He decided to investigate the bar and walked inside. It was completely empty and run down. There was dust everywhere, the chairs were overturned on the tables, and there were cobwebs everywhere. The only person in there was a short elderly man sitting at one of the tables with a skull in front of him along with two glasses of booze, one from him and one for the skull. Excuse me, do you work here? Luffy asked as he walked inside. The sign outside said this place is called the Gold Rover, how did it get that name? He asked again before the man could answer his first question. The man looked at Luffy through his sunglasses with a calculating eye before he replied. Scram he said in a grumpy voice. This isn't a place for a kid like you, he said causing Luffy's eyebrow to twitch. Besides we are closed for good starting today, he said as he poured himself a drink. You're going under, Luffy asked as he walked over and took a seat on one of the bar stools. I am not going under, I decided to shut it down myself, he said before placing the bottle of booze back on the table in front of him. I'm retiring, he said with a sigh. Sorry, I just wanted to know about the name, Luffy said before he pulled out a glass of his own along with his bottle of whiskey and poured himself a drink. I'm looking for the execution platform, but I am lost. Could you tell me the way? He asked before his eyes focused on the skull that was on the table. It looked like a human skull but it was way too large to be a human. Better question, where did you get that skull? He asked. Killer giant. One of the most feared villain to have haunted the waters of the Grand Line, he said before clicking his glass to the one in front of the skull. He had sent hundreds of pirates to their deaths over the course of his life, but it only took Gold Roger a single blow to put the behemoth down for good, he said with a smile causing Luffy's eyes to widen. Gold Roger killed him, Luffy asked in a surprised voice. The man threw his hands in the air before and yelled out. With lightning speed. He yelled before bringing his arms back down. You see Killer Giant was known for using this massive blade but it didn't matter, the whole fight was over before he could even raise it, he said causing Luffy to grin widely as he was listening to a story about his idol. And here is the wound that did it, he said while pointing to the missing part of the skull. 
Killer Giant was a terrible waste of human flesh anyway, but he proclaimed with his dying breath, Gold Roger the first take my hat off to you. You will forever be the king of the pirates, the old man said causing Luffy to get goosebumps and grin widely. Awesome, tell me more, Luffy said in an excited voice. Eric Dowd, the man known as King, Silver's Silver, the world greatest gunman, the giant grounds brothers, they were all famous for their strength, indestructible demons feared by everybody, but not Gold Roger, he said with a sigh before looking down. Nobody ever wants to hear my stories anymore, he said in a sad voice. Luffy's entire body was shivering with excitement. I want to hear them, come on tell me more, Luffy said excitedly. His usual cool calm and collected attitude was gone and was replaced with the attitude of a little kid. Don't rush me, he said while swirling his glass of booze. Gold Roger, he is the only man I knew back then and maybe even now, to not be afraid of entering the Grand Line, he said as he stared at his drink. Back then the Grand Line was a mysterious place. Boats that chose to venture there were never heard from again. It was a sea of evil that people feared which few ever considered approaching. Gold Roger came in here the day before he set sail to the Grand Line and drank the entire place dry before setting out the next morning as though he was going sightseeing, the old man said. Luffy could barely suppress all the fun he was having just listening to the old man's story. Then when I had heard he conquered the Grand Line I wasn't surprised. I was happy he had been the one to conquer that evil sea. On this day 22 years ago Gold Roger died on that platform and that is when it all began, the so-called Great Pirate Era, where everyone with a boat claims to be a pirate. But look around this once great town, I bet you couldn't find a real pirate, nothing but cowards and scum, he said before he downed his drink. Luffy downed his drink as well before he regained his emotions and spoke. Couldn't have said it better myself, he said agreeing with the old man's analysis of the great pirate era. Men brave enough to venture into the Grand Line have all disappeared from these waters. There are no real pirates left in the world that is why I am closing the bar the old man said with a sad look in his eyes. I'm going to the Grand Line, Luffy said causing the old man's eyes to widen. Or I should say going back to the Grand Line, he said causing the man's eyes to widen further in surprise. Gold Roger is the perfect example of how a pirate should be. That is why I am going to the Grand Line, find the One Piece, and become King of the Pirates. Luffy proclaimed causing a look of recognition to flash across the man's eyes. Those are some pretty big words, he said as he stared at Luffy. Even more so because you were in this bar. I only said what I mean, Luffy said causing the old man to laugh. Young man, if there are still people like you out there should I close this bar? He asked Luffy. I don't know, it could just be me, he replied. The old man got up from his seat and began walking towards Luffy. That's right, it could just be you he said as he walked towards Luffy with a huge smile on his face. In that case let's have a drink, I haven't been in this good a mood in some time, he said before walking behind the bar. I only drink whiskey, Luffy said as he spun around to face the old man. The man chuckled before bringing out two glasses of whiskey. The how about this, he said as he places the glasses down on the counter. Let's raise our glasses and drink to the eternal king of the pirates, he said as he took off his hat. Luffy smiled and took off his straw hat as well before he spoke. Here's to the king of the pirates, he said as he cheers with the old man before they downed the glass of whiskey. Luffy reached into his coat and pulled out a small bag of money and placed it on the counter before he spoke. Thanks for the drink, he said before he got up and walked towards the back of the store. His observation hockey had warned him that someone was coming their way. So, he decided to leave before he caused the old man any trouble. The old man was puzzled as he saw Luffy leave through the back door wondering why he didn't use the front entrance. As he was about to ask him why he heard someone enter through the front door, when he looked he saw it was Marine Captain Smoker. He immediately took the money Luffy left and placed it in his pocket before he scowled at Smoker. Luffy exited the bar and began walking in the direction of Main Street with only one thing on his mind. Time to cause some trouble, he thought to himself with a smirk. 
As he walked out of one alleyway and began walking down Main Street he could hear people murmuring behind him after they saw his Jolly Roger on his coat. Luffy ignored it all and set his sights on the execution platform that was in the town plaza. While walking towards the plaza he could sense he was being followed by marines who were hidden in the shadows while some of them were running around trying to find Smoker. Luffy was hoping his crew had finished doing what they were doing because it was about time for them get off this island. When he spotted the platform he turned his body into lightning and teleported himself to the top of the platform and stared out at the plaza. So, this is what the king of the pirates saw before he died, Luffy said to himself while looking out. He could see a crowd gathering around the base of the platform and they were all looking at him in confusion. Luffy could also sense the marines were circling the plaza, none of them was really powerful and told Luffy that Smoker had yet to arrive. Get down from there immediately. A man in a police officer's uniform yelled while holding a megaphone. Why? Luffy asked innocently. You are standing on an execution platform that belongs to the world government. Now get down from there right now. The man yelled. Luffy shrugged his shoulders before he spoke again. I'm not that big a fan of the world government, so I'm gonna stay right here, he said causing a few people to gasp. The man was about to yell something back at Luffy but before he could he was smashed in the head by a giant metal club wielded by a woman who Luffy did not recognize. It's been a while, Luffy, the woman said causing Luffy to raise his eyebrow in confusion. I've been looking for you, she said as she swung her club over her shoulder. And who might you be? Luffy asked. How rude, she said with a devious smile on her face. You mean to tell me you of all people forgot my face? She asked in a sweet voice causing all the men around her to lose their minds. Sorry, you don't have that pretty a face for me to remember it, he replied before smirking when he saw the woman's smile vanished and was replaced with an angry look. How dare you, she yelled before turning to the people in the plaza and asked them a question. Listen up everyone, who is the most beautiful woman in all the East Blue? She asked causing everyone's eyes to change into hearts before they all replied in unison. Why you of course, they all said. Just then two police officers came and tried to arrest the woman, but just as they were about to the fountain exploded sending pieces of the fountain flying all over and causing mass panic. Great, who's the dumbass interrupting me now, Luffy asked to himself. When he looked down he saw a group of people wearing hooded coats walk forward and began speaking to the woman. Sorry about that, Alveda, the hooded figure who was leading the group said. Then Luffy's eyes widened, that woman was Alveda. You're Alveda, he asked causing her to chuckle. That's right, she said in a sing-song-like voice. What happened to you? Luffy asked genuinely curious. I ate the smooth smooth fruit, she said causing Luffy to raise an eyebrow at that. Now no attack could hit me, they just slip right off, she said proudly. And as you can see, because I ate the smooth smooth fruit I lost my freckles, she said while rubbing her face. I think you lost a bit more than just freckles, Luffy thought to himself. Suddenly Luffy's observation hockey alerted him of a threat coming from above. Luffy took one step back causing his attacker to crash in front of him on the platform with a neck shackle that Luffy assumed to be made out of sea prism stone. He narrowed his eyes and looked at his attacker. The man looked familiar but Luffy couldn't remember where he met him before. The man was surprised when Luffy dodged but yet he smiled. Hey there you lightning freak, the man said causing Luffy's eyes to turn cold. How's Roronoa doing? He asked cockily. He is doing a lot better than what you will be doing in a few seconds, Luffy said in an emotionless tone puzzling the man. Huh, was all the man got to ask before he received a lightning speed kick to face sending him flying out of the plaza. Luffy looks down at the group of hooded people to see them no longer wearing their hoods. Now Luffy could see under those hoods were the buggy pirates and that man he had just kicked was Kabaji. Luffy chuckled and decided to mess with Buggy for a bit before he started to have some fun. Oh I know you, he said while pointing to Buggy. What's your name again? Luffy asked while he took on a thinking pose while at the same time summoning thunderclouds. You don't remember my name. Buggy yelled out in anger. Give me a second, it'll come to me, he said while waving his hands at Buggy pissing him off more. Ducky. No that's not it. Juggy. No not it either. 
Ugly. Buggy. That's it. Luffy yelled out causing Buggy to smile proudly at the fact Luffy remember his name. You're ugly Buggy. Luffy said while pointing at Buggy causing him to drop his smile and stare at Luffy with rage all over his face. His entire crew went pale when they heard what Luffy called their captain. You flashy bastard. He yelled causing Luffy to smirk victoriously. Some people around started snickering at what Luffy called Buggy causing the Buggy pirates to pull out their weapons and point them at the civilians. Luffy could sense that Smoker had arrived and was watching from afar. So, they want me and Buggy to take each other out before they come and arrest us while we are all tired and worn out. Clever plan Smoker, but you are going to have to better than that, Luffy thought as he ignores Buggy's angry ranting. You are going to pay Straw Hat. Buggy yelled at the top of his lungs knocking Luffy out of his thought. You will pay for getting me arrested with the rest of my crew and since we escaped I've been obsessed with exacting my revenge on you. He said causing Luffy to remember something. Oh, yeah, Luffy said stopping Buggy from continuing. I forgot I had turned both you and Alveda over to the Marines, he said causing Buggy and his entire crew to deflate a bit. He didn't even remember turning us in, they said as they began to sulk. The citizen of Ulog Town were looking at the interaction between the buggy pirates and man standing on top of the execution platform with a bewildered look on their faces. It was a strange interaction between two pirates that as if the man on top of the execution platform was a pirate. It was then a man from the crowd shouted out getting everyone's attention. Hey, he shouted while pointing at Luffy getting everyone's attention including Luffy's. T that man is the rookie pirate with the 100 million berry bounty on his head. He yelled out causing everyone's head to whip around towards Luffy who was smiling. I it's the thunder demon. Straw hat Luffy. He screamed with a lot of fear in his voice. People all around began to get scared and were wondering where the marines were. It was then Luffy had decided to get the show started. He looked up to the sky and saw it was completely filled with thunderclouds, Luffy smiled before walking forward on the platform a bit before he stood on the edge and spread his arms out wide before he yelled at the top of his lungs. My name is Monkey D. Luffy. He screamed getting everyone's attention to him. And I am the man WHO is going to be the kind of the pirates. He shouted and used his devil fruit to make the thunder boomed in the heavens and lightning to flash right behind him as he said it. Luffy then with his arms spread out wide looked up to the sky and smiled. The people in the plaza were beyond shocked at what they just heard. What? One civilian said in shock. He just said king of the pirates, another said in disbelief. In this town of all placed, that's a crazy thing to say, another said. Just when everyone thought crazy there were finished something beyond strange happened. From the dark thundercloud filled sky. A hole opened up in the clouds and through that hole, a beam of sunlight shone down onto the platform and Luffy. Everyone had their mouths hanging off their jaws. Sanji and Zoro who was standing at the back of the crowd to see what Luffy was going to do had their eyes widen and their jaws on the floor. Smoker and every marine were beyond surprised and a tiny bit scared at what they were staring at. Smoker's cigarette even fell out of his mouth as he stared at the sight before him. Luffy was standing there with his arms spread out wide, looking up at the sky with a smile while a beam of light came through the clouds and shone down upon him. It was like a spotlight from heaven shining down onto Luffy right after he made his declaration. It was as though he was the chosen one, the messiah, chosen by the heavens to become the next king of the pirates. Luffy was confused because he didn't create that hole for the light to come through and was a little creeped out by it. He took a glance down at everyone and saw everyone staring at him in utter disbelief while Buggy and his entire crew fell to their knees and were looking up at him in awe. It was then it clicked in Luffy's mind what the entire scene looked like. He couldn't stop himself from chuckling before looking back up to the sky and saw the hold was beginning to close. Thinking he should add a bit more dramatic effect to its closing, he made the thunder boom extra loud just before the hold closed and the light disappeared. As the light vanished Luffy brought his arms down and saw everyone still had their jaws hanging. He turned his body into lightning and teleported to the back of the crowd right in the middle of Sanji and Zoro surprising them. Close your mouths or you will catch flies, he said knocking them out of their bewilderment. Cap. That just now. Sanji said incoherently. 
Don't ask me. I am as confused as you, he said surprising them. Is everyone ready? He asked causing Zoro and Sanji to nod. Well let's go, he said before they started walking away. As they were walking away hundreds upon hundreds of marines stormed the plaza surrounding Luffy and every other pirate there. When the marines showed up the civilians who were there still staring at the platform were knocked out of their stupor. Well, I guess the navy really wants to catch you, Captain, Sanji said as he lit a cigarette. Luffy and Zoro chuckled before Zoro spoke. There have to be at least 1,000 of these marines, he said as he stared at them. Yea the entrance to the Grand Line is probably blocked by Navy battleships, Luffy said with a smirk. Well boys, let's show the Navy why they shouldn't fuck with us, he said as he stared at the group of Marines in front of him. Electro murder, Luffy said as he stretched out his hands in front of him. From the tips of his fingers, ten ropes of lightning came out and wrapped around the ten closest Marines before the lightning ropes continued to snake themselves around the Marines behind those ten and to the side of them. When it was done the technique had fifty Marines bounded and screaming in pain. Luffy then upped the voltage and held it for two seconds before he cut the technique off causing fifty Marines to drop on the ground dead. He looked behind him to see how Zoro and Sanji were doing. The first them he saw was a giant tornado made of wind tossing marines into the air. When the tornado disappeared Luffy saw Zoro standing in the center with all three of his swords drawn. Then suddenly out of nowhere the body of a marine came crashing through Luffy's body startling him while electrocuting the already unconscious marine. He looked to see where it came from and saw Sanji spinning on his hands kicking marines all over the place. Hey, watch where you kick your marines. He yelled. Sorry, Captain, Sanji said with a nervous chuckle. Come on let's go, he said before the three of them began running. As they were running a group of marines tried to cut them but they were easily disposed of by Sanji and Zoro. As they were running through an unknown street to head back to the ship they saw a large group of marines running their way. They're mine, Luffy said. Lightning Vortex. Luffy yelled before he jumped forward and started spinning rapidly while at the same time releasing lighting from his body creating a large vortex of lighting headed straight for the marines. Looks like Kiba's fang over fang only made out of lightning. The vortex of lightning crashed into the marines and started drilling its way to the back while at the same time electrocuting a lot of marines and sending the rest flying into nearby buildings. When Luffy cut off his technique and stopped spinning he was standing in front of a large group of marine bodies lying in front of him while off the sides were some unconscious marines who were blown back by the lightning. Zoro and Sanji were running towards him when they finally reached him the three of them continued their way towards the ship. That's was so cool, Captain, Sanji said while Zoro nodded his head. Yeah, it's one of my less destructive attacks, he said. As they were running they saw a girl standing in the middle of the road with a sword. Upon seeing her Sanji already started flirting with her. Luffy looked over to Zoro and saw that he was scowling at her. The three of them stopped a few feet away from the girl. I didn't know you were Rorino a Zoro and a pirate no less, she said to Zoro as she stared at him with hatred in her eyes. Girlfriend Zoro, Luffy asked. Zoro unsheathed one of his swords before he replied. You two go on ahead I'll catch up, he said causing Luffy to nod and drag Sanji away as he was screaming at Zoro. The two of them ran a bit further down the road when they saw a man standing there in front of a motorcycle. Luffy saw him and immediately knew it was Smoker. The two of them stopped in front of Smoker and Luffy looked towards Sanji and spoke. Sanji you go in ahead, I'll catch up, he said causing Sanji to nod his head before running past Smoker. I don't know about that. Smoker said with two cigars in his mouth. This is the end of the line for you, Monkey D. Luffy, he said as white smoke started to rise out from his body. Luffy chuckled and stared at smoke before he spoke. I don't think so. I kind of got an appointment with the Grand Line, he said before electric blue sparks started to surround his body. You are not getting to the Grand Line unless you beat me, Smoker said as the smoke increased around his body. Sounds easy enough, Luffy said. In the blink of an eye, Luffy was in front of Smoker with his fist reared back and covered with hockey causing Smoker's eyes to widen. So fast, Smoker thought before Luffy buried his fist into his stomach knocking the air right out of him and causing him to cough up some spit.
Smoker then hunched over on the ground gasping for air. While he was hunched over on the ground Luffy delivered a hockey-infused axe kick to Smoker's head knocking him unconscious. When Smoker was knocked unconscious Luffy sighed and began walking towards the ship, but he suddenly stopped when he sensed something. Are you going to come out or stay in the shadows? Dot dad, Luffy said before looking off to his right and into a dark alleyway. Out of the shadows, a man wearing a hood walked out and smiled at Luffy. So you know who I am, Luffy's dad said with a chuckle. It's nice to know your grandfather didn't turn you into a marine, he said causing Luffy to chuckle a bit. Well, can't say he didn't try, Luffy said causing his father to laugh. But I think Shanks did a pretty good job with me, he said surprising the man. Red hair raised you, he asked in a surprised tone causing Luffy to nod his head. For how long, he asked. About ten years, he said surprising his father. Well I did spend some of that ten years somewhere else training, but the majority of the time I was with Shanks and his crew, he said. His dad looked thoughtful for a moment before he spoke. That's all right I guess. Red hair isn't that bad a man. Drinks a lot but ain't that bad, he said causing Luffy to laugh. Luffy then reached into his coat and pulled out a small card and tossed it towards his father who caught it. That's the number to my den den mushi, he said surprising his dad. Give me a call if you ever need help with anything, he said before he started walking away. His dad smiled before he spoke. Will do, he said as he places the card inside his hooded jacket. After taking a few steps Luffy stopped and narrowed his eyes as he stared in front of him before he spoke in a serious tone. The clan of D has been in the hiding shadows of history for far too long, he said getting his dad attention and causing his dad's face to turn serious. I agree, he said as he stared at Luffy's back. The time is near when we won't be hiding anymore. Luffy said before his body turned to lightning and he disappeared. Dragon stared at the spot where his son was standing and starting laughing before he walked back into the shadows of the alleyway. Luffy teleported himself to the docks to see the marines shooting at his ship while Sanji, Zoro, and the bounty hunter duo were fighting marines on the shore while Nami, Nojiko, and Usopp were trying to get the ship away from danger. Luffy sighed before he launched one of his attacks. Raging Thunder he yelled out causing multiple bolts of lightning to come down from the sky and strike the marines. Luffy then summoned a thundercloud and hopped on it before flying over to Zoro and rest for them to hop on. When everyone was on Luffy flew the cloud on to the ship and got off. When everyone was off Luffy turned the cloud into his throne and set it in its usual spot before he started barking out orders. All right everybody just ahead is the entrance to the grand line, Luffy said causing them to smile. I think we should say something to mark this occasion, he said causing them to nod their heads. Johnny and Yosaku went into storage and brought a barrel of booze out and sat it in the middle of all of them. Sanji was the first one to put his foot on the barrel and spoke. I am going to the Grand Line to find the All Blue, he said with a smile. I'm going to be the king of the pirates, Luffy said as he put his foot on the barrel. The world greatest swordsman, Zoro said he place his foot on the barrel. The world's most famous bounty hunters, Johnny and Yosaku said as they place their feet on the barrel. As they said t everyone looked at them funny before they all just shrugged. I'm going so I can draw a map of the entire world, Nami said as she put her foot up. I going to help my little sister achieve her dreams. Dot and keep her out of trouble, Nojiko said causing everyone to laugh while Nami groaned. And I am going to become a brave warrior of the seas, Usopp said before he placed his foot on the bard with the rest. And now to the grand line, Luffy said as they all brought their foot up and smashed the barrel. Chapter 14. Entering the Grand Line and Laboon. It has been an hour since the crew left Logue Town and were currently sailing towards the Grand Line. Usopp was manning the rudder while Johnny and Yosaku were up in the crow's nest looking out. Zoro was sitting at the rear deck of the ship with Luffy cleaning his swords, Nami and Nojiko were looking at a map of the Grand Line while Sanji was in the kitchen putting away the stuff he bought. Luffy was drinking his whiskey while staring up at the thundercloud-infested sky. These weren't his clouds, it looked like an actual storm was coming their way but Luffy didn't mind. They had a tailwind since they left Logue Town and were likely to be out of the storm before it even began. 
Luffy was about to take a sip of his drink when suddenly Nami screamed startling everyone and causing Luffy to spill some of his whiskey on the floor. Ah, she yelled. Luffy looked over to her with a murderous look in his eye before he spoke. You better have a good excuse for causing me to spill my whiskey, Luffy said in a cold tone causing her to sweat a bit before she nodded her head. Well, what is it? He asked as Sanji and everyone ran over to see what is wrong with Nami. I was looking at this map of the Grand Line that I stole from Buggy and it says here the entrance of the Grand Line is a mountain, she said causing everyone's eyes to widen except Luffy. A mountain? Zoro asked while looking at Nami. Are we supposed to crash into it? He asked causing Luffy to look at him as though he was stupid. Really? Luffy asked while looking at Zoro. Crash into it? Does that sound like how you enter the Grand Line? Or does it sound like how you die? Luffy asked rhetorically causing Zoro to look away in embarrassment. So how do we enter the Grand Line then? Asked Sanji. Luffy took a sip of his drink before he replied. We sail up the mountain, he said surprising everyone. Ships can't sail up a mountain. Usopp said causing everyone to nod their heads in agreement to what he said. Hand me that map Nami, Luffy said as he stretched out his hand. When he got the map from Nami he sat it down on the floor in front of them and began explaining how it works. You see this mountain right here? He asked while pointing to the mountain in the center of the map. All of them nodded their heads and paid close attention to what he was saying. That mountain is a part of the red line and is called Reverse Mountain. Currents from all four of the seas run up the mountain and into the Grand Line, he said while tracing his finger on the small blue line that represents the currents that go up the mountain. Everyone's eyes widened when they heard that information. But that is impossible, currents cannot flow up a mountain, Nojiko said while having a disbelieving look on her face. In the normal world it doesn't, but this is the Grand Line, Luffy said as he rolled up the map and looked all of them in the eye before he continued. If you go into that sea and try using logic to explain everything that happens there you will go mad, he said before handing the map back to Nami. There is nothing sane about that sea. One minute it is raining, and one second later it starts snowing, and two seconds after that it is raining hail the size of a galleon, he said causing their eyes to widen and their jaws to drop. You you are kidding right? Nami asked. Nope. Well the hail thing I only saw that in the new world, but it could happen in paradise, he said getting them to relax a bit. By the way, Nami, he said getting her attention. Did you and Nojiko a log pose? He asked causing them to nod. Yay we did, but why do we need it? She asked. It's how you navigate the Grand Line, regular compasses don't work there, he said surprising them. Do not lose it or else we will all die, he said causing her to nod her head furiously. By the way what did all the rest of you buy while you were there? He asked. I bought some fresh vegetables to cook some healthier meals a lot with some meat, Sanji said causing Luffy to nod. I also bought some new pots and pans for the kitchen and some more knives, but the best part is I won a blue finned elephant tuna in a cooking contest, he said happily. Luffy looked him with an amused smile on his face before he spoke. I'll be looking forward to eating it, he said before he looked over to Usopp to hear what he bought. I bought these new pairs of goggles, he said while pointing to the goggles on his head. They are going to help me hit my targets better, he said causing Luffy to nod his head and waited for him to continue. I also bought a few chemicals to experiment with so I can make my slingshot attacks deadlier that way pirates and marines everywhere will fear the name Captain Usopp. He yelled while pointing to the sky causing everyone to chuckle in amusement before looking over to Zoro. I cannot say I bought these two swords because the guy gave them to me for free, he said surprising everyone. Why would someone give you two swords for free? Sanji asked causing Zoro to pick up the sword in the red scabbard before he spoke. It is because of this sword he gave me both of them for free, he said as he showed them the swords. Luffy saw the swords and narrowed his eyes at them. But why? Asked Nojiko while looking at the sword. Because it's cursed, Luffy said while looking at the blade. Everyone's eyes widen when they heard that. It is one of the Kitetsu blades isn't it? Luffy asked causing Zoro to nod his head. Kitetsu blades? Usopp asked with a curious look on his face. There are three Kidetsu blades, and all three of them are cursed. 
Once unsheathed they must spill an enemy's blood or else they will take their master's blood instead, Luffy said scaring all of them. Or so the myth goes, he said with a chuckle. What did those two buy? He asked Zoro while pointing to the bounty hunting duo up in the crow's nest. I had thought they were going to buy swords but instead the two of them bought a bisanto each, he said surprising Luffy. Luffy didn't complain if that was what they were comfortable with then so be it. He then looked over to Nami to hear what she bought. I bought new clothes and shoes, she said happily causing all the boys except for Sanji to roll their eyes. I also bought high quality charting paper and backup ink and pens to chart with, she said causing Luffy to nod his head before looking at Nojiko to hear what she bought. I also bought clothes and shoes with Nami but I also bought this three section metal staff, she said as she pulled out the staff from behind her back and showed it to everyone. It was a silver staff broken into three sections while a chain connected each of the section together. Luffy hypothesizes that it could be used as a staff and as nunchucks and if she adds hockey to it it might just a deadly weapon. Picture bans three section staff from seven deadly sins. Nice, better practice how to use it, he said causing her to nod her head before putting it away. Usopp man the rudder and tell when the current is so strong that you can no longer steer the ship he said causing him to salute and run off to the rudder. Sanji I am quite hungry can you go and prepare lunch, Luffy said causing him to nod and head towards the kitchen. And the rest of you, he said getting their attention. I do believe you all still have some training to complete, he said causing them to run and get their blindfolds and sticks. Luffy poured himself some more whiskey before staring up at the sky. After sailing for about 10 more minutes the ship finally exited the thundercloud-infested skies and into clear blue one. The water was calm but Luffy could feel the ship picking up speed. He stood up and walked over to the side of the ship and looked down at the water and saw the water currents moving rapidly with the ship. Finally, in about a few more minutes the current should be too strong for Usopp to steer, Luffy thought as he stared at the water. Suddenly the voices to Johnny and Yosaku knocked Luffy out of his thought. Big bro. They screamed from the crow's nest getting Luffy's and everyone else's attention. Marines. They yelled while pointing ahead of the ship. Luffy forward and saw an entire fleet of about 25 marine ships lines up sailing towards them. It would seem as though they really don't want me to re-enter the Grand Line, Luffy said with a chuckle. What are your orders captain? Nami asked as she and Nojiko ran towards Luffy. Luffy smiled before he replied. Sail towards them, he said causing their eyes to widen. Johnny, Yosaku, come down from there and take over for Usopp, he said causing the two of them to come down from the crow's nest and head towards the rudder. Usopp came out and looked towards Luffy for orders. Usopp get to the cannons in the front and start picking off their ships. I'll take care of the majority of them he said causing Usopp to nod before heading below deck to work the large cannon that was under the figurehead. Nojiko and Nami went to the two cannons that were on the upper deck and started firing at the fleet. What are you going to do captain? Sanji asked as he walked with his captain and Zoro towards the front of the ship. Luffy chuckled before he replied. Something I've been dying to try out, he said before he hopped onto the figurehead and look ahead. It would seem as though this fleet is from Branch 8 meaning this is Commodore Nelson's fleet, he said. Is he strong? Zoro asked. No he is just really fat, Luffy said with a chuckle as he looked on as Nami, Nojiko, and Usopp took out three of the 25 ships. Luffy, Sanji said getting his attention. Look behind the marines there is a storm coming our way, he said causing Luffy to look and see storm cloud just behind the marines. That's not a storm, he said causing all of them to stop and look at him. That is the entrance to the Grand Line, he said causing their eyes to widen. Luffy then clasped his hands together as though he was praying with his elbows sticking out and began focusing on his devil fruit powered. As he did that electric blue sparks surrounded his body and the sky started to darken with thunder booming overhead. Luffy then looked at the marine fleet with narrowed eyes before he yelled out. Thirteen heavenly pillars. He yelled causing a loud thunderclap before 13 pillars of lightning to come out of the sky and strike down 13 marine ships causing them to explode. 
Everyone stared at the attack with their jaws hanging on the floor except for Sanji and Zoro who had come to learn that Luffy can do some unbelievable things and wasn't surprised anymore after seeing him destroy an entire island. Luffy then looked at the nine remaining ships before he spoke. Make sure to leave one ship untouched Usopp. He yelled. I captain. Usopp yelled back from below deck before continuing to fire on the marines. Luffy then spotted Nelson's flagship and smirked before unsheathing his sword and pointing it directly at Nelson's flagship before covering the entire sword in lightning. Luffy then yelled out his attack in a cold emotionless tone. 60 million volt thunder dragon. He said. As he said that a giant dragon made entirely out of lightning shot out of the tip of his sword and raced towards Nelson. The dragon made contact with the front of the flagship and immediately blew the entire ship into a million pieces. Luffy then looked around and saw there was only one ship from the entire fleet left and it was sailing away from Luffy and his crew heading to the left. He then hopped back onto the deck of the ship and gave out orders. Raise the sails, the current is going to be enough to take us in he said causing Zoro and Sanji to nod before running off to tie up the sails. Nami and Nojiko went to go look at the map to help Johnny and Yosaku steer the ship while Luffy walked and stood on the main deck while watching ahead for the entrance. As the ship was sailing towards the entrance they sailed through the wreckage of the fleet they just destroyed. There was wood and dead marines everywhere. As they sailed through Luffy looked over and saw Nelson struggling to stay afloat on a piece of wood. Luffy pulled out his pistol and aimed it at Nelson's head and pulled the trigger causing a small bolt of lightning to fire out and pierce right through Nelson's head killing him. Luffy. Up ahead. Nami yelled getting Luffy's attention. He looked forward and saw a giant wall that stretched high above the clouds. That's the red line. He yelled before he walked and stood beside the door where the rudder was. Keep her steady. The entrance is just ahead. He yelled out. He could head Johnny and Yosaku struggling to keep the rudder steady. Sanji and Zoro came and stood next to Luffy and Usopp and watched as they approached the giant mountain. Luffy then summoned some thunderclouds and had it surround the ship creating a kind of padding just in case they hit the red line. Luffy I don't see the entrance. All I see is a giant wall in our way. Nami yelled. See that tiny crack in the mountain? Luffy asked while pointing at the tiny crack in the mountain. Yeah. I see it, she said. Luffy tossed her a pair of binoculars before he spoke. That's the entrance, he said. She looked through the binoculars before she spoke in a disbelieving tone. I cannot believe it, the current is really flowing up the mountain, she said before passing the binoculars to Nojiko. Hold her steady boys and aim for that crack, he said while pointing forward. I big bro Captain Luffy, yelled causing Luffy to chuckle. As they got closer everyone could see the entrance clear. They all saw the water running up the mountain and just at the entrance there were arches going over the canals. It was then Luffy noticed that the ship was drifting off to the right. We are drifting off course. Hard to starboard. Luffy yelled. Going hard to starboard. The bounty hunting duos yelled before they began to push to rudder over to the right as hard as they could. With the extremely strong currents, it was very difficult to steer the ship so they had to push as hard as they could. It was then everyone heard something that made their eyes widen. Snap was the sound that filled the air as the rudder broke. Luffy stared at the broken rudder with wide eyes before snapping his head back to front and saw they were about to crash into the side of the canal. He immediately calmed down when he remembered he had the clouds there just in case something like had happened. The going Mary hit the side of the entrance of the canal with the clouds absorbing the impact and turning the ship right before the currents pushed it up into the canal. Everyone let out a sigh of relief as they began climbing reverse mountain. We made it. Usopp, Johnny, and Yosaku yelled as they started dancing. It now a straight shot from here to the summit, Luffy said before he walked over and sat in his throne and watched as his crew took in the sights. They all had a wide smile on their face as the ship climbed higher and higher. We're in the clouds. Nojiko said in amazement. No, we are above the clouds. Sanji said as the ship climbed higher above the clouds. I can see the summit. Johnny said while pointing forward. In front of them, they all saw where the currents from all four seas meet and run into the Grand Line. It was a beautiful sight to behold the four currents crashing into each other splashing of water into the air that immediately froze and turned to ice, 
and when the sunlight hit the ice it looked like diamonds shining in the sky. The going Mary rode the wave perfectly and entered the canal leading into the Grand Line. There it is, the greatest sea of them all, Luffy said as he stood up from his throne and walked forward towards the balcony on the upper deck. The Grand Line, he said as he looked out with a smile on his face. As the ship began to descend the mountain the closer they got to the bottom the more puzzled everyone was becoming. Luffy is there supposed to be another mountain at the bottom? Nami asked in a confused voice. Luffy looked at her with a puzzled look before he spoke. No, why? He asked. She pointed in front of the ship causing Luffy to turn and look at where she is pointing. At the base of the mountain where the canal ran into the Grand Line, Luffy saw something rather large blocking the exit. Well that wasn't there ten years ago, he said as he looked ahead. Suddenly a weird noise filled the air as they descended. It sounded like an animal wailing or crying out. As they got closer to the bottom Luffy looked to Johnny and Yosaku and yelled out an order to them. Get to the rudder and get ready to steer the ship or else we are going to hit whatever that is. He yelled causing them to run inside before they yelled out back at Luffy. Ah the rudder is broken. They yelled causing Luffy to sigh. Luffy then began summoning large thunderclouds and adding them to the thunderclouds that were already around the ship in order to increase the padding in case they crash into whatever that was. As they got closer the unknown sounds became louder and louder. What is that sound? Nojiko asked while placing her hand by her ear to try and hear the sound a bit better. As the ship got closer Luffy was finally able to make out what it was. Oh fuck, Luffy said. It's a giant whale. He yelled causing everyone to panic. Luffy we are moving too fast if we don't slow down the clouds won't be enough to save us. Nami yelled. Luffy turned to Usopp and yelled out an order. Usopp, get to the main cannon in the front and fire it when I tell you, he said causing Usopp to run below deck. As the ship grew closer and closer everyone started to get even more scared as the ship fastly approached the behemoth of a whale. When they were 20 feet away from the whale Luffy yell out. Now Usopp, he yelled causing Usopp to fire the cannon. As the cannon fired the ship jerked back a bit knocking Nami and Nojiko off their feet before it started to slow down. The ship did not come to a complete stop but it slowed down enough for the clouds absorb the impact. When it was all said and done the ship was safe and everyone was alive and that was all Luffy wanted. Grab the paddles and start paddling around this thing. Luffy said causing Sanji, Zoro, Johnny and Yosaku to grab the two paddles and started paddling to the left of the giant whale and away from danger. While they were paddling around the whale it was then Luffy got a chance to get a good look at it. It was an extremely large black whale of comparable or greater size than the Sea Kings in the calm belt. It many scars across his head from which Luffy assumed it was bashing its head against the side of the red line for some unknown reason. That's one big whale. Sanji said while rowing causing everyone else to nod their head while staring at the whale in amazement and with a tiny bit of fear. It was then the whale suddenly looked at all of them with its extremely large eyes causing their eyes to widen. I guess it didn't like us shooting at it with the cannon, Luffy said with a chuckle as the whale opened his mouth and wailed loudly while showing everyone its extremely large and pointed teeth that was bigger than the going Mary. As its mouth opened water from the ocean bean pouring into its mouth and down its throat. The going Mary began to get pulled it with the water that was being sucked in causing everyone to panic. We're all going to die. Screamed Nami. Is this how it end? Usopp yelled. Luffy stepped forward and covered his hand in lightning getting ready to kill the whale when suddenly it closed its mouth and began to submerge underwater. Shit it's going under. Luffy said knowing if he punched a while in the whale they will die for sure. Everyone looked in front of them and saw they were about to crash into the whale's stomach and closed their eyes including Luffy. Everyone waited and waited for their impending doom but it never came. So, they decided to open their eyes to see what was going and what they saw had their jaws practically hanging from their mouth. Is this real? Sanji asked in a voice of pure disbelief. I don't know. I'm sure we swallowed by that whale. Johnny said while Yosaku nodded from behind him. In front of everyone, they saw clear open skies with birds in the air and off to the right of the going Mary was a small island with a house on it. It beyond puzzled everyone, one minute they were being swallowed by a whale and the next they are back in the open sea. 
They all turned towards Luffy to see if he knows what was going on but Luffy shook his head saying no. I don't know what is going on, but I know for sure we are not in the real ocean, he said to everyone before he walked over to the side of the ship and looked into the water. The water in here is green and the sky is painted on, Luffy said pointing to the sky. Before any of them could respond to what Luffy said a giant squid rose out of them and was getting ready to attack them. Luffy had expected everyone to freeze up and get scared but instead, they all were ready to attack. It brought a smile to his face when he saw their reaction. Zoro's hands immediately to his swords, Sanji was getting ready to kick it, Johnny and Yosaku pulled out their bisantos getting ready to attack, Nojiko pulled out her three-section staff and started spinning it, Nami pulled out her bow staff and stood next to sister getting ready to strike, and the most surprising of all was Usopp was with his slingshot aimed at the squid. Luffy had hypothesized that they all sensed it come up and were ready but he still liked the way his crew reacted to the threat. He didn't even need to do anything, he was sure they could handle it. Just as all of them were about of attack three harpoons came out of the house on the island and struck the squid right in the head killing it. Luffy narrowed his eyes and stared at the doorway of the house and saw a man slowly walking out from the shadows. Looks like someone's home, Zoro said while staring at the man with narrowed eyes. I say we should fire our cannons there, Usopp said while pointing at the man. No, hold on a sec, Sanji said while keeping his guard up. When Luffy saw the man he immediately knew who it was after hearing about him from Shanks, but Luffy wasn't going to say anything. He wanted to see what his crew would do. They all stared at the old man as he walked out of the house never taking his eyes off of the crew while he walked over to the lawn chair. The tension was growing and Luffy could see some of those brave hearts from earlier were starting to sweat a bit. Everyone expecting the man to attack or something but instead, he just stared at them while he walked to the chair making all of them nervous before he plopped himself down on a lawn chair and began reading a newspaper. You going to say something? yelled Sanji at the old man. Hey, if you want to fight we can fight, Usopp said from way inside the cabin causing Luffy to sweat drop. Seems he's back to his old self, Luffy thought in a deadpan tone. We got cannons back here you bastard, he yelled once more from inside the cannon while pointing at the old man. The old man's eyes narrowed a bit as he stared at them once more causing the tension to skyrocket once more making everyone sweat while Luffy was trying to hide his amused smile. You try it and someone's going to die, the old man said in a serious voice causing Usopp to whimper a bit while Zoro and Sanji narrowed their eyes and prepare for an attack with Nojiko right behind them while Nami ran inside with Usopp. Yeah, who's that? Sanji asked. Me of course the old man said causing Luffy to start laugh. Crocus you want to stop scaring the kids, Luffy said with a chuckle before he stepped forward. Who are you and why are you interrupting my running gag, Crocus said in an annoyed voice. I'm a friend of red-haired Shanks and Rayleigh, Luffy said making everyone wonder who was Rayleigh. Luffy saw Crocus's eyes widen before he chuckled. Oh ho, it's been a while since I had those names, he said as he placed the paper down. How are they doing? It has been a while since I saw either of them, he said. They are fine, I can tell you all about them if you tell me where are we and how we can get back to the outside world, Luffy said. I thought it would be obvious as to where you are seeing as how you were eaten, he said causing the crew's eyes to widen. And the exit is right over there, he said while pointing off to the side causing everyone to look over and see two giant metal doors. Okay. I am no specialist on whales, but I am sure they don't usually have giant metal doors in the side of their stomach, Yosaku said as he leaned against his bisanto. Before anyone could respond the entire place shook as though it was an earthquake causing the calm waters to become rough. What the hell is happening? Nojiko shouted as she and everyone on board tried to keep their balance on the ship as it rocked against the rough waters. It's begun. Crocus said causing Luffy to look at him strangely wondering what has begun. Look, Nami yelled getting everyone's attention as she pointed at the island. That's no island, it's some kind of ship. She yelled as she pointed at the island Crocus was on causing all of them to look and see at the bottom of the island was made of iron. Yeah of course, because we are floating on a sea of gastric acid, Usopp said as he looked over. 
That means a wooden ship won't fare well if we stay here too long, Sanji said. Just what the hell is wrong with this freaky whale, old man? Yosaku yelled at Crocus. Crocus got up from his chair and looked up to the fake sky before he replied. He is very angry, Crocus said in a sad tone. These aftershocks are a result of him hitting his head against the red line, he said surprising the crew except Luffy who had already figured that out. That explains why he has so many deep scars on his forehead, Nami said as she held on to the side of the ship. And not to mention all of the howlings, she added. But why is he doing it? Johnny asked. It's because he is suffering, Luffy said as he leaned against the cabin. And what's the deal with the old man? Nojiko asked. He is most likely trying to kill the whale from the inside out, Nami said causing everyone except for Luffy, Zoro, and Sanji to take on a look of pure disgust. What a despicable thing to do, Usopp said. Okay we figured out the mystery of the whale, now how about we find a way out of its belly before it digests us, Zoro said while looking back at the rest of the crew. We have no right to judge the old man nor do we need to save the whale. What we need to do is focus on how to get the hell out of here, Sanji said as he and Zoro began walking towards Luffy. Just as Luffy was about to say something Crocus did something that surprised everyone. He jumped into the gastric acid. Is he crazy? The acid will eat him alive, Luffy said as he stared into the spot where jumped in. Luffy we have to get out of here. Nami yelled. We can't, Luffy said causing their eyes to widen. The whale is most likely underwater right now, the moment we open those doors we will sink to the bottom of the Grand Line, he said surprising them even more. So we just stay in here and die? Yosaku asked. Don't be an idiot, the whale has to go up from water sooner or later, he said causing them to relax and nod. Two minutes later the old man resurfaced next to the two giant doors and began climbing the ladder that was right next to it. As he was climbing up the ladder the smaller doors that were at the top of the ladder flew open and out stepped two individuals with guns in their hands. They aimed their guns at Crocus and pulled the trigger. Just as the two bullets exited the gun's two small bolts of lightning impacted the two bullets causing them to explode just in front of the guns destroying the barrels of said guns. Crocus and the two newcomers were shocked at what just happened. When they all looked at the ship that was floating in the middle of the whale's stomach they saw a very tall boy with a straw hat and a captain's coat draped over his shoulders holding a smoking gun aimed right at them. Now, that wasn't very nice of you to trespass on the old man's private resort and try to kill him, Luffy said in a cold tone that sent shivers down the spine of the man and the woman. He then tucked his gun away and outstretched both of his hands and faster than the man or the woman could react, Two ropes of lightning came out of Luffy's palm and wrapped around them. Ah, what do you think you are doing? The woman asked, yelled. Luffy didn't respond he simply yanked the rope causing the two of them to fly over and land on the ship. Luffy then let go of the lightning rope causing the majority of it to disappear leaving only the path that was binding them in place. Everyone then saw Crocus walk through the doors that the man and the woman came out of and disappeared. No who are you two? Zoro asked as he walked toward the two. Sanji was sitting next to the woman trying to flirt with her while everyone else just looked on as the man and woman spoke to each other in hushed tone. Soon everyone noticed that the whale stopped thrashing around and had calmed down causing the sea that was inside of its stomach to calm down as well. You parasites are still here. Crocus yelled from the top of the ladder getting everyone's attention. The old guy is back again, Usopp said. I grow weary of this and for the last time. So long as I draw breath you will not lay a single harmful finger on Laboon. He yelled from the top of the ladder. Soon the two people who Luffy caught started laughing before they stood up even though they were bounded causing Luffy to raise an eyebrow. You cannon bully us into abandoning our mission, the woman said. We were sent here to kill this whale and that is exactly what we are going to do, and this time we won't let you interfere. We are. The man said right after her but was cut off when the lightning binding them gave both of them a shock they will never forget. Put a sock in it, Luffy said as the two of them groaned in pain on the deck of the ship. Hey old man Crocus, Luffy said getting the man's attention. Can we leave now and talk about all of this outside where my ship isn't at risk of being digested, Luffy said. Fine, Crocus said before he dived back into the water and swam over to his boat island. 
Follow me, he said before the island started to move towards the two giant doors. As the doors opened the two ships began sailing through a canal inside the whale. Why does this whale have a canal inside of it? Johnny asked. Call it a doctor's playful mind, Crocus replied. It is impossible to treat a whale of this size so I had to come up with a way to work around that, he said causing them to nod their head showing that they understood. As they reached the end of the canal they came upon another set of doors. When they reached in front of the doors Crocus sailed his boat island up to it and pulled a lever causing the door to open. As the door opened everyone was immediately hit by a ray of sunlight causing all of them to smile. They sailed out of the whale and docked the ship next to the twin capes where Crocus lived. The entire crew got off of the ship and went on the small island connected to the red line that housed a lighthouse. Sanji, Luffy said as he exited the ship getting his attention. Why don't you make lunch seeing as how we didn't get to eat due to those marines interrupting us, Luffy said causing Sanji to nod his head, before walking back onto the ship and into the kitchen. I'll whip up some of that blue fin tuna that I got back in Logue Town, he said happily. After 30 minutes Sanji re-emerges from the from the ship carrying multiple plates of food that look extremely tasty. Lunch is served, he said as he laid out all of the plates in front of everyone including Crocus. This looks delicious, thanks Sanji, said Nojiko. Anything for you my lovely Nojiko, Sanji replied with hearts in his eyes. Luffy pulled out two glasses and placed one in front of Crocus before he poured both of them a glass of whiskey. So Crocus, Luffy said as he picked up his plate. What's the deal with this whale? He asked causing everyone to look at Crocus to hear what he had to say. The whale's name is Laboon. He is a unique and magnificent creature, an island whale, one of the largest species in the world that could only be found in the West Blue, he said before he took a sip of the whiskey Luffy poured for him. Those two people from before were hunting Laboon for whale meat. A whale the size of Laboon could feed a small island for at least two years, he said. So that's who those two are, Johnny said. Hey, where are they? He then asked after looking on the ship and seeing them gone. I guess my lightning binds wore off and they escaped, Luffy said with a shrug before looking to Crocus waiting for him to continue. There is a reason he keeps hitting himself against the red line and howling at Reverse Mountain, Crocus said before he ate some of the food. Inside Laboon beats the heart of a human and is absolutely devoted to a certain band of pirates, he said causing Luffy to raise an eyebrow at that. You see Laboon followed a group of pirate all the way from the West Blue and entered the Grand Line. When they arrived here at the Twin Capes their ship was so badly damaged that they spent several months here trying to repair. After they repaired their ship they set sail and because the Grand Line was so dangerous they had to leave Laboon here, but before they left they promised him they could come back for him, he said with a sad look on his face. It has been 50 long years since then, he said causing everyone's eyes to widen. Don't you think 50 years is a bit extreme, Usopp said as he finished his food. Those pirates sure know how to test someone's patience, Usopp said. You idiot. This is the Grand Line, Zoro said from his place next to Luffy. Those pirates are most likely dead, he said. Sad to say but that's likely true, Nami said between bites. Back in those days when they sailed, the Grand Line was an uncharted sea, thousand times more precious than it is now, she said. Come on big sis, said Yosaku. They could still come back for him, have some sympathy, he said making Luffy chuckle. It was an amusing thing to hear, pirates having sympathy. You may want to believe that, but the reality is cold, Crocus said getting their attention once more. Those pirates aren't dead, the truth is they abandoned their quest. I learned that they turned tail and left the Grand Line, he said causing all of them to take on a sad look on their face. What a bunch of spineless cowards who rather save themselves instead of keeping a promise to a friend, Nojiko said angrily causing everyone to nod. That's just cruelty on a grand scale, Johnny said. Luffy just looked at the whale with a thoughtful look on his face. Did you tell him? Luffy asked while never taking his eyes off Laboon. I did, every miserable detail, he said sadly. That was the day that Laboon began to howl at Reverse Mountain. Soon after he had begun to slam his body against the red line, 
it is as if he believes that wall is what is keeping his friends away and if he could break it they would soon return, Crocus said causing the bounty hunting duo to tear up a bit along with Usopp. Laboon is a lost soul dying to be with his friends and is killing himself trying to get to them, he said. Luffy the got up from his seat and walked over to the side of the twin capes with Laboon was and stared at the whale. Then out of the clear blue sky, a bolt of lightning came down and struck the whale causing him to howl in both pain and anger. You want to fight you stupid whale. Luffy yelled at the whale. Everyone was beginning to panic at what Luffy was trying to do. Laboon narrowed his eyes at Luffy before he jumped out of the water and slammed his head into Luffy. Luffy didn't dodge, nor did he let the attack pass through him he simply stood there and took it. When Laboon went back into the water and turned towards him, Luffy covered his fist in armament hockey before launching forward and punching Laboon right in the head. Luffy what are you doing? Nami and Nojiko yelled. Luffy didn't reply all he was doing smiling widely as he and Laboon fought. Laboon then swam away from the twin capes for a bit before it came charging towards Luffy. As he was about to attack Luffy spoke and stopped him in his tracks. It's a draw, he said causing Laboon to stop in his tracks and stare at Luffy. I'm a lot stronger than I look, but I had a feeling you already knew that, he said as he dusted himself off. I could always tell when someone was itching for a fight and if you want a battle I'll gladly give you one. You shipmates used to spar with you did they? He asked causing everyone's eyes to widen. Well, I could rival anything they could throw at you. Tell you what, after me and my friends conquer the Grand Line I'll come back here and throw down with you, Luffy said causing tears to form in Laboon's eyes. Laboon then looked up to the sky and howled happily for once in 50 years. Crocus looked at the scene with a smile on his face. Luffy then turned into lightning and teleported in the ship before reappearing on Laboon's head with a few buckets of paint and a large paintbrush. Now hold still, Luffy said before he started to paint Laboon's head. When he was done a perfect copy of Luffy Jolly Roger on Laboon's head. Good, now it is a rush paint job so you are going to have to avoid hitting your head or else it will come off, he said causing Crocus to smile. Laboon wailed happily telling Luffy he won't. Luffy then began to walk over to his crew. That was really nice of you, young man, said Crocus. Oh right I never introduce myself, Luffy said with a chuckle. My name is Monkey D. Luffy, pleased to meet you, he said as he stuck out his hand for Crocus to shake. I'm Crocus, lighthouse keeper here at the Twin Capes, he said as he shook Luffy's hand. Now how is it that you know Shanks and Rayleigh? He asked with a smile. Luffy smiled right back before he replied. I was a member of Shanks' crew, he said as he pulled up his shirt showing him Shanks's Jolly Roger. He and Rayleigh taught me hockey, he said before taking on a thinking pose. Well more like Rayleigh taught me hockey while Shanks got drunk, he said with a chuckle causing Crocus to laugh. It's been ten years since I last seen red hair, he said surprising Luffy. It was ten years ago when he returned from the East Blue, he said. Yeah, that was when I joined the crew, but I don't recall seeing Laboon when we came through, he said. Laboon must have been under ramming his head against the red line, he said causing Luffy to nod. Hey Crocus could you do me a favor? Luffy asked. Sure, after what you just did for Laboon I'll do anything, he said. Luffy smiled and looked thankful before he spoke. Great, could you explain how the log pose worked to my navigator, he said while pointing to Nami. I would but I want to get out of these clothes, he said while looking at his dirty clothes. Crocus smiled at him before he replied. Sure thing, he said before he walked over to Nami. Thanks a lot, he said before turning to the rest of the crew. The rest you finish eating and get ready we will be setting sail soon, he said before turning and began walking towards the ship. I captain, they all yelled in unison. Luffy entered his captain's quarters and began to change his clothes. When he emerged from his personal quarters he was wearing the same black steel-tipped shoes with black cargo pants and instead of his usual red dress shirt he was wearing a back slim fit long-sleeved dress shirt with the top two buttons undone showing off his chain with a lightning bolt pendant and some of his chest. Over the dress shirt was Captain's coat with his Jolly Roger on the back draped over his shoulder and to top everything off was his famous straw hat on his head. 
As Luffy exited his personal quarters he heard a commotion over the side of the ship. Deciding to see what was going on he walked over to the side and saw the two people who were trying to kill Laboon on their knees in front of his crew. What's going on here? Luffy asked in a monotone voice getting everyone's attention. These two are here to ask us for a ride to someplace called Whiskey Peak, Nojiko said causing Luffy to perk up a bit when he heard the name. Do they make whiskey there? He asked excitedly causing everyone to sweat drop. Um, no, said the woman causing Luffy's smile to disappear. Well I'm not interested, he said before he looked over to Usopp, Johnny, and Yosaku. You three go fix the rudder, he said causing them to salute before running off to the ship. Please. The man yelled causing Luffy to look at him with a raised eyebrow. Our ship was destroyed and we have no other way to return home, he said. And how is that my problem? Luffy replied coldly causing them to flinch. You should have thought about that before you tried to kill Laboon, he said before he jumped off of the ship and landed next to Nami. He grabbed her wrist and looked at the log pose before looking at Crocus. What island is it pointing to? He asked. Crocus took a look at the log pose before he replied with a sigh. Whiskey Peak, he said causing the two whale hunters to perk up. What are you two getting excited for, he said while looking at the two. I didn't say I was taking you, he said causing them to deflate a bit. Just who are you two anyway and what is it you do? He asked. We cannot tell you, they said causing Luffy to narrow his eyes at them. You see mystery is our company's motto, however, you may call me Mr. Nine, said the man with a crown on his head. And you can call me Ms. Wednesday, she said. Luffy just sighed before he spoke. Let's just say I help you, what's in it for me? He asked while looking at them with one eyebrow raised. The two of them looked thoughtful for a moment before they started whispering amongst themselves before they replied to Luffy. We have lots of gold and money, Mr. Nine said causing Nami to become giddy and Luffy to smile even though he knew they were lying. Very well then, we'll take you, he said causing the two of them to hug each other. Luffy looked over to Zoro and gave him a silent signal to keep an eye on them. Zoro saw this and nodded his head. Captain. Usopp yelled getting everyone's attention. The rudder is fixed, he said causing Luffy to nod before he turned to his crew. Okay, pack it up. It's tie to set sail, he said causing everyone to take the plates and cups back on the ship before they all started boarding. Luffy walked over to Laboon and spoke to him. I'm going now Laboon and I promise I'll be back to fight you someday, causing Laboon to howl happily. And stop hitting your head or that paint will come off, he causing the giant whale to nod. Luffy then turned to Crocus and shook his hand before he spoke. You take care of yourself and Laboon. Crocus, he said with a smile as he shook his hand. And you say hello to the vice captain for me when you see him, he said. Will do, Luffy said before he walked onto his ship. Nojiko, Zoro, Luffy said getting their attention. Tie those two up for me, he said while pointing to Ms. Wednesday and Mr. Nine. The two of them screamed when Zoro and Nojiko began to tie them up but Luffy simply ignored it. All set captain. Nami said as she stood next to Luffy. Luffy nodded before he yelled out orders to the crew. All right. Johnny, Yosaku, hoist the anchor. He yelled causing the two of them to run towards the anchor and began pulling it up. Nojiko manned the rudder, Sanji, Usopp set the sails. He yelled causing the three of them to scramble. Zoro then walked up to Luffy with the two passengers on his shoulders. Where do you want them, Captain? He asked. Luffy looked at him as he thought about it for a second before he replied. Toss them in the there with Nojiko, she can keep an eye on them while steering the ship, he said causing him to nod before walking off. Now on to Whiskey Peak, Luffy thought as he poured himself a drink before walking over to his throne and sitting down. Chapter 16. Whiskey Peak. It had been a few days since Luffy and the crew had left the Twin Capes and began their journey to the first island on the Grand Line. They were currently sailing through calm waters while snowflakes rained from above. Luffy was sitting on the throne in the cold, drinking whiskey while Zoro was off to the right sleeping in the cold. Nami and Nojiko couldn't take the cold so, the two of them were bundled up in winter clothes and staying the kitchen where it was warmer with the two people who Luffy allowed to travel with them to Whiskey Peak. 
Usopp and Johnny were on the main deck building snowmen while Sanji and Yosaku were shoveling snow off of the ship. Luffy looked down at Usopp and Johnny who went from building snowmen to having a snowball fight. Luffy sighed before he got an idea and smirked. Hey, Usopp, Johnny, he called out getting their attention. If the two of you are going to goof off at least train while you do it, he said causing them to look at him with a puzzled look on their faces. What do you mean, big bro Luffy? Johnny asked while looking up at Luffy. I mean have your little snowball fight while blindfolded, he said before taking a sip of his drink. It will help train your observation hockey he said causing the two of them to smile before running into the kitchen and grabbing their blindfolds before coming back out and continuing their snowball fight. Luffy then took another sip of his drink and looked up to the sky. As he looked up lightning flashed above and thunder boomed overhead. It was loud enough to make everyone pause what they were doing and look at Luffy. Don't look at me, that was nature, he said causing them to go back to what they were doing. Luffy then noticed the wind was picking up and once calm snow shower turned into a blizzard. He sighed and reached into his coat and pulled out a square locket that was gold in color and attached to a golden chain that was connected to the inside of his coat. He used his thumb to flip open the locket and took a look inside. Inside of the locket was divided into two parts. Both halves had a log pose in it but, it was two different looking log poses. The upper half had a single log pose similar to the one Nami bought in Luge Town, while the bottom half had three log poses grouped together, picture Jack Sparrow's compass. Luffy looked at the upper part of the compass and growled. Something wrong, Captain. Zoro asked from next to Luffy. Luffy closed the lock before and placed it back in his coat before he replied to Zoro. It would appear as though my navigator is useless, he said before walking to the head of the upper deck and yelled out to the crew. All right listen up, he yelled getting everyone's attention. Stop what you are doing and turn this ship around. He yelled out confusing all of them. Nami and Nojiko had what he said and came out of the kitchen to see why they needed to turn around. Luffy, Nami said getting his attention. Why do we need to turn around? She asked. Luffy looked at her with an emotionless look on his face before he replied. Well Ms. Navigator. If you were doing your job you would have noticed we are going in the opposite direction, Luffy said calmly causing all of their eyes to widen. Now if all of you are done being surprised I would highly suggest all of you. Dot dot. Turn this fucking ship around. Luffy yelled letting his temper show a bit before he went and sat on his throne and pour himself a full glass of whiskey before he chugged it all it down. Luffy looked down and watched everyone panicking and scrambling about as the weather began to change again. Sanji and Nojiko were manning the rudder, Johnny and Yosaku were tying up the sails, Usopp was running around fixing damages while Nami was calling out orders. Luffy had thought about going down there and helping Nami, but he decided otherwise because he wanted her to get the experience. It was then Luffy realized that his first mate was nowhere to be seen among the chaos. He looked over the last place he saw Zoro and saw the swordsman was off to his right sleeping causing Luffy's eyebrow to twitch in annoyance. He's really sleeping. I'll let Nami deal with him, Luffy thought to himself with an evil smirk on his face. After about 30 minutes of chaos, everything finally was quiet and the ship was sailing in the right direction. It was at that point Zoro decided to wake up. He got up and stretched while yawning before walking over towards Luffy and spoke. Hey captain, he said getting Luffy's attention. Something has been bugging me for a while, he said causing Luffy to raise his eyebrow. What's bugging you? Luffy asked as he got up from his throne. It's about those two people we picked up at the Twin Capes, he said causing Luffy to narrow his eyes. What about them? Luffy asked. He was genuinely suspicious of those two since he met them. The only reason he agreed to take them to their homeland was so he can raid the island. The names, Zoro said confusing Luffy. I'm quite sure I had names like theirs before, but I can't remember when or where, he said causing Luffy to nod his head before he replied. Keep an eye on them, he said causing Zoro to nod his head. Luffy then walked behind Zoro and grabbed him by the back of his neck and dragged him towards the rest of the crew. Captain, what are you doing? Zoro yell, asked as he was being dragged. Luffy didn't answer him instead he looked towards Nami before he yelled out to her. Hey, Nami, 
Luffy yelled getting her attention. Luffy then tossed Zoro off of the upper deck towards the main deck where she was before he spoke. My lovely vice captain was sleeping throughout that entire ordeal, he said with an evil smirk before he walked back over to his throne while the air was filled the screams of Zoro. Just as Luffy was about to sit down Johnny's voice caused him to stop and turn around. Island up ahead. Johnny yelled from the front of the ship getting everyone's attention. Everyone looked up ahead of them and saw an island showing through some mist. So, that's Whiskey Peak, Sanji said as he lit a new cigarette. Its landscape isn't like any island I've ever seen, Nojiko said. Our first journey on the Grand Line comes to an end, Luffy said as he walked next to the crew and stared at the island. The island itself had an odd shape, there are several mountains that gave off an appearance of giant cacti. Hey look, Nami said while pointing forward. There is a waterway seems to go right up to the shoreline, she said as they began sailing inland. Um, I am weighing the possibilities of monsters out there, Usopp said in a scared voice. Well, it is a possibility, this is the grand line after all, Zoro said. Luffy then looked towards the bounty hunting duo and spoke. You two go bring our two prisoners, we can use them as bargaining chips, he said causing the two of them to run off to get the man and the woman. As the ship sailed further into the waterway a thick fog appeared causing everyone to be on guard. When Johnny and Yosaku return with the man and the woman, they placed the two of them in front of Luffy and went to stand behind him. Luffy glanced down at the man and woman before he turned his attention back to the surrounding area. Even though he couldn't see anyone he could clearly sense them. Playing it safe, he gave a mental command to the cloud containing all of the treasure to go up into the sky. Hey, there is someone over there. Usopp said as he pointed off to the left side of the ship. Everyone looked over and saw the silhouettes of two people moving. We should be on guard, Nojiko said as she pulled out her metal staff. Luffy didn't say anything he simply looked ahead of the ship with narrowed eyes. As the ship sailed a little bit further in even more silhouettes have appeared. This time they were on both sides of the waterway and the sound of people cheering filled the air. As they exited the fog everyone saw on both sides of the waterway there were people lined up cheering and waving as the ship sailed by. Everyone including Luffy was beyond confusing at what was happening and they all had one common thought in their heads. What kind of place welcomes pirates? They all thought as they stared the citizens of Whiskey Peak with a bewildered look on their faces. Welcome to the Grand Line. One person yelled from the shore as the crew sailed by. Greetings and good tidings great travelers. Another yelled. We are happy to have you here at Whiskey Peak. Someone else yelled out. The entire crew was stunned beyond belief because there is a town that welcomes pirates with open arms. While everyone else to stunned at what was going on, Usopp was relieved. Those aren't monsters, it's people, he said as he let out a sigh of relief. People who are welcoming pirates, Yosaku said in a surprised voice. They grand line sure is a strange place, Johnny said as he shook his head. Luffy, Nami, and Zoro, however, were suspicious of the citizens and their behavior while everyone else on the crew started smiling and waving back at the people. Sanji was ogling the girls, Usopp's was putting on his brave warrior of the sea act, while everyone else smiled and waved at the people. Luffy looked to Zoro who was standing off to his right and gave a small nod telling him to keep his guard up. He then walked over to Nami and whispered in her ear. When they fall asleep I want you to do what you do best, he whispered causing her to smirk before he nodded her head. As the ship docked the crew walked down to the main deck getting ready to exit with Luffy leading the way. At the back of the group were Johnny and Yosaku with Ms. Wednesday and Mr. Nine tied up. Every member of the crew exited the ship except for Johnny and Yosaku along with Ms. Wednesday and Mr. Nine, Luffy had told them to stay on board until he called for them. Down on the shore, Luffy and the crew were standing in front of a tall man with a small red nose and has blonde hair in a style that resembles a powdered wig and was carrying a saxophone. Welcome cough cough ma. Ma, ma, welcome. My name is Agarapoy and it is my honor as mayor to welcome you to Whiskey Peak, the man now named Agarapoy said in a welcoming voice that Luffy did not trust. My name is Luffy, thank you for welcoming us, Luffy said with a warm fake smile that the man bought. 
You will find that this is a place that thrives on making liquor and music, Agarapoy said with a smile as spoke to Luffy. Hospitality is a matter of pride in our town. The smiles run long and the liquor flows as bountiful as sea water, he said. That's good to hear and all, however, Luffy said as his smile dropped. We picked up two passengers on our way here who are from this town and promised us gold as payment for bringing them here and I expect to have that gold or else. Dot the blood in this town will flow as bountiful as the sea water, Luffy said in an emotionless voice causing Agarapoy to take a step back before he spoke again. Can I see these two people who you say are from our town? He asked causing Luffy to nod his head before looking back at the ship. Johnny. Yosaku. Luffy called out and two seconds later Johnny and Yosaku along with the man and the woman came out. I believe they go by Ms. Wednesday and Mr. Nine, he said as he looked back at the man. As he looked at the man he saw the man's face take on a pissed off look for a split second before he quickly hid it behind his happy smile. Oh yes, those two are from here, Agarapoy said as he turned his attention back to Luffy. And do not worry, you will be compensated for returning these two back home. Now would you permit us to throw a party in your arrival so we can hear cough cough ma, 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 your tales of adventure? He asked with a warm smile. Luffy placed his fake smile back on before he replied. We would be honored to, he said as he walked up and shook Agarapoy's hand before the two of them turned to walk into the town. As they were about to walk off Nami spoke to Agarapoy. How long does it take the log pose to record this island's magnetic field? She asked while holding up her hand showing the log pose. Agarapoy looked at her and smiled before he spoke. Oh don't worry about that, he said as he walked towards Nami causing Luffy to narrow his eyes while Nami looked at him with a confused look on her face. Such boring details will have to wait. Surely you would like to rest after your journey, he said as he placed his hand on Nami's shoulder. Now, let's prepare to party. Sing and be merry. Entertain our guest. Agarapoy shouted causing the townspeople to cheer loudly along with Sanji and Usopp. Agarapoy led the crew in a small bar where everyone sat down and began drinking and eating. Luffy didn't trust anything about this town so he pulled out his own drink and began drinking and from the looks of it, the townspeople thought he was drinking something they gave to him. It was one big party inside of the bar, the band was playing joyous music, Sanji was flirting with every girl he saw. Usopp was telling his famous stories about defeating some monster, Nami and Nojiko were having a drinking competition against a few of the townspeople, while Zoro and the bounty hunting duo were off in the corner quietly drinking. From what Luffy had observed Zoro had told those two to keep their guards up and not to trust the people of this strange town. As the evening progressed Luffy's crew along with the townspeople began to get drunk. It wasn't until midnight when Luffy started noticing his crew members started passing out one by one. At first, he just thought they drank too much, but when Zoro passed out Luffy realized that their drinks must have been spiked because there was no way Zoro would pass out from the amount he drank. Deciding to go along with it, for now, he acted as though he had passed out as well in order to see what these people's objectives were. After pretending to be sleeping for the past hour Luffy got up and snuck outside through the roof before jumping across to a nearby building and hid in the shadows. He could see standing out in front of the bar that he was just in was Agarapoy talking to Ms. Wednesday and Mr. Nine. It's good to see you again Agarapoy. I mean Mr. Eight, said Mr. Nine as he stood in front of Agarapoy. I see you two failed another mission, Agarapoy said as he looked at the two of them. Before any one of the two of them could reply a woman walked out of the bar dressed like a nun. No one had any high hopes of them completing that mission anyway, she said as she began to take the nun costume off. Why don't you go try and kill that whale? Mr. Nine yelled. Yeah, besides those pirates got in our way, Ms. Wednesday said in an annoyed voice. By the way, where are they? She asked while looking at the woman. They are all passed out inside. I had to doctor their drinks a bit otherwise they would still be up drinking us under the table, the woman said. Good thinking, Ms. Monday, Agarapoy said as he looked at the now named Ms. Monday. Now can you explain to me why it was necessary to put on that elaborate show for those idiots? She asked in an annoyed voice. I get that nobody wants to hear me whine, but it is my duty to point out the amount of food we wasted. 
We could have just ambushed them at the harbor. After all, we are already short on supplies, she said while placing her hand on her hip and staring at Agarapoy. Calm down. Before you question the validity of my plan you should see this, he said as he held up Luffy's wanted poster. When Luffy saw this he smirked. So, they're bounty hunters, Luffy thought to himself as he continues to spy on the group. 100 million berries. For that kid. The three of them screamed with eyes the size of dinner plates. Don't be foolish. Appearances can be deceiving, Agarapoy said as he placed the wanted poster back in his pocket. So what do we do now? Do we kill them? Ms. Monday asked. No, Agarapoy said surprising the three of them along with Luffy. If we kill them the bounty drops 30%. The government like to do public executions, he said in a grim tone. I see, Ms. Wednesday said. Now go, I want them alive. Ordered causing them to nod their heads. It had looked like they were going to reply but before they could reply a voice stopped them in their tracks and caused their eyes to widen. Hey, sorry to interrupt, the voice said causing the four of them to spin around and look at the roof of the bar. When they got around they saw Zoro standing there with his Kidetsu blade drawn along with Johnny and Yosaku each holding their bisantos. Luffy was surprised that they were awake and the fact that he didn't sense them. You mind letting my friends sleep, he said as he stared down at the four. Yeah, it was a long and exhausting journey, Johnny said as he locked eyes with Mr. Nine. So do try to keep your screams for mercy down. We wouldn't want to wake them, Yosaku added in an emotionless voice. When Luffy heard that he couldn't help but smirk. I think I've rubbed off on them a bit too much, he thought to himself. Just then the door of the bar opened and out came two men with guns. Hey Mr. Eight, Mr. Monday. They yelled as they opened the door. Four of them escaped from the room while we weren't looking, they said causing their eyes to widen. Four, they yelled, asked simultaneously. But there is only three of them here, Ms. Wednesday said in a scared voice. Where is the other one? She asked. Before anyone else to fathom a reply Zoro spoke up. Don't you think it is time you come out of your hiding spot, Captain? Zoro asked while looking over to the building right next to the bar puzzling everyone else. A few seconds later out walked Luffy from the shadows of the building chuckling to himself. Good job Zoro, he said as he jumped across the roof. Your training is paying off, he added as he walked next to the three of them. Big bro Luffy, you're awake as well, Johnny asked causing everyone to sweat drop. Luffy looked at him for a second before he shook his head and didn't bother replying to him. Instead, he turned his attention to the four individuals standing below them. You sneaky wretches, Mr. H shouted. You four should have stayed asleep with the rest. He yelled as more and more people began to gather. A true swordsman would never make such a mistake of letting his guard down, Zoro said causing Luffy to smile. And judging from the cheap disguises I'm guessing you're all bounty hunters, he said as he unsheathed another sword. Your specialty is robbing drunk pirates of fall for your hospitality, Luffy added in his usual emotionless voice. I count a hundred of these scumbags, give or take a few, Johnny added as he adjusted his glasses. We'll fight all of you, Zoro said as he stared at them with narrowed eyes. You hear me, Baroque works. He yelled causing all of their eyes to widen in shock. Luffy was puzzled because he had never heard of any organization by that name. Ah, how do you know our name? Mr. Eight yelled out in anger and shock. Zoro simply chuckled before he replied. I was in a similar line of work once upon a time, he said while grinning. Your company came and tried to entice me with a job offer. Naturally, I declined he said causing Luffy and the others to understand how he knew about the organization. Do the same rules still apply? Employees' identity kept secret, cheesy code names, the boss's identity and whereabouts remain a mystery. Baroque works the fateful organization that carries out their orders like herded sheep, Zoro said in an amused tone causing Luffy and the bounty hunting duo to chuckle. This is a surprise, Mr. Eight said in a cold tone. If you know all of your secrets we are left with little choice but to kill you, he said in a grim tone as he stared at the four of them. Luffy chuckled before he summoned his thundercloud throne and sat down. You are welcome to try, Luffy said as he sat down. The three of you should be able to handle this, 
If I get involved it won't be any fun, he said pissing off the Baroque Works agents. You dare underestimate us, one random Baroque Works agent yelled out in anger. Yosaku chuckled lowly before he spoke to the person who yelled. Please, if anything he is doing all of you a favor because if he joins in the fight, all of you will pass from this world and into the next not really knowing what happened, he said scaring a few agents. Luffy chuckled when he heard what Yosaku said. Enough. Mr. Eight yelled our getting everyone's attention. Kill them. He yelled causing all of the Baroque Works agents to charge at the four pirates. Zoro and the bounty hunting duo looked at Luffy who simply nodded his head telling them to go. That was all the three of them needed before they jumped off the roof and started fighting the bounty hunters. Luffy simply sat in his throne and poured himself a drink as he watched his three crew members tear through the bounty hunters. As he was taking a sip of his drink four random Baroque works agents got the stupid idea of trying to ambush Luffy from behind. Of course, Luffy knew they were there but he paid them no mind. The four agents didn't know what hit them as four lightning bolts shot out of Luffy's throne and pierced right through their chest killing the four of them. Trash, Luffy said with a sigh before he turned his attention back to everything that was going on below him. Zoro was cutting through the crowd with ease just as Luffy had expected him to. The thing that surprised Luffy was how good Johnny and Yosaku were at wielding a bisunto. The two of them were cutting down the Baroque Works agents with ease similar to Zoro and from the looks of it, their observation hockey was improving the more they fought. Luffy had a proud smile on his face as he saw the way they are progressing and they were progressing faster than Luffy had expected. Luffy was wondering if it was time to start their training in armament hockey. As the fight progressed Luffy observation hockey alerted him of someone moving in the bar where all of them were the rest of the crew was sleeping. Upon further analyzing he found it to be Nami searching for anything of value that they might have. Chuckling to himself he returned his attention to the fight. He noticed that Zoro was yelling at one of his swords. It was truly an odd sight to behold, a grown man talking to a sword. Well Kidetsu the third, you're quite sharp but you are also quite the troublemaker aren't you, Zoro said in an annoyed voice as he held the blade up to his face. A good sword only cuts when its master directs it too. Cursed sword or not you will listen to me, Zoro said not noticing one of the bounty hunters sneaking up behind him. The next thing Zoro saw was a small bolt of lightning fly past him cutting off a few strands of hair at the base of his neck before hitting the bounty hunter behind him right in the head. Zoro blinked a few times before he looked behind him and saw a dead bounty hunter laying on his back with a smoking hole in the middle of his forehead. He then looked to see where the shot came from and saw Luffy sitting on his throne holding a smoking pistol. You need to pay attention Zoro, Luffy scolded causing Zoro to nod his head and turning his attention to his new opponent, Ms. Monday. Luffy turned towards the Johnny and Yosaku and saw them fighting against Mr. Nine and M's Wednesday. He then realized that someone was missing from all this excitement and that was Mr. Eight. Luffy then looked straight ahead of him and saw Mr. Eight standing in the very same spot as before staring at Luffy with an angry look on his face. What seems to be the matter Mr. Eight? Luffy asked in a mocking tone pissing Mr. Eight off more. Has the oh so mighty Baroque works beaten by a few measly pirates from the East Blue? Luffy asked continuing to mock him. I wonder what your boss will think of all this. He asked causing Mr. Eight to pale before he regained his composure and yell at Luffy. I will make you pay for all this. He yelled at Luffy before he blew into his saxophone and bullets came firing out towards Luffy. Luffy paid the bullets no mind and simply allow them to pass through him causing Mr. Eight's eyes to widen. Now that wasn't very nice, Luffy said as he continued to mock him. Before Mr. Eight could reply a loud high-pitched scream came from the area where Zoro was fighting. Luffy and everyone else looked over and saw Zoro holding Ms. Monday by the head squeezing it before he let go and she passed out on the roof. Two other screams came from where Johnny and Yosaku were fighting and when Luffy and Mr. Eight looked over they saw Mr. Nine and M's Wednesday passed out on the ground. The other Baroque works agents were beyond scared at this point. They took out a single-digit agent, one random agent said in a frightened voice. And their captain hasn't even gotten up yet, said another. We are all going to die here today, said one man as he dropped his gun and fall to his knees. 
Luffy chuckled at their reaction as he watched Zoro and the bounty hunting duo make their way back to Luffy. Good job you three, Luffy said as he got up from his throne and sent it back into the sky. From the looks of it Yuhaki has improved even further, he said causing the three of them to smile. What are going to do about the rest of them? Zoro asked as he turned his attention to the rest of the bounty hunters. Luffy smiles and looked at the bounty hunters before he spoke to them. I will give all of you a choice, Luffy said surprising the bounty hunters. You can either leave Baroque Works and join me or... Dot die, he said causing a few of them to tremble in fear. We will, we will join why, boom the agent didn't get to finish his sentence before something hit him and exploded on contact killing him and a few other agents in the surrounding area. Everyone was confused and scared at what just happened. Zoro and the bounty hunting duo looked at Luffy to see if he did that but to their surprise, Luffy was as confused as they are. It would seem as though we have company, Luffy said lowly enough for the three of them to hear as he looked at a nearby alleyway. Oh my, it would seem as though some of you were planning on betraying Baroque works, came the voice of a man from the alleyway that Luffy was looking. Out of the shadows of the alleyway a man and a woman walked out. All of the bounty hunters were white as a sheet when they saw the pair. Luffy hypothesizes that these two were higher-ranking members of Baroque Works sent here to assist. By now Ms. Wednesday and Mr. Nine had woken up and crawled over to Mr. Eight. The three of you lost against a couple of small-time pirates, now that's just sad, the woman said in a condescending tone as he stared at the three Baroque Works agents. Mr. Five, Ms. Valentine. Ms. Wednesday said in shock. Hum, can't do your jobs, Mr. Five said. Kyahahaha. Well, that's clearly the difference between our rank and yours, Ms. Valentine mocked. You came here just to laugh at us, Mr. Eight asked angrily. Nah, that's a bonus, Mr. Five said coolly. Kyahahaha. We are here under the boss's orders, Ms. Valentine said earning Luffy's curiosity. Ha ha ha. With you guys here we can finally defeat them. They don't stand a chance against you, Mr. Nine said as she shakingly stood up. That's right, let's track him down and show him what Baroque works can really do, Ms. Wednesday said. Seriously Ms. Wednesday stop with the jokes. We didn't come here to clean up your mess, Mr. Nine said as he placed his hands in his pocket. Did you really think we came all the way to the beginning of the Grand Line just to hold your hands? Ms. Valentine asked rhetorically. Oh, you are even more pitiful than you look, she chuckled. But, what mission are you here for? Mr. Nine asked in a confused tone. Truth be told Luffy was wondering the same thing. You mean you haven't figured it out? Mr. Nine asked as he took a few steps forward. There are people here whose crimes against the company are great enough that the boss has sent us here to deal with them. He said someone had learned the secrets, I don't know what secrets and I don't want to know. Obviously, someone else did and that right there is against company rules, he said. Luffy could sense that Mr. Eight and M's Wednesday were beginning to get nervous and could only guess those two were the ones who had learned the secrets. Our company motto is the mystery. Everyone's identity is to be kept a secret no matter who they are. If some someone is dumb enough to nose around the boss's business, well the, that is a crime punishable by death, he said grimly. Well well, it seems as though things just got interesting, Luffy said to Zoro and the bounty hunting duo. It would seem so, Zoro added as they watched the interaction. So, while we were conducting our search about who had learned the boss's secret we discovered something, kyahahaha. Ms. Valentine said as she spun her umbrella. As it turns out a rather high-ranking Induville from a certain kingdom managed to infiltrate Baroque works, she said causing Luffy's eyebrow to raise in surprise. A kingdom. Mr. Nine yelled out in surprise. But wait. I may wear a crown but I am not a king or anything like that, I swear it is just an innocent little hobby, he said pleading with the pair to believe him. Shut up you idiot, Ms. Valentine shrieked in a high-pitched voice. You still don't get it, we need the people from Alabasta. They're the ones who angered the boss, Mr. Five said coolly surprising Luffy even further. At this point, Mr. Eight was shaking in fear as he stared at the ground. Before anyone could react he pulled his bow tie and from the curls in his hair gun barrels poked out and fired five times on the pair of Baroque Works agents. 
You will not lay a hand on our princess so long as the captain of Alabasta security still stands. He yelled as he fired five more times. The princess of Alabasta, Luffy said as he stared at Ms. Wednesday. I had heard that the princess went missing but I never thought she would be working undercover in Baroque works, he said. Don't princesses usually have underlings to do those sort of things for them? Johnny asked. Yeah they do but, Alabasta is currently in a civil war. So maybe all of her underlings joined the rebels, Luffy said jokingly. What do we do? Yosaku asked as he stared at the spot where the two Baroque works agents were before they got shot at. We watch for now, Luffy said as he turned and faced them. Nami is still robbing the place. So we let them fight it out and create the distraction away from her, he said causing the two of them to nod their heads before turning their attention back to the altercation. As the smoke cleared everyone saw the two agents unhurt and unfazed by just being shot it. Agaram, captain of Alabasta security and Princess Vivi Nefertari of the Alabasta kingdom, we have come here in the name of the boss of Baroque Works to see that you are eliminated, Mr. Five said as he held up a picture of Princess Vivi. The princess was beyond scared, her eyes widened in fear and her mouth kept moving but words just won't come out. The other agents that managed to survive Zoro and the bounty hunting duo were staring that Vivi and Agarum in pure shock, Mr. couldn't believe the woman he had been working with for so long as a princess. Agarum then pulled his bow tie once more and started firing on the pair of agents again. Go on princess. You must escape. He yelled to the princess. Agarum. The princess cried out. Then all of a sudden one of the agents from inside the smoke fired out something at Agarum that exploded on contact. Agarum. The princess cried once more as Agarum fell face first to the ground. Don't bother, came the voice of Ms. Valentine from above Vivi. Luffy looked up and saw her floating in the air looking down at the princess. It would seem as though we got a pair of devil fruit users, Luffy said surprisingly his three crew members. If push comes to shove I will fight them, he said causing the three of the nod before turning their attention back to the fight. Princess, Agarum choked out as he lay on the ground. You must get away from here, for the sake of our homeland. If something were to happen to you our kingdom would crumble he said causing the princess's eyes to widen. If you think you can escape from us you must be crazy, Mr. Five said as he picked his nose. Kill me if you can take me, she yelled out as she took a defensive stance and started spinning something on both of her pinky fingers. It was then Mr. Nine got up and stood in front of the princess with his baseball bats in a defensive position facing the pair of agents. We have been partners and have been fighting together for a long time. So get going. I am going to buy you some time for a head start, he told the princess. Thank you Mr. Nine, the princess said causing Mr. Nine to chuckle. Pretty manly don't you think, he said before charging towards the two agents. Mr. Five then pulled out a bugger from his nose and flicked it towards Mr. Nine. The bugger sailed through the air and hit Mr. Nine right in the face. Upon hitting him the bugger exploded on contact surprising everyone that was watching. Did that thing just come out of his nose? Yosaku asked in disbelief. Well that's a strange ability, Luffy said as he stared at Mr. Five with interest while ignoring the princess's screams for Mr. Nine. Luffy was knocked out of his studying by the voice of Agarum who apparently crawled to the base of the bar and was looking up at them. Pirates, I have the most unreasonable request but I require the help of someone with strength such as yourself. Luffy looked at him with a curious expression before jumping down from the roof towards Agarum. Oh, and what might that request be? Luffy asked as he sat on a nearby barrel and looked down at the bleeding man. Both of those villains possess devil fruit powers and there is nothing I can do to stop them. So that is why I am begging you please protect Princess Vivi of Alabasta in my place, he begged Luffy. Zoro and the bounty hunting duo were surprised beyond belief. First. He tries to kill them and now he wants them to protect a princess, was he crazy? They all wondered about the bleeding man begging Luffy. And why would I do that, huh? Luffy asked rhetorically. You were trying to kill me and my crew a few moments ago and now you want me to save your princess. Give me one good reason why I should help you, Luffy said in his usual emotionless tone. You would be rewarded greatly if you return the princess of Alabasta to her kingdom. 
I am just a lowly servant but I beg you please protect the princess, he begged. Luffy just stared at him with his cold eyes before he scoffed. Reward. Yeah right. I know Alabasta is in the middle of a civil war. You barely got enough money for yourselves much less to give me, Luffy said coldly causing Agarum's head to drop. However, Luffy said getting Agarum to look up at him with hope-filled eyes. I will protect the princess under one condition, Luffy said. What is it? Agarum asked with a voice filled with hope. Whatever it is I am sure the king would pay it if his daughter is returned safely, he said causing Luffy to chuckle. I will protect the princess only if once I return her to her kingdom. Alabasta becomes my territory, Luffy said causing Agarum's eyes to widen in shock along with Zoro, the bounty hunting duo, and Nami who was hiding in the corner. I I, I can't promise that, Agarum said sadly. That is something only the king and the princess could do, he said causing Luffy to smile. Then I'll just have to ask the princess, Luffy said before looking up at his three crew members. You three go protect the princess, I'll join you after I tie up a few loose ends, he said causing the three of them to run off to the princess. Luffy then looked towards the remaining bounty hunters and spoke. Raging thunder. He yelled out causing fifty bolts of lightning to come down from the sky and strike the remaining bounty hunters while thunder boomed overhead. Luffy then looked at the alleyway next to the bar and spoke. You can come out now, Nami, he said causing his navigator to come out of her hiding spot. Hey captain, she greeted as she walked up to Luffy. Did you find anything? He asked. No, they are completely broke, she said sadly causing Luffy to chuckle. For a bounty hunter's nest they suck, she said. Luffy smiled at her before he replied. Don't worry about it. Luffy said getting her attention. I didn't really expect much, he said before he got off the barrel. Treat his wounds for me, I'll go help those three out, he said before he turned his body into lightning and teleported away. Luffy landed on a nearby building close to where Zoro and the bounty hunting duo were fighting against the two agents. As he arrived Luffy saw a slightly burnt Zoro fighting against Mr. Five while the bounty hunting duo fight against Ms. Valentine. The princess was sitting on a rather large duck watching the fight. All right you three I'll take it from here, Luffy said getting everyone's attention. Upon seeing their captain the three of them jumped and stood next to him. Luffy jumped down from the roof and started walking towards the par with a cold look in his eyes. Well aren't you cocky, Mr. Five said as he stared at Luffy walking towards them. Thinking you can take on both of us by yourself. We should teach this brat a lesson. Mr. Five, Ms. Valentine said with an arrogant smirk. Let's see how you like my bomb bomb fruit. Mr. Five yelled as he charged forward to punch Luffy with his left fist. Luffy simply covered his left palm with armament hockey and caught his fist with ease. I am possible, Mr. Five yelled out in surprise. Luffy then covered his right in lightning and backhanded Mr. Five sending crashing through four buildings. Ms. Valentine and the princess stared at Luffy with eyes the size of dinner plates. He just took out one of Baroque Works' top agents as though it was nothing, Vivi said to herself in a voice of pure disbelief. You, you, monster, Ms. Valentine said in fear as he stared at Luffy who was walking towards her. No not monster, Luffy said as he got closer. I'm more along the line of a demon. Luffy said before he turned himself into lightning and teleported right behind her and placed his index finger at the base of her neck and channeled a small amount of lightning causing her to pass out on the ground. Luffy then turned towards the princess causing her to back away in fear. Do not worry princess I'm not here to harm you, Luffy said surprising her. Then why are you here? She asked with a voice laced with fear. I'm here to work out a contract, Luffy said puzzling her. You see. Agarum asked me to protect you and return you safely to your kingdom and in return, I want Alabasta to become my territory, Luffy said casing her eyes to widen. What? She yelled out. Of course, he couldn't promise something like that. So, he told me to take it up with you. So here I am, he said as he walked over to a nearby box and sat down. And what exactly would we have to give you in return for being under your protection? She asked causing Luffy smile. Nothing really, Luffy said surprising her. 
The fact that I will have a big country like Alabasta as one of my territories will be enough to boost my reputation in the world, Luffy said getting Bibi to understand now. Zoro and the bounty hunter duo didn't quite understand why Luffy wasn't asking for something else like some money every month or something like that as payment for his protection. That cannot be all, Bibi said thinking along the same way of Luffy's crew. You are right, Luffy said getting everybody's attention. But that is not a conversation that should be spoken out in the open like this, Luffy said knowing very well that they were being spied on. But, do you mind telling me just why a princess like yourself is working in Baroque works? Luffy asked while staring at the princess. The princess's face took on a sad look as she looked down to the ground before she spoke. As you know Alabasta is in the middle of a civil war, one day I learned of a secret organization called Baroque works. I found out our people were being manipulated by this organization but that was the only information I could gather about this organization. I didn't know what to do so I went to Agarum for help and asked him to help me infiltrate Baroque works so I can see who was pulling their strings from behind the scenes and what exactly they were up to, she said surprising them. Well you got a lot of guts considering you are a princess, Nami said as she walked out of a nearby alleyway. Where is Agarum? Luffy asked. He said he will be here in a few, she said as she sat down next to Luffy. Something about some business he had to take care of, she said. So, did you manage to find out what their plan was? Johnny asked Vivi causing everyone to look at her. Their plan is to create an ideal nation, Nami said surprising Luffy and the others. That's what Agarum told me, she said. That's just a cover story the boss is using to cover their tracks, Bibi said as she clenched her fist. Their true goal is to take over the Alabasta Kingdom, she said causing Luffy to nod his head because that made more sense rather than some ideal nation. I have to get back home so I can warn everybody and stop all of the fighting because if I don't. The princess said before she started to cry. Don't worry princess, Luffy said getting her attention. If you agree to my terms I'll help you save your country, he said before he got up from his seat and looked up to the sky. By the way, did you ever find out the boss's identity? Luffy asked causing her to panic. What? The boss's identity? Dot you shouldn't ask that. Vivi screamed frantically. But you know don't you? Luffy asked as he stared at her. Ask me anything but that. She screamed as she waves her hands frantically in the air. If I tell you your lives will be put in danger too, she said trying to make Luffy understand the danger while Luffy found it all amusing. Yeah, I'll pass, Nami said in a scared voice. This guy is trying to take over an entire country after all. I wouldn't want someone like that chasing after me, Nami said while sweating slightly. No, you don't, Vivi said in a serious tone. I don't care how strong you people are you don't stand a chance against one of the seven warlords of the sea, against Crocodile, she said causing everyone to stare at her and blinked a few time before she and Nami screamed out. Ah, they screamed out. You know for a princess you're not very bright, Luffy chuckled out. Then all of a sudden Luffy sensed someone behind them and spun around quickly startling everyone. When everyone turned around they saw a vulture and an otter standing on the roof staring down at them. Before the otter hopped onto the vulture and they flew off. It was truly an odd sight to behold in Luffy's opinion. Nami immediately began to panic and tried to leave claiming that they didn't know what she looked like until the otter showed up again and help up five well-drawn pictures of all of them causing Nami to sulk in the corner while Bibi apologizes to her. Well then. It looks like the five of us will be sitting at the very top of Baroque Works hit list, Zoro said causing Luffy to chuckle. It seems so, Luffy replied sounding excited before he looked over to the princess. So princess do we have a deal? Luffy asked getting her attention. Seeing as how you are already involved because of me I think I will take you up on your offer, she replied causing Luffy to smile. We're all going to die. Nami cried and rocked herself back and forth as she hugged her knees. You have nothing to fear. Came the voice of Agarum from behind everyone causing all of them to turn back around. As they all turned around Luffy and the guy immediately wished they hadn't turned around. Standing in front of them was Agarum dressed as Princess Vivi holding five dummies. My eyes, Luffy said as he stared at the Agarum. It's cough cough ma. Ma, ma, it's going to be okay. 
Princess, he said as he stared at the group. I've come up with a plan, he added causing Luffy to raise his eyebrow. Agarum what are you? The princess tried to form a sentence but was too stunned by Agarum's appearance. I didn't know you were a crossdresser old man, Luffy said jokingly. Listen to me carefully, Princess Vivi, he said in a serious tone. Once Baroque Works Intelligence Unit learned about what happened here agents will be sent after you immediately. And since they are aware that you learned the boss's true identity you must, he said but was cut off by Vivi. Yes knowing them they will send a thousand agents after me, she said scaring Nami even more. Thus my plan, disguise like this I will pretend to be you, Agaram said while looking down at Vivi. I will take these three dummies on board with me and I will sail a straight course to Alabasta, he said causing Luffy to understand his plan. So, these dummies are supposed to be us, Luffy said while nodding his head. A decoy, Yosaku added. While Baroque Works is busy chasing after me the rest of you will head to the Alabasta Kingdom following a less direct route, he said causing Luffy to nod his head understanding the plan. Hold on just a minute. Nami screamed as she got up. Who said we were going to take her with us and we didn't discuss the matter of payment? She yelled causing everyone to stare at her like she was crazy. Um, I decided that we are taking her and we already discussed the payment. Luffy said while looking at her with a bewildered look. Weren't you paying attention earlier? He asked. But what about Crocodile? She screamed once again. Relax, some measly warlord isn't anything to be afraid of, Luffy said while waving his hand in a dismissive manner. Now everyone was looking at Luffy like he had grown a second head. Besides this sounds like it will be fun, Luffy added with a large grin on his face. We will be forever grateful. Thank you, Agarum said before he walked over the water where a ship was docked and hopped it. Now I Vivi will leave from here, Agarum said imitating Vivi causing everyone to laugh. Vivi and Agarum said their goodbyes and the ship sailed away from the island. He was an all right old man, Johnny said as he stared at the ship. Yeah, he was, Zoro added. Everyone was staring at the ship as it sailed further and further away. When the ship was about half a mile away from the island it was suddenly swallowed up in a giant explosion causing everyone's eyes to widen in shock. Holy shit, everyone get to the ship now. Luffy yelled to all of them. Johnny, Yosaku, Zoro, go grab the others. Hurry, Luffy yelled out causing the three of them to run off along with Nami. Luffy turned back to the explosion and spoke. I didn't think they would come after us so early he said before turning to the princess who was frozen in shock. Luffy ran up to her and picked her up bridal style before teleporting back to the bar where the others were. As they landed in front of the bar, Vivi immediately jumped out of Luffy's arms and started looking around frantically. Where is he? Vivi yelled as she looked around. Where is who? Luffy asked as he watches Sanji, Usopp, and Nojiko get dragged out of the bar screaming. My duck, Kuru, she said causing Luffy to sweat drop. We don't have time for this, he said before he picked her up again and teleported to the dock. When they landed on the dock Vivi once again jumped out of his hands. I can't just leave him here, she yelled. We are all set, let's go. Zoro yelled as he pulled up the anchor. What's wrong with her, he asked. She is missing her duck, Luffy said in an annoyed tone. Zoro looked at the two of them strangely before he spoke. You mean this duck, he said while pointing to the giant duck standing next to him. Luffy and Vivi stared at the duck before yelling out. He's already here, they yelled. He got here before I did, Zoro said. Vivi and Luffy got on the ship and they immediately set sail and began sailing up the waterway in order to reach the sea faster. As they were sailing up the waterway they entered a thick fog similar to the one they had when they came to the island. Finally, the sun is coming up, Nami said in a relief tone. I'm just glad that we got away from the people chasing us, came a female voice that didn't belong to any member of the crew. Luffy was cursing himself for letting his guard down so easily, but he now wanted to see how long it would take the rest of the crew to realize. You can say that again. Nami replied not really noticing that someone had invaded the ship. With all this fog we need to be careful to avoid the rocks, the woman said again. 
Luffy was being patient not to react but it was taking every fiber of his being to not turn around and blast whoever that was. I'll take care of it, Nami said happily before she blinked a few time and looked over to Luffy who was standing next to her. Did you just say something? She asked while looking at Luffy. Luffy looked over to her with a pissed off look on his face. It's nice of you to finally notice someone snuck onto the ship. Luffy yelled before he spun around and stared up at the second level and saw a woman sitting on the rails of the upper deck with her legs crossed. Upon seeing her face Luffy smirked and chuckled to himself. This is a nice ship, the woman said causing everyone to panic and be on guard. It's it's you. Vivi yelled out while staring at the woman in fear causing the woman to chuckle. I just happened to run into your dear Mr. Eight a little ways back, he didn't look so good, the woman said mockingly while looking at Vivi. So you killed a Garum, Vivi said grimly. You want to explain to me you are doing on my ship, Luffy asked in a dangerous tone getting the woman's attention. What are you doing here, Ms. All Sunday? Vivi yelled, asked. You know who she is? Nami asked while looking over to Vivi. Who is her partner? She asked again. Her partner is Mr. Zero, the boss, Vivi said surprising everyone. Crocodile is her partner. Nami yelled out in fear. She was the only one who knew the boss's identity and that's how we found out, by following her back to him, Vivi said as she looked at the woman with eyes of hatred. To be clear, I allowed you to follow me, she replied. You still haven't answered my question. Luffy said getting her attention as Sanji pointed a gun to her head while Usopp pointed his slingshot. I would really appreciate it if you stopped pointing those at me, she said before both Sanji and Usopp were thrown off of the second deck by some invisible force and down to the main deck. You know you are playing a dangerous game attacking a member of my crew like that, Luffy said as the sky above began to darken. There is no need to get all excited, I have no real orders here. So. I have no real reason to fight you, she said while looking down at Luffy. All of a sudden something hit Luffy's straw hat off of his head and sent it floating towards the woman who caught it and started spinning at her hand. So you are the famous Monkey D. Luffy, she said. As she finished speaking a loud thunder clapped sound overhead startling everyone and lighting started striking random parts of the water. Every member of Luffy's crew took a step away from him because they all knew no one is allowed to touch Luffy's hat. You know, I don't know if I should be honored. Luffy said before he started to bring his right up and placed his straw hat back on his head causing everyone's eyes to widen shock and awe. Ms. All Sunday looked at her hand that was spinning the hat and her index finger just there pointing up. He looked back at Luffy now wearing his straw hat with a small amount of fear in her eyes. I didn't even see him move, she thought. Or scared that someone as famous as you know my name. Luffy said causing her to flinch slightly, something that Luffy didn't miss. Now Ms. All Sunday if you ever touch my hat again, I will finish what the world government started all those years ago, Luffy said in a dangerous tone scaring her. Two thing was clear in her mind one, she needed to get off of this ship quickly, and two, Luffy was very dangerous. She then tossed something towards Luffy who caught it and upon seeing what it was he looked at her with a puzzled look. The next island is Little Garden, using that eternal pose you can skip right past it and head to Alabasta, she said with a smile trying to mask he fear. Or else you won't survive Little Garden, she added grimly trying to scare them. However, she was surprised when Luffy crushed the eternal pose in his hand smiled at her. I am the captain of this and I decide where we go, he said in his usual monotone voice. Ms. All Sunday then got up and started walking to the edge of the ship. Well then I hope that we meet again, she said as she was leaving. I'm sure we will miss Devil, Luffy said causing her to flinch again. And tell Crocodile I'll be seeing him shortly, Luffy said. She didn't reply instead he hopped off of the ship and landed on a giant turtle. Luffy then looked towards Nami and spoke. Plot a course to Little Garden, Luffy said before walking towards the kitchen. I, Nami replied before she started giving out orders. Chapter 16. A Giant Problem in Little Garden. Luffy and the crew were sailing in the Grand Line for about a day now since they left Whiskey Peak. They were sailing in calm waters for the majority of the journey, but they had not traveled as far as they would like. The reason for that being that the wind kept stopping every now and then delaying their journey. 
Luffy was currently sitting on his throne sipping a glass of whiskey while watching everyone move about the ship. Sanji, Usopp, and Yosaku were fishing off the side of the ship. Zoro was sleeping right next to them. Nami and Bibi were standing on the upper deck in front of Luffy watching them fish. Johnny was up in the crow's nest looking out for any island or any ship heading their way. Nojiko was behind Luffy practicing wielding her three-section staff and Bibi's duck Karu was standing off to Luffy's right looking out into the water. Luffy never thought he would admit this but he really liked that duck, he was fun to have around. While Luffy was watching everyone go about their duties the wind suddenly stopped again causing the sails to drop and the ship itself to stop. Luffy sighed as he felt the ship. When we get to water 7 I really need to get a ship with paddles or a propeller under the ship cause this is ridiculous, Luffy thought before turning his attention to Nami and Bibi who were walking towards him. Luffy, Nami said getting his attention on her, the wind stopped again, she said causing Luffy to look at her funny. There is nothing I can do about the wind, Luffy said before he took a sip of his drink. But if we continue at this rate I am that by the time we reach Alabasta it would be too late, Bibi said with a frown. Luffy got up from his throne and placed his hand on her shoulder causing her to look up at him. You are worrying too much, everything is going to be okay, he said with a warm smile on his face before he turned towards Nami. Why don't you help her take her mind off things by teaching her some hockey, Luffy said to Nami. Bibi heard that and took on a puzzled look wondering just what hockey was. When she looked over to Nami she saw an evil look on Nami's face causing her to sweat a little. Before she could react she was being pulled away by Nami leading her towards the women's quarters. Luffy chucked when he saw Nami pull Bibi away before he went and sat back down on his throne. As he sat down on his throne he gave it a mental command to turn around so he could see what Nojiko was doing. When the throne spun around he saw her sweating and breathing heavily while going through different movements at an impressive rate of speed. She is training really hard, Luffy thought to himself as he watches her strike an invisible opponent with his staff. What brought on this intensity? Luffy asked getting her attention. Once she heard Luffy's voice she stopped what she was doing and took a few seconds to catch her breath before she replied. What are you talking about? She asked while breathing heavily. Luffy smiled before he pulled out a second glass and poured some whiskey before handing it to her. Why are you suddenly training so hard? Luffy asked as he watches her down the whiskey in one go. I have always been like this, she said before she handed the glass back to Luffy who took it and refilled it before handing it back to her. No, you haven't, Luffy said as he got up from his throne and walked over to the back and looked out into the ocean before he continued speaking. Since we left Whiskey Peak you have been training yourself non-stop, why? He asked while continuing to look at the water. Nojiko tightens the grip on her three-section staff before she replied. Because I could have easily died on Whiskey Peak if it wasn't for you, Nami, Zoro, Johnny, and Yosaku, she said causing Luffy to understand what was going on but he didn't say anything instead he let her continue. And those guys who were on whiskey were nothing but cannon fodder compared to the enemies we are going to be facing soon, I let my guard down so easily against a bunch of weaklings and had to be saved by my little sister, again, she said sadly. Luffy then turned around and placed his hand on her shoulder before he spoke. Hey, you're not alone in this. You weren't the only one who let their guards down back there and Nami didn't really do much, Luffy said causing her to look up at him with some tears in her eyes. She didn't fight nobody, all she did was look around for stuff to steal. Well they didn't really have anything to steal, but that is beside the point. Dot dot. The point is you made a mistake in judgment and you learned from it. There is no need to beat yourself up so much over it after all this life is new to you, I've been a pirate all my life, Nami been a thief since she was a child, and Zoro and those two have been bounty hunters a long time as well. We have been at this a while and we develop the skills necessary to survive over time and you will too, Luffy said trying to get her to relax a bit. Nojiko then wiped a stray tear away from her eyes before he smiled and replied to Luffy. Thanks, Luff, she said with a smile causing Luffy to smile as well. Good, now show me what you got, Luffy said before he took off his captain's coat and threw it on his throne. Nojiko looked at him puzzled for a second before she spoke. What do you mean? 
She asked as she watches as Luffy move a few feet away from her. You don't want to die when you face stronger enemies, and you don't want to be protected by your little sister anymore instead you want to protect her. So, you have been training yourself to the ground since we left Whiskey Peak and now I want to see the fruits of all this training, Luffy said as he took up a defensive stance. Nojiko had her eyes widen at what Luffy just said. He had hit the nail on the head about the way she was feeling and now he wanted to fight her. Be you but, there is no way I can beat you, Nojiko said in a nervous voice. Luffy chuckled a bit before he replied. I never said for you to be me, I said show me the fruits of your training, he said before motioning her to come at him. Fine then, she said as she took a few seconds to calm her nerves before she took a few steps towards Luffy and started spinning her three-section staff. Then faster than a normal human I could track she launched an attack aimed at Luffy's head which Luffy easily caught with his hand. Tisk tisk, with attacks like that Nami may still need to protect you, Luffy said while shaking his head causing Nojiko to growl as she pulled the section of her staff away from Luffy. She then begins to spin all three sections of her staff once again before she thrust it forward aiming at Luffy's chest. Luffy saw the attack coming and simply raised his right hand and stopped it with his palm. Yeah, you surely are going to die against stronger enemies, Luffy said pissing her off even more. Shut up, she screamed as he pulled the staff back and swung it towards Luffy head which is easily dodge. With attacks like these makes me think you want to die, Luffy said as he continued to dodge and block her attacks. Do you want to die, Nojiko? Luffy asked a bit louder. No. She said as continued to attack. I couldn't hear that, do you want to die? Luffy asked again causing her to growl. No, she yelled as her attacks got faster and stronger causing Luffy smile. Then strike me down, Luffy yelled causing a determined and angry look to come across her face before gathered her all willpower into her staff and swung it with all her might aiming for Luffy's right side. Luffy saw it coming and brought his arm up to block it. As the staff hit Luffy's arm his eyes widened as he suddenly felt pain in the area where he got hit. He quickly looked at the staff and saw a tiny amount of black fading away from the silver staff. Upon seeing that he smiled and looked over to Nojiko. Congratulations, Luffy said confusing her. You have unlocked your armament hockey, he said before walking over to his throne and putting his coat back on. Nojiko stared at Luffy as he put his coat back on with eyes the size of dinner of plates for a few seconds before she stuttered out a question. What? She asked in a confused voice. Luffy sat back down on his throne and chuckled at her before he spoke. It is as I just said, he said as he pulled out his glass and began to pour himself a drink. That final attack of yours had armament hockey in it, that is why I felt pain when it hit me. Luffy said before he took a sip of his drink. Nojiko blinks a few times trying to process what Luffy had just said before she spoke. But what was it that I did that caused it to awaken? She asked as she took a seat on the ground in front of Luffy wanting to hear what he had to say. It was your willpower, he replied causing her to look at him in confusion but said nothing instead, she waited for him to continue. If you remember from my explanation of what hockey was, I explained that in the case of armament hockey a person's willpower or spirit allows them to create armor around themselves. Just now even though you weren't in any immediate danger your will to live and your will to prove yourself to be stronger than your sister was strong enough that you unconsciously covered the lower section of your staff with armament hockey, Luffy said before taking another sip of his drink and looking over to Nojiko to see if she understood everything he just said. So it was just my will. She asked in a voice of disbelief. Yeah I know it sounds hard to believe that the will of a person would have that kind of power, but it does, he said while looking at her with a smile. You are the first one on the crew to awaken it, congratulations, he said causing her to blush slightly at the praise she was getting from her captain. So um, what do I do now? She asked trying to change the subject. Well, you need to learn how to summon it at will to point where it would almost become second nature he said in a serious voice causing her to look at him with a determined look on her face. In order to do that you need to find a way to recapture that feeling you had just before you attacked me and find a way to make it work for you, he said causing her nod her head at him. I'll get started right away, she said as she begins to get up in order to continue her training. 
As she was about to turn and go back to her training Luffy spoke causing her to stop. Before you do that, Luffy said getting her attention back on him. He then reached into his coat and pulled out a blindfold and tossed it to her before he spoke again. All that training that you were doing with your staff before I interrupted you, I want you to do all that over again this time blindfolded, he said causing her eyes to widen. But why? She asked not really seeing the point of doing something like that. Her control over her staff was already perfect and didn't see how that was going to help her. Two reasons why actually. Firstly, if you are able to control your weapon with the same efficiency and skill while blindfolded as compared to when your vision is intact it is only then you can truly say you have mastered it. And lastly, it is quite normal for your enemies to try and take away one of your five senses, oftentimes they seek to take away your ability to see. This will you if you are ever in a position like that, he said before he took another sip of his drink. I understand. Nojiko said finding logic in Luffy's words before she walked back to her training spot and placed the blindfold around her eye and began practicing her with staff again. The first few times of her spinning the staff and twirling it around her body resulted in her hitting herself in the leg, head, and chest causing Luffy to chuckle before turning his throne around in order to see what everyone else was up to. He saw Usopp and the guys had finished catching fish and Sanji was now in the kitchen cook the fish they catch, Zoro was still sleeping, Johnny was still in the crow's nest looking out, and Luffy could hear Vivi's screams as Nami taught her observation hockey. It was then Sanji came out and announced that lunch was ready. Lunch is ready, he yelled causing everyone to stop what they were doing and began walking towards the kitchen. Thank God, I'm starving, Johnny said as he climbed down from the crow's nest. Luffy got up from his throne and sent it up in the sky where it was safe before he made his way towards the kitchen. When he walked into the kitchen he walked straight over to the table and took the open seat in between Vivi and Nojiko. As everyone sat down Sanji served everyone their food while flirting with the girls. Luffy poured himself some whiskey before he began to eat. Nami, how much longer till we reach Little Garden? Zoro asked as he took a bit of his food. I don't know. She said causing everyone except Luffy to stop and look at her with wide eyes. What? Usopp screamed. How could you not know? You're the navigator aren't you? He yelled, asked causing Nami to growl and was about to yell at Usopp but Luffy spoke before she could. Calm down Usopp, Luffy said in a calm voice. It is uncharted waters, so there is no exact way of know when we will get there, he said coming to Nami's defense. Oh, sorry. Usopp said sheepishly while scratching the back of his head. Nami just huffed and went back to her food. Oh, and Nami, Luffy said getting her attention. The ship needs to be cleaned, he said causing her to look at him puzzled wondering why she needs to clean the ship. Why do I have to do it? She whined. Oh sweet Nami, did you forget about your punishment? Luffy said with an evil smile causing a look of recognition to flash across Nami's face before she sunk into her seat and replied. No, she said dejectedly causing everyone else to chuckle while Vivi looked around confused. Don't worry Vivi, I'll tell you later, Nojiko said causing her to nod. I can't wait to get to Little Garden, Usopp said in a happy voice. I can just see it now, the women of Little Garden all lining up to meet the great Captain Usopp. He proclaimed with his fork in the air. Yeah right, if anything they will all be lined up to meet me. Sanji yelled at Usopp. I don't want to burst your bubbles, Luffy said in a calm voice getting their attention. But there aren't any people on Little Garden, he said surprising everyone. What? Sanji and Usopp yelled. No people, that what's on the island? They asked simultaneously. From what I've heard it is a prehistoric island that is still stuck in the dinosaur age, he said calmly as though it was nothing. Everyone stared at Luffy as though he had grown a second head. Usopp, Yosaku, Nami, and Vivi had gone white as a sheet, the food that Sanji was about to put in his mouth fell to the ground, Nojiko and Johnny were frozen stiff, while Zoro and Karu just continued eating. Why you are kidding right? Usopp asked in a scared voice. Luffy finished eating and downed his whiskey before he replied. Nope, totally serious, he said as he got up and took his plate to the sink. B but how is that possible? Nami stuttered out. Yeah. Dinosaurs are extinct, Johnny added. 
Luffy chuckled as he leaned against the wall before he replied. Welcome to the Grand Line, he said with a wide smile. How can you be so calm? Vivi yelled at Luffy causing him to chuckle some more before he replied. You need to relax, princess, he said coolly. We will keep you safe, so calm down, he said. Yeah, stick with me Vivi, your knight in shining armor will protect you. Sanji yelled with hearts in his eyes causing everyone to sweat drop. Anyway, Luffy said seriously getting everyone's attention. When we get there I want Zoro and Sanji to restock our meat supplies, Luffy said causing the two of them to nod their heads in apprehension. I captain, they said simultaneously. Good, and now for the most important thing of them all, he said causing everyone to lean towards him a bit. Under no circumstances are any of you allowed to touch any of the plants, insects, berries or fruits of any kind while we are on that island, understood. He asked causing every one of them to nod their heads. But why all of that, big bro Luffy? Johnny asked wondering why they couldn't touch any of those things. Because if you get infected by something on that island the cure for it probably doesn't or no longer exists. Luffy yelled scaring all of them. Do I make myself clear? He asked causing all of them to nod their heads quickly. Good, now Nami hurry up and eat and get cleaning, he said before he walked out of the kitchen. Time skip. Two days later. I see an island. Yosaku yelled from the crow's nest getting everyone's attention. He had decided to take the lookout duties today in order for Johnny to relax a bit. Luffy was sitting on his throne yelled out orders for Nami when he saw the island Yosaku was pointing to. Nami, he said getting her attention. You're in charge from here. Take us in, he said causing her to smile before she looked at her log pose and then looked at the crew. There is no mistake, Cactus Island and this one are definitely pulling against each other, she said before pointing to the island. It's our next stop, she yelled causing Usopp, Johnny, and Vivi's duck Karu to start dancing and cheering. As the ship sailed closer and closer to the island the cheering stopped and turned into scared pleas to turn around. What the hell is little about this place? Usopp yelled while sweating slightly. Luffy decided to get up and go stand with Nami as they approached the island. As he was walking he gave a mental command to his throne to return to the sky before he spoke to Usopp. Usopp, are you forgetting what lives on that island? Luffy asked as he walked and stood next to Nami. Usopp thought about it for a second before he turned ad look at Nami and Luffy white as a sheet while trembling slightly. See can't we just skip this island? He stuttered out. I am sure we can make it to the next island without going ashore on this one. He yelled. Luffy decided not to answer him instead, he let Nami answer with his complaints. The only way to reset the log is to go ashore, Nami said with a sigh while placing her hands on her hips. Besides, we need to restock our food supplies, Sanji added as he lit a cigarette. We didn't get so much as a sack of flour in the last town, he said as he blew out some smoke. Guys, Zoro said getting all of their attention. There is our ticket in, he said while pointing forward to the island. Everyone looked to see where he was pointing and saw a small river going into the island. Nojiko ran inside and took control of the rudder and with a help of Nami guidance she managed to take the ship in through the small river. As they were sailing on the river they all noticed the vast jungle on both sides while the air was filled the sound of different animals and birds. Nami looked at her log pose and back at jungle before she spoke. I don't know, she said causing Luffy to look at her with a raised eyebrow. Usopp may be right on this one, she said causing Usopp to look at her with hopeful eyes. We can rest the log from the ship. We don't need to go ashore, and once it resets we can leave and never look back, said Nami in a slightly scared voice. Right, Usopp and Karu said while giving a salute. Hate to burst your bubbles but we have no idea how long it will take for it to reset, Luffy said as he began walking down the stairs. There are some islands where the log pose only takes a few minutes, then there are islands where it takes a few years, he said causing all of their eyes to widen. AAF few why years? Usopp said as he dropped to his knees. We are going to die. He cried out to the heavens. Calm down Usopp. Luffy said trying to get his sniper under control. We don't know for sure so calm down, 
he said before walking off to the side and looked out into the jungle. As he was staring out into the jungle a large tiger emerges from the bushes and began stacking the ship while staring at Luffy who just stared right back with his usually emotionless face. I have never seen a tiger that big, Johnny commented while grabbing his bisanto just in case. Neither have I, said Bibi as she walked and stood behind a very scared Karu. As everyone was staring at the tiger as it walked beside the ship it suddenly stopped and its eyes widened before he suddenly coughed up some blood and dropped to the floor dead. Even Luffy was surprised by what he just saw. What could have killed a giant tiger like that? Asked a very scared Nojiko. I have no idea, Luffy replied worrying the crew even more. All right, this is far enough, Luffy said before he turned around and looked at everyone. Johnny, Yosaku dropped the anchor. Luffy said causing the two of them to give a salute before they ran to the front of the ship and dropped the anchor. We dropped her, Captain. They yelled causing Luffy to nod his head before he turned towards Sanji and spoke. Sanji could you make me some lunch, I want to get my energy up, Luffy said causing Sanji to nod and walk off to the kitchen. Get your energy up for what exactly? Nami asked as she stood next to Nojiko and Bibi who all had their hands on their hips staring at Luffy while tapping their foot. Luffy would never admit it but the way those three were looking at him was making him a bit nervous. I want to go explore the island, so, I want to get my energy up just in case I got to wrestle a T-Rex, Luffy said nonchalantly. Say Luffy, Bibi said getting his attention. Would it be okay if I come along with you? She asked while looking out into the jungle. When everyone heard her ask that they all stared at her with wide eyes. What? Nami screamed while staring at Bibi. Bibi you can't be serious. She yelled. Bibi just smiles at Nami before she replied. Well yeah, I don't want to stay here with nothing to do other than worry about my troubles, she said happily causing Luffy to smile. You know, for a princess you're alright, Luffy said as he leaned against the rails of the ship. It is official, Luffy has corrupted her, Usopp said while shaking his head when out of nowhere a bolt of lightning came down from the sky and stuck Usopp causing him to fall over on the floor burnt to a crisp. Everyone looked at Luffy only to see him whistling innocently as we began walking towards the kitchen. After lunch, Luffy and Bibi who was riding on Karoo's back set out to explore the new island of Luffy Garden. As they were running through the jungle for some time now they suddenly stopped when the ground beneath their feet shook as though they were having an earthquake. When they looked up they saw a herd of Brachiosaurus eating the leaves from the really tall trees. All of a sudden the ground shook once more before one of the Brachiosaurus head came flying off causing both Bibi and Luffy's eyes to widen. What could have killed a beast that big? Yelled, asked Bibi. Now what? Who? Luffy said causing her to look at him as though he had grown a second head. Look at the wound, it is a clean cut. If an animal did kill it then there would be bite marks, he said causing her to understand. Luffy then turned his attention back to the down beast and saw a giant figure stand over it. Gegyagyagyagya, the figure said before bending down to Luffy and Bibi's level scaring Bibi and putting Luffy on guard. I am the greatest warrior of all of Elbaf, I am Dory. Gegyagyagyagya. The giant named Dory said jolly causing Luffy to drop his guard slightly. I it's a giant, Bibi said in disbelief as she stared up at Dory. I've heard they exist but I've never seen one before, she said. I'm Luffy and I'm a pirate, nice to meet you, Luffy replied to the giant. Gegyagyagyagya. A pirate. Well good for you young man, Dory said while laughing. And this is Bibi and Karu. Luffy said while pointing over to the two of them causing them to stiffen slightly. Gegyagyagyagya. Tell you what you are all invited over to my home for lunch, Dory said scaring Bibi even more. She was about to decline but Luffy spoke before she had a chance to. We would be honored, he said causing Bibi to fall to her knees and started question in her head if it was a good idea to come with Luffy. Wonderful. Gegyagyagyagya. Dory said before placing his very large hand down in front of them. Hop on, he said causing Luffy to nod and step on his hand before looking over his shoulder looking for Bibi only to see her and Karu slowly crawling onto the hand. The giant began walking towards a giant size rock with really big holes in while carrying the three of them in his right hand and the headless dinosaur in his other hand. 
When they got to the rock Dory sat the three of them down before he started to make a fire and cut up the dinosaur. Luffy decides to help him out in order to speed things along spoke up. Dory, Luffy said loudly for him to hear, why don't you let me get the fire started while you prepare the meat, he said as he walked over to the large pile of wood. Geg yag 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 ya, how kind of you, he said in a joyful voice before stepping aside and getting Luffy to start the fire. It is the least I can do after all you are treating us to lunch, he said before he pointed his right index finger at the firewood causing a small bolt of lightning to fire out and ignite a small part of the wood. Luffy repeated the process about five times on five different pieces of wood causing them to ignite as well. After about two minutes the fire started to pick up causing Luffy to nod in satisfaction before he walked back over to Vivi and sat down on the log with her. After Dory finished cutting up the meat he placed it on the fire to cook before he took a seat in front of the giant rock and began conversing with Luffy and Vivi. Say, Mr. Dory, Vivi said politely getting the giant's attention. How long does it take for the log to reset on this island? She asked causing Luffy to look up at Dory wanting to know the answer as well. One full year, he said with a smile causing Luffy's eyes to widen and Vivi to pass out. One year. Luffy asked causing Dory to nod his head before he replied. Yes, most people never survive that one year, he said causing Luffy to raise his eyebrow. They usually succumb to the elements or get eaten by an animal, he said before he turned the meat over on the fire. Luffy then sighed and rubbed his forehead and began to think. He needed to get Bibi back to Alabasta in time to stop the war or else he wouldn't get to make Alabasta his territory and he had no intention of waiting a whole year for that. If he waits a whole year there might not be a country left for him make his territory. He could risk the possibility of flying to Alabasta himself and buying an eternal pose there and come back and grab the rest of the crew but he doesn't know how long it would take for him to find Alabasta. This just turned into one big headache, Luffy said with a sigh as he started massaging his temple. Just then Dory took the meat off of the fire and placed a large piece of the dinosaur in front of the two of them. Eat up my friends, he said before he picks up another piece from the fire and bit into it. Luffy walked around the log and shook Vivi awake. He then pulled out his sword and carved out two pieces for her and Karu before he carved out one for himself. Vivi took the piece from Luffy before looking up at him with tears in her eyes. Luffy smiled at her as he places his hand on her shoulder before he spoke. Don't worry, he said in a calm voice. I said I was going to get you home and stop the war and I will, he said causing her to smile slightly before she nodded to him. Luffy then sat down before her and took a bite of his meat. Dory, he said getting the giant's attention. I don't mean to pry but why do you live out here by yourself? Don't you have a village to call home? Luffy asked causing Dory to smile before he replied. I came from a village, a home of many warriors called Elbaf, he said while looking down at Luffy. It once was home but I no longer call it that, he said causing Luffy to raise an eyebrow at that. Why? He asked curiously as to why he would leave the home of the giants. There are certain rules in Elbaf which must be obeyed, he said allowing Luffy to understand. For example, when a fight breaks out and neither side yields, judgment is handed out by Elbaf's god. Whoever he deems to be righteous will be declared the winner and is granted survival as well as divine protection, he said before he picked up his meat and took another bite. This place is out battleground. We have fought for a century and Elbaf has yet to choose a champion, Gegyagyagyagya. He said causing Luffy and Vivi's eyes to widen for two different reasons. Even with all the time in the world wouldn't your desires wane after a hundred years of the same battle. Vivi said as she stood up. At this point is there any real animosity left between you two or are you just fighting to fight? She asked causing Dory to laugh and Luffy to chuckle. She really is a pacifist, he thought to himself. Suddenly one of the volcanoes off to the left of the rock erupted causing everyone to look over at that. That's some exposition, Luffy said as he took a bite of his meat and stared at the volcano. Well then, it's time to get going. Dory said before he got up from his sitting position causing Luffy and Vivi to look over at him in confusion. It was then Luffy noticed something about Dory, his whole demeanor changed, his eyes became cold, his smile was gone, and his posture was that of a warrior getting ready for war. 
The volcano then erupted a second time before Dory spoke. Please forgive me, but there is something I must attend to, he said as he picked up his shield and sword. That's the signal my opponent uses to mark the beginning of our fight, he said causing Luffy to nod his head in understanding. As for why we are fighting, we do not remember, Gegyagyagyagya. He said. It's senseless. How can you have so much hatred for someone that you could fight them for an entire century? She asked while looking up at the towering giant. What could have happened to make you this mad? She asked causing Luffy to interrupt her. Vivi that's enough, he said while placing his hand in front of her face stopping her. This isn't what this is about, okay. He said as he felt the ground starting to shake. You're right. This is about honor, Dory said as he narrowed his eyes at his approaching opponent before he took off towards him. Luffy and Vivi looked on as the two giants clashed with two different reactions, Luffy was watching in awe at the scale of the battle taking place before them while Vivi was disgusted at the fact that these two were fighting for no reason whatsoever. As the fight progressed Luffy and Vivi were completely absorbed in the spectacle taking place before them when suddenly Luffy's observation hockey alerted him of a presence some distance away to the left. He narrowed his eyes and turned his slightly before looking over making sure he was noticed by whoever was there. When he looked over he saw a woman floating on an umbrella in the sky some distance away. Luffy immediately recognized her as Ms. Valentine and if she was here that meant Mr. Five was here as well. He didn't tell Vivi about it instead, his guard was placed all the way up and his observation hockey was running at max. Luffy then noticed her descending back to the ground before she was hidden from his view by the bushes. Deciding to see what was going on he tried to sense where she was, who she is with, and where she was going. He sensed her presence along with another familiar presence who he chalked up to be Mr. Five. The two of them were walking away from Luffy and Vivi and heading in the opposite direction. Luffy then tried to find where his crew was, Sanji was by himself, Johnny and Yosaku were together, Zoro was also by himself, and Nami, Usopp, and Nojiko were together. He let out a sigh of relief knowing they are all okay before he turned back to the fight only to see both Dory and his opponent falling down to the ground before they started laughing with each other. Dory and his opponent then got up and his opponent handed him something before they went their separate ways. Dory came back over and sat down with some barrels in his hand. Brigi said he has guests over and they gave him these wonderful refreshments, he was kind of enough to share them with me, he said as he sat down. Did he say who his guests were? Luffy asked wanting to know if the giant named Raji was with his crew or Baroque works. He didn't say but from what I could see there were two young ladies and a fellow with a long nose, he said causing Luffy to chuckle. They are from my crew, he said with a smile. Gegyagyagyagya. Then I should be thanking you for this lovely refreshment so well, he said as he held up two barrels between his fingers before he broke the tops in with his thumb and began drinking. While he was drinking the alcohol Luffy noticed the look on his face suddenly changed, before Luffy could think about it the alcohol exploded casing Dory's eyes to roll back into his head and he collapsed on his back. Dory. Luffy and Vivi yelled as both of them sprang to their feet. That is the same alcohol that was on the ship, Luffy said while staring at the down Dory with wide eyes. That other giant must have booby trapped it, Vivi said causing Luffy to look over at her with a cold look on his face. Shut up Vivi, Luffy said lowly. There is no way he would do that, there is too much pride involved here for him to pull a low move like that, Luffy said. All right then, who did do it? She asked. Before Luffy could reply Dory spoke as he got up slowly with his weapon in hand. You strangers, Dory said lowly as he stuck his giant word in the ground. It wasn't Briji, no way. No warrior of Elbaf would dare. So, who else to suspect on this island then, besides you? He said causing Luffy to step in front of Vivi with his eyes narrowed. My crew and I aren't the only ones here on this island, Luffy said surprising everyone. And just who else is on this island? Dory asked in a dangerous tone. A group of bounty hunters, he said while looking up at the towering giant. If I am not mistaken you are Dory the Blue Ogre, and this friend of yours is Raji the Red Ogre, former captains of the giant warrior pirates, Luffy said surprising Vivi. The two of you have a 200 million berry bounty on your head correct? 
he asked causing Dory to nod all the while looking at Luffy with suspicion. Why don't you let me and my crew take care of them while you focus on your fight with Brigitte, Luffy offered. And why should I trust you? Dory asked while towering over Luffy. And how exactly do you know they are on this island? He asked again. You're from the New World. I'm sure you know about hockey, Luffy said remembering that Elbaf was in the New World, one of the many things taught to him by Shanks's right-hand man, Ben Beckman. I do know of hockey, however, I am not a practitioner of it, he said causing Luffy to nod his head understanding. Luffy assumed that he probably thought of hockey as a form of cheating in a duel. I assure you Dory, whoever interrupted his scared duel will pay for it, he said in a cold voice as the skies above stared to darken and be filled with thunderclouds. Right then and there the volcano erupted signaling it is time for the next fight Luffy looked over at Dory and spoke. I take it you are still going to fight in your condition, he said as he stared at Dory. I must, as an Elbaf warrior, he said before he coughed up some blood causing Luffy to become even more pissed off. What? Vivi yelled out in surprise. Dory, you need rest. Vivi yelled out trying to reason with the giant. I am Dory and I will fight for Elbaf's pride and die as a warrior. He said as he began taking slow steps towards his battlegrounds. While Dory was walking towards his duel the skies continued to darken while Luffy stood there in place with a pissed off look on his face. As Dory and Raji began their duel Usopp suddenly crash landed in front of Luffy and Vivi. Usopp. Luffy said in surprise. Usopp sprang to his feet and started crying in front of Luffy. Luffy. Nami and Nojiko were eaten by a dinosaur. Yelled in a panic causing Vivi, Luffy, and Karu's eyes to widen. What? They three of them yelled. We were being chased through the jungle and I was running in front of them and when I looked back they were suddenly gone. He cried out while hugging the giant duck. Luffy not wanting to take Usopp's word for it began trying to sense Nami and Nojiko and much to his relief he found them. Relax Usopp they're alive, Luffy said causing him to let out a sigh of relief. Vivi then started to explain to Usopp that Baroque works as here on the island and had tampered with Dory's drink. Just as Usopp was about to speak they all noticed Dory beginning to fall down while Raji was going for the finishing blow. Everyone's eye widens as they saw a tower of blood squirt out from Dory wound as Brigi cut him across the chest. Dory. They all yelled out. Before they can say anything else two figures emerge from the bushes off to the right of the group. What a shame, said Mr. Five as he and M's Valentine made themselves known. Vivi and Usopp were scared when they saw the two of them and Luffy to growl when he saw them for two reasons. First, for what they did to Dory and second, for letting his guard down again. He was caught off guard by Dory dying he dropped his guard and now these two insects managed to sneak up on him. After a hundred years their duel finally ends, so dishonorably, Mr. Five said pissing Luffy off even more. Luffy then looked to Vivi and Usopp before he spoke. Nami and Nojiko are in that direction and they seem to be alone, he said while pointing just off to the right of Brigi. Go find them and wait for me there he said before he turned back to the duo. I'll take care of these two, he said lowly as thunder boomed overhead and lightning flashed. Vivi then hopped on Karu's back before the three of them took off running in the direction of Nami and Nojiko. As they were running away Ms. Valentine spoke. Kyahahaha, I don't know who told you kitties you could leave, she said before he jumped really high in the air and floated over the retreating group. Just as she was right over the group getting ready to drop down on them Luffy suddenly appeared in front of her. And I don't recall ever tell you to move, he said in a cold voice causing her eyes to widen before she was kicked back down to the ground at amazing speed. However, when she landed on the ground it didn't seem as though she got much damaged from the fall, only from Luffy's kick. That intrigued Luffy, he knew she had devil fruit powers but was curious as to what devil fruits. How interesting. Luffy said as he landed back on the ground and began walking towards the duo. I had expected you land a lot harder than that, he said while staring at Ms. Valentine who was now holding her side in pain from where Luffy kicked her. I ate the kilo kilo fruit, I can change my body weight at my will, she said causing Luffy to finally understand. I see, so when I just kicked you your body weight was at zero or something which allowed you to take minimum damage from that fall 
he said as he continued to walk towards the duo. A devil fruit like that could come in handy, Luffy observed while staring at the girl. Enough chit chat. Mr. Five yelled causing Luffy to look over to him. I think it's time we got down to business. I've been meaning to pay you back for what you did at Whiskey Peak, he said with a growl. And I will pay you back for what you did to Dory because if I am not mistaken you ate to bomb bomb fruit, so you were the one who planted that bomb, Luffy said in a cold voice. That's right, now prepare to face my bomb bomb fruit. Mr. Five yelled as he charged towards Luffy. Luffy just stared at him with his cold emotionless eyes before he spoke in a low voice. Fools like you who cling to their devil fruits could never beat me, he said before he dodged Mr. Five Punch to the face and then proceeded to give him a hockey-infused knee to the stomach. Mr. Five then hunched over on the ground and coughed up some blood, before he even had a chance to recover Luffy pivoted on his left leg and delivered a spinning heel kick right to Mr. Five's face sending him tumbling back to Ms. Valentine. Mr. Five. Ms. Valentine yelled as she watches her partner lay face down on the ground bleeding from his mouth. After a few minutes, Mr. Five then began to get back up. As he stood up he looked at Luffy and reached into his pocket and pulled out a gun. Luffy not really being worried about a gun just stared at him with the same emotionless look on his face. Mr. Then opened the revolver's chamber and blew into it before he closed it and aimed it at Luffy confusing him. Die. Mr. Five yelled as he fired six times at Luffy. Luffy could sense something coming towards him but couldn't see it. Although he could sense it he still didn't dodge instead, he let all six shots hit him. As the six shots impacted Luffy's chest they exploded on contact hiding Luffy from the view of the duo in a thick cloud of black smoke. Kyahahaha. That ought to teach him. Ms. Valentine said smugly. Teach me what exactly, came Luffy's voice from inside the cloud of smoke. When the smoke cleared they all saw Luffy standing there missing the entire right side of his chest including his right arm along with a small part of the right side of his face. Just what are you? Mr. Five asked in slight fear as he took a step back. I'm a lightning man, Luffy said before the missing parts of his body started to reform themselves as lightning. When the lightning disappeared the two of them saw Luffy standing there as though he had never gotten shot. Now, I think it is time to get serious, Luffy said before he suddenly disappears from their view causing their eyes to widen. Before Ms. Valentine could react Luffy appeared behind her and placed the palm of his hand on her back before he spoke. Bind. He said causing five ropes of lightning to come out of his palm and bind Ms. Valentine in place. Ah. She yelled out in surprise before falling over face first. Sorry, but I don't like fighting girls, Luffy said before he turned his attention to Mr. Five and spoke. Now for your punishment, he said before disappeared and reappear in front of Mr. Five and delivered a hockey-infused punch to his stomach. Once again Mr. Five found himself hunched over on the ground coughing up blood. Luffy then grabbed him by the back of his neck and roughly pulled up and with a great show of strength tossed him in the air. Mr. Five. Ms. Valentine yelled as she watches from her position on the ground her partner falling from about 30 feet in the air. Luffy ignored the screaming woman and stood right under the falling man. He then covered his fist in hockey and held it up to the sky. Mr. Five landed with his back right on Luffy's extended fist causing him to scream out in pain. Luffy just held them there in the air for a few seconds before he threw him next to his partner. Please. I. Dot beg. Dot you. Please. Stop. The downed Mr. Five begged. Luffy walked over to him and place his food on his back before he spoke. Bind. He said before five ropes of lightning came out and bound him in place just like Ms. Valentine. Don't even bother trying to use your devil fruits while you're bounded, Luffy said while looking at Ms. Valentine. It won't work, he said surprising her, she ignored Luffy and tried using her devil fruit powers and found she couldn't. What have you done to my devil fruit? She screamed. That lightning is infused with something special that negates all devil fruit powers, Luffy replied before he summoned a thunder cloud and sat down on it. Now the two of you are going to tell me why you planted that bomb, Luffy said while looking at the two of them. We'll tell you, whatever you want, just no more fighting, Mr. Five choked out. It wasn't our idea, Ms. Valentine said causing Luffy to look over at her. 
It was Mr. Three's idea. He wanted those giants' bounty and he outranks us, she said trying to get Luffy spare them. She had just seen how easily he handled Mr. Five and she knows he can easily kill them both without breaking a sweat. All she wanted was to survive this ordeal. And who is this Mr. Three? Luffy asked in a bored tone. We don't know his real name but he is stronger than Mr. Five and very devious, she said. She was doing all of the talking because she knew Mr. Five was too injured and did want him to push himself too far. He ate the wax wax fruit and can control and produce wax from his body, she said causing Luffy to nod his head. And his partner. He asked knowing very well that this Mr. Three had a female companion. His partner is Ms. Goldenweek she is a 16 and uses paint to control a person's emotions, she said causing Luffy to look at her with a raised eyebrow while waiting for her to continue. It's called color trap, she can change a person's personality through the use of certain colors, changing their behavior as she sees fit, she said causing Luffy's eyes to widen slightly in surprise. And she didn't eat a devil fruit. He asked causing her to shake her head saying no. Interesting, he said. Before he could say anything else he heard some rumbling off to his right and looking over. When he looked over he saw a giant cake made out of wax with five candles spinning at the top. Well that's not something you see every day, Luffy said in a bored tone. That's Mr. Three's doing, Mr. Five said letting everyone know he is still alive. Well, I hope this guy is more fun than you two because I went from being really pissed off to really bored, Luffy said as he got up from the cloud and walked over to the two of them. He then picked the two of them up and threw them onto the cloud. He then began walking towards where all the fun seemed to be happening while the thunder cloud followed behind him. After walking for a few minutes Luffy and the two captured agents came onto a site that made Luffy feel ashamed. Standing trapped in the wax of cake was every member of his crew except Sanji along with Bibi. Kuru was tied up next to a little girl who was drinking tea. Luffy also noticed the down figure of Dory who he could still sense is alive and a captured Braji. Luffy. All of them yelled as they saw him walk into the clearing. Luffy looked at all of them with a cold look before he spoke. What do you want? He asked in a cold voice surprising them. What do you mean? Get us out of here. Nami yelled. I'll do that when I feel like it. Luffy replied causing all of their eyes to widen. Luffy then turned his attention to the man with his hair shaped like the number three. I take it that you are Mr. Three? Luffy asked while looking at him. That I am. I see you defeated Mr. Five and M's Valentine, Mr. Three said as he adjusted his glasses. But that means very little, as you can see I have captured your crew and they are about to die. He yelled before he started laughing maniacally. Oh yes. I see that very well, Luffy said while throwing a cold glance at his crew. Luffy just what is your problem? Nami yelled, asked. We are about to die. She yelled out in frustration. Yes, the seven of you are about to be killed because seven you couldn't handle an old weirdo and a fucking child. Luffy screamed back in anger causing a loud thunder to boom overhead and lighting to start striking random parts of the island. Everyone stared at Luffy in shock and in some fear. The last time the crew saw Luffy close to being this pissed was when Nami stole the ship and betrayed the crew but even that couldn't compare to this. And my so-called vice captain over there wants to be the greatest swordsman in the world and here he is getting trapped by some weakling, Luffy said before he raised his right hand in the air. Try and survive this would you, he said. Judgment. He called out as he brought his arm down causing a large pillar of lightning to descend on the cake made of wax destroying it. Mr. Three looked on as his masterpiece was destroyed so effortlessly and his prisoners were now free from the cake but they still had the candle lock attached to their legs. He turned toward Luffy and looked at him with pure hatred in his eyes before charging towards him. Candle lock. Mr. Three yelled while thrusting his hands forward causing a wave of wax to rush towards Luffy who didn't move an inch. After the wax surrounded itself around Luffy's feet it hardens quickly locking Luffy's foot in place. Now what are you going to do, Mr. 100 million berries, Mr. Three mocked thinking he had successfully captured Luffy. Is this it? Luffy asked in a bored tone causing the smug smile on Mr. Three's face to vanish and a look of anger spread across it. What do you mean if this is it? He asked angrily. 
You are trapped and I will not get to add you to my collection along with all the rest of your crew once I captured them again. He yelled at Luffy who just let out a sigh before covering his entire lower body in lighting causing the wax around his feet his evaporate. W what? H how? Mr. Three asked in disbelief. Lightning is five times hotter than the surface of the sun dumb ass, Luffy said as he began walking towards Mr. Three. That's actually true. Surprised me as well, here I thought you would actually be a challenge, Luffy said with a sight while still walking towards Mr. Three. Guess that was just wishful thinking, he said in a bored tone before he disappeared from view and reappeared right next to Mr. Before he delivered a lightning speed kick to Mr. Three's face sending him flying out of the clearing. Ms. Goldenweek had her eyes widen at how easily her partner had been defeated. He beat Mr. Three, Ms. Valentine said in a voice of pure disbelief as she looked on from the cloud. She knew Luffy was strong but she didn't think he was a match for Mr. Three. She thought that Mr. Three would push Luffy to his limits before he gave up but instead, Luffy took care of Mr. Three without breaking a sweat, it was like a giant stepping on an ant. Well that takes care of him, Luffy said in a bored tone before turning to his crew. As he turned and looked at them he saw all of them laying on the ground with their legs bounded looking up at him. He sighed before he walked over and melted the wax with his lightning before he turned his attention to Ms. Goldenweek and the two bounded bounty hunters. Damn it, my shirt got burnt off, came Nami's voice causing Luffy to turn his attention over to her. When he looked over he saw Nami standing there with her shirt completely gone leaving only her bra. When I am done with you your shirt is going to be the least of your worries, Luffy said in a monotone voice causing all of them to strengthen up slightly before he turned his attention back to the three Baroque Works agents. What are we going to do with them, Captain? Zoro asked while looking at the three agents. Luffy said nothing instead he walked towards the three individuals and spoke. I am going to make the three of you an offer, he said getting their attention. You can either go back to Crocodile and tell him you failed your mission and die, he said causing their eyes to widen when they heard their boss's identity. Or you can join my crew, he said causing their eyes to widen further and the jaws to drop. Luffy's crew were slightly surprised but they couldn't say that they didn't expect something like this to happen. Vivi, on the other hand, was surprised beyond belief. As much as she was surprised she was just as angry as well. Luffy you cannot be serious. Vivi yelled while taking a few steps towards Luffy. They tried to kill us and now you are offering them a place on your crew. She yelled out absolutely livid about that idea. And your point being what exactly? Luffy asked in his usual monotone voice. Before Vivi could reply Luffy spoke once more. Nami committed treason and she is still part of my crew. Johnny tried to kill me at one point as well and he is a part of my crew. So what point are you trying to make here? Luffy asked causing Vivi to look at Nami and Johnny hoping that what Luffy said wasn't true only see the two of them nodding their head. Vivi then looked back to Luffy and was about to try and reason with him again but before she could speak Luffy beat her to it again. And need I remind you, princess, you are a passenger on my ship, not a crew member, and you sure as hell ain't the captain. Luffy said somewhat harshly causing the rest of his crew to look at Vivi in pity feeling sorry for her. Vivi didn't say anything else instead she turned and walked back and stood with the rest of the crew before trying not to make eye contact with anyone. Don't you think that was a bit too harsh? Luffy, Nojiko asked from her position besides Vivi. Luffy didn't reply to her instead he turned to the group of Baroque works agents and spoke. Well. Luffy asked causing the three of them to look at each other for a second before they each gave their response. I'll join you, said Ms. Valentine. I prefer to be your ally than being your enemy, Mr. Five said causing Luffy to nod before he looked over at Ms. Goldenweek. She took some time and looked around to see if Mr. Three was going to return but after realizing that he wasn't she spoke up. I'll join as well. She said causing Luffy to smile before he snapped his fingers causing the lightning that bounded Ms. Valentine and Mr. Five to disappear allowing them to move once again. Welcome to the Straw Hat Pirates, Luffy said with a smile causing them to smile and nod their heads. Luffy then turned to the two giants that were off to the side and walked up to them. Sorry I didn't free you right away Brigi, I want to make sure the threat was gone, Luffy said before he used his lightning to melt the wax freeing Brigi. It is no problem, 
my young friend. Brigitte said happily before his smile slowly faded away as he looking at the down form of Dory. Luffy seeing this decided to give him some good news. Don't worry about Dory, Luffy said getting his attention. He is still alive, he said causing everyone's eyes to widen. What? Brigitte yelled out in surprise. Dory is alive, but how? He asked while switching between Luffy and Dory. I can only guess that it is because that after dueling for a hundred years your weapons have dulled, Luffy said causing everyone to look over at the two giant weapons and saw that they were in pretty bad shape. Of course, not even weapons made in Elbaf could withstand two giants dueling for 100 years, Usopp said happily as he was glad Dory was alive. And right on cue everyone saw Dory was beginning to wake up. After being helped up by Briji, Dory and everyone else went back to the giant rock that Luffy and Vivi were having lunch with Dory and sat down and relaxed while Dory patched up his wounds. While we are waiting here can someone please tell me where Sanji is? Luffy asked as he summoned his throne. Before anyone could answer him they all heard the voice of Sanji coming from behind them. Oh. Nami. Vivi. Nojiko. Did you miss me? Sanji asked with hearts in his eyes and he skipped towards the crew. When he saw the two giants and the three former Baroque Works agents he immediately went into a protective stance in front of Nami and Vivi. Okay. Who are you and which one of you is Mr. Three? He yelled returning to his usual self. And how exactly do you know about Mr. Three? Nami asked causing him to turn around and look at her. Oh Nami you look so beautiful in that outfit. He yelled as he saw Nami in her bra. Care to repeat that? Nami yelled while bawling her fist. Calm down. Here have my coat, he said as he took off his coat and handed it to her for her to cover up. You see I've been a bit busy, he said as he sat down on a log nearby. I just got off the phone with Mr. Zero on the transponder snail, he said causing everyone to look at him with eyes the size of dinner plates. You what? Everyone yelled. Yeah, I found this enemy hideout in the middle of the jungle and he called, he said before he lit a cigarette. I answered and he thought I was some Mr. Three who he apparently sent here to kill us and Vivi, Sanji said as he blew out some smoke. I told him that the Vivi and the straw hats were all dead, Sanji said happily while everyone looked at him like he had grown a second head. So he thinks he doesn't have to send anyone else after us anymore, Vivi said in a whisper. So you are saying we are free of people chasing us now that we can't go anywhere, Usopp cried out. We can't go. Is there something we still need to take care of here? Sanji asked still unaware that the log takes a whole year to resets. That's a real shame after I managed to get hold of this thing he said as he pulled out an eternal pose set to Alabasta causing everyone's jaws to drop. An eternal pose to Alabasta. Johnny yelled out. Now we can finally set sail. Yosaku added as they all started dancing. Now why can't the rest of you be like Sanji? Luffy said causing all of them to stop celebrating and started to sulk. Dory, Briji it's been fun but it is time for us to go now, Luffy said as he got up from his throne and sent it back into the sky. Right, it is a shame that you have to leave so soon, Dory said while Briji nodded his head in agreement. Take care of yourselves, Luffy said as he and his crew began walking back towards the ship. After walking for about five minutes the crew arrived back at the ship and saw three large dead dinosaurs in front of the ship. I take it this is out meat, Luffy asked while looking at Sanji causing him to nod his head along with Zoro and the bounty hunting duo. Yeah and as you can see mine is clearly bigger than the rest, Sanji said smugly. No ours is the biggest. The bounty hunting duo yelled. As if, mine is clearly the biggest. Zoro yelled causing Luffy to sigh. It doesn't matter we don't need it all anyway, Luffy said as he unsheathed his sword and held it reverse grip in front of his face causing everyone to look at him to see what he was about to do. Star counter. Luffy said before he disappears and reappears standing on the side of the ship with his back to everyone slowly sheathing his sword slowly. Then suddenly a click was echoed throughout the area as the sword was completely sheathed causing square chunks of meat to fall off the bones of the three dinosaurs leaving behind just the skeleton. Zoro stared at what just happened with wide eyes. Never he had ever seen someone produce that many cuts over such a wide area so fast. Take meat from all three dinosaurs and get ready to set sail, 
Luffy said before he hopped into the ship and went and stood on the upper deck looking down at everyone hurrying to set sail and packing the meat in the refrigerator. After a few minutes all the meat was stored away, Johnny and Yosaku were on the rudder ready to go, Zoro had just pulled up the anchor, Nami was standing beside Luffy along with the three new crew members, Usopp and Sanji were standing by the main mast waiting for Luffy's signal to release the sails, and Nojiko and Bibi were at the front of the ship staring out. Everything is ready, Captain. Zoro yelled as he secured the anchor. Johnny, you guys are ready. Luffy asked. I, Captain. They yelled back. Well then, set sail. Luffy yelled causing Sanji and Usopp to release the sails causing the ship to catch the wind and start moving forward. The giants said if we keep sailing straight would take us to the western end of the island, Nami said causing Luffy to nod. As the ship sailed further they started to see the end of the rive that leads to the open sea. Standing on either side of the river was Dory and Raji looking out at the horizon. Look, it's the giants. They came to say goodbye. Usopp said happily. As they sailed in between the two giants Raji began to speak. A great danger still lies ahead of you, he said while still looking forward. It is an obstacle that has always been here trying to prevent people from reaching the next island, Dory added causing a few of the crew members to panic slightly. Everyone one of you fought like true warriors trying to protect the pride of our duel, he said in a serious voice. And because of that no matter what enemy you face, Raji said continuing from where Dory left off. We will never all them to destroy your pride, friend, Dory said. You must have faith in what we say and go straight no matter what happens you must continue going straight. Brigi yelled causing Luffy to nod his head before he spoke. You heard that Johnny, Yosaku? Luffy asked while leaning over the rails slightly. I, the yelled back. As soon as the ship sailed out of the river and into the open ocean some very big started to come up from the water causing everyone to hold on to something and scream. Out of the water came a giant goldfish big enough to swallow an entire island and was now getting ready to swallow the ship. Johnny. Yosaku. Work the rudder before we get eaten. Nami yelled from next to Luffy. But Luffy said to go straight, Johnny replied. Keep going straight, guys. Luffy yelled out causing everyone except Usopp to look at him as though he was suicidal. Luffy, don't be ridiculous this is not going to turn out like Laboon, Nojiko said trying to get Luffy to understand. Luffy ignored all the cries and pleas and let the ship sail right into the beast's mouth. When the beast closed its mouth and began to swallow them a sudden bright white light appeared behind the ship and everyone saw a wave of blue and red energy fly past the ship and pierce through the giant fish's throat while pushing the ship out the giant hole as well. After flying for a few seconds the ship finally touched back down on the water and moving at a high rate of speed. Everyone looked behind them and saw the giant goldfish had a giant hole in his throat and through the hole, everyone could see Dory and Raji standing there holding broken weapons. Well, that was fun, Luffy said before he turned towards Nami and spoke. Get us on the right course for Alabasta, he said causing her to nod her head and go down to the main deck. Luffy then looked to his three new crew members and spoke. You three follow me, he said as he leads the three of them into the captain quarters. There was nothing too special in Luffy's room except for a bed, a writing desk and a closet. Luffy walked over to the bed and sat down before he looked at the three former bounty hunter and spoke. I've had enough of all these code names, I want your real names, he said in a serious voice causing the three of them to nod their heads. Well, I'm Makita, Ms. Valentine said. My real name is, Jem, said Mr. Five with his hands in his pocket. And I'm Mary Ann, Ms. Goldenweek said while eating a rice cake. Luffy nodded his head before he spoke. Well, I am sure the three of you know who I am, Luffy said while looking at the three of them causing them to nod their head confirming that they knew who he was. Good, now about my plans for you three, Luffy said confusing them. Plan, what plan? Makita asked with a confused look on her face. You see after I take out Crocodile, Alabasta will become my territory and there are going to be a lot of Baroque Works agents who will suddenly be unemployed, Luffy said with a smirk. The three of you along with any other high-ranking agents we get to join us will be in charge of the lower rank millions and billions, he said before he pulled out a glass and poured some whiskey in it for himself. 
I see, Jem said causing Luffy to look up at him. You are going to create an organization like Baroque Works and you are going to put us in charge of it while you're away, he noted causing the two females to look at Luffy in surprise. Luffy chuckled and took a sip of his whiskey before he replied. You're close, he said causing Jem to look at him intrigued at what he had planned. It is not an organization exactly. I am sure the three of you are familiar with or have at least heard of the black market or the underworld. Luffy asked while looking up at them. The three of them look at each other for a second before nodding their heads. I don't know much about it, just that you buy illegal stuff there, said Makita causing Marianne to nod her head showing Luffy that it was the same for her. That's fine, what the three of you are going to be actually doing is selling weapons drugs, and very expensive things, Luffy said as he watching their reactions. He was surprised when none of them showed any outward reaction to what he said. That can't be it, I'm sure there are numerous people out there who are doing the exact same thing, Jem said causing Luffy to smile. Right you are, Luffy said as he downed his drink. We are also going to be dealing with rare artifacts and, he said before he reached under his bed and pulled out a chest and placed it on the bed. Some extremely rare items, he said as he opened the chest and showed its contents to the three of them causing their eyes to widen. Those are, Makita said in disbelief. I've never seen one much less this many, Marianne said in awe. Wow, Jem said.